Welcome to the Cultaholic Wrestling Podcast. If you like a lot of wrestling on your YouTube, you should have seen us live the other weekend. Hello and welcome <laughs> to the Cultaholic Wrestling Podcast. You're listening to the dulcet tones of Mafu. Joined as always by the fantastic, lovely, live and in living colour, Mr. Jack himself. Hello. And SMTV Live, oh. Ross. I was just about to sing System of a Down there because he said Mr. Jack. Hey, Mr. Jack. Bow, bow, bow. Do think... you go to the shops? <laughs> <laughs> not one of their best songs, is it? <laughs> How are you doing, Ross? I'm not bad, pal. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Ah, bloody lovely. How are you, Jack? Are um, you doing well, pal? I'm doing well, pal. Joe, what about you? What are you, Dano? <laughs> <laughs> we're all all rich. No, like yeah, pal, we're all <laughs> fine, are we? We're all buzzing <laughs> off the high of performing at these sold out Super No Vacancy Little Buildings Arena. It was sold out. That is true. Over six people attended. Yeah, right. yeah. that is technically true. Over six people attended. <laughs> you literally could not swing a cat in little buildings. But yeah, we sold out. We had a lovely, magnificent time. Thank yeah. you very much, all the bloody people, for showing up. Um, uh, uh, before I forget to mention, it is available on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash cultaholic for the $10 Patreon tier. Sorry. But it'll also be going up on YouTube at a later date as well. Hashtag early access. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. Um, no, it was a good laugh, wasn't it? I mean, I was scared oh, yeah. when, it, when at the start, you know, one of these live events where like technical things are going on and I'm not a technical boy. So I'm just hearing people say things like watching a medical drama and they're just saying terms that you don't understand. Like the thing he's not connected to the Rudy rule yeah. and doctor, uh, the, he needs more medicine. Yeah. But this is not the right medicine. Yeah. Of course, <laughs> <good> this. <laughs> so thank you to Sam and thank you to Dan. Dan Heppel was like the, um, the eye of the hurricane. Like, he was the calm in the sea of chaos. And then it all came together fine. Did you have a good time? I really did. Yeah. I got worried. I'm like, wait, hang on. I'm having a really good time. They're reacting. So they must be having a good time. Or they're all filthy liars. <laughs> it's just so weird. Like, oh, okay. Nothing bad's happening. Yeah. Um, that was a good laugh on it. Yeah. <laughs> but don't take our word for it. You'll mm. be able to see it very soon. And then we went to North. Well, I did. Oh, I was the only one. Okay. I was the only one here who went to North. How was North? Uh, well, I was so, everyone. Everyone who was at our thing was so tired, <laughs> except for ring announcer Tom Campbell, who I don't know how he does it. That day, drugs. Did, I think he did a. Yeah. <laughs> I think he did a radio shift. <laughs> don't <laughs> don't then not. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, it's like in the news this week, Matthew. Tom does drugs. <laughs> I think he did a radio shift. Yep. Then our thing. Yep. Then North. Yep. And then I think he might have had radio the next morning as well. He did. <laughs> and he'd done a shift the the night before. What? What's what, he did radio on? after North? No, no, like on the Friday. He did oh, it again. Right. Then woke up to do a morning shift. Then what? Do, yeah. Oh, man. How does he do that? Drugs? We don't know, do we, Ross? <laughs> <laughs> That's making it sound like we know he does drugs, but we don't know he does drugs. He might do. You've really tried to make it We're saying there's a chance. <laughs> That's all we're saying. It would make a lot of sense. It would, yeah. How else do you do it? Coffee's not enough, is it? I don't know. He's got that boundless enthusiasm, though. Yeah. And yeah, I remember um, he slapped Kurt Angle in his debut and said, boundless enthusiasm. Uh, <laughs> it was nice to see a lot of um, lot of people that I've not seen for a while, actually. It felt like a mini WCPW show. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sorry to hear that. So Joe Hendry <laughs> met Gene Money, who was a lovely man. Oh, he's nice, isn't he? No, he was a heel, sorry. Oh, that oh, oh, no good, dirty that Gene Money. damn dirty dog. Lana Austin was there. She did Desert Island Graps. And then at North, I'm now the biggest fan of my new favorite tag team, Boisterous Behaviour. They're mint. I'd never seen a live entrance. Ah. Ross, he ra- one of the man like Doris rapped during his entrance. Never. Not like Max Caster. Oh. Like faster, like did a proper grime verse. Like your man, saying, um, oh, what's he called? Not not Jay-Z, the other fella. The other fella does the fast rappings. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> There's so many oh, to choose God. from here. I think Buster, a guest appearance. Buster Rhymes. Oh, right. Um, um, Making right. a guest appearance on the podcast, it's everybody's dad. <laughs> <laughs> certainly yeah, more, Martin June certainly more similar to Buster Rhymes than Jay-Z, I would say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I'd probably compare him more to British artists like your Skeptors, your Stormzy's. Kid you. British. Oh, wow. What? Wow. Wait, hang on. Hang on. What a throwback. That, wow. That like, so, <laughs> I remember, I'm sure I remember seeing them at Evolution 2010 oh, or something. 209. I was there, wow. baby. Yeah. Lethal Biz, Not Lethal Bizzle. Dizzy Rascal. Getting oh, all confused yes. now. That was an amazing Here's the yeah. headline. No, honestly, right? I remember the summer of 09 or 10 or whenever. Yeah, yeah. it started raining when they came oh, on. Oh, it was hot it was... all weekend. 
And then Dizzy came on and played bongers and it, the heavens open. And I missed the bus home back to Morpeth. It was a terrible evening. How did you get back home? Just stayed in the casino until the morning, got the first bus back home. Oh. You, you could do that back when you were 18 and not like feeling you're going to die. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> my, my mate got a glass bottle chucked at her head by some local scallywag. And it bounced off her head and smashed on the floor. We took it to the medical tent. But before that, there was a bit of a scuffle with the other lads, right? Me and my private school mates, hey there, oh, <laughs> stop that, that no. you. <laughs> and I ended up with one of their sunglasses in my hand after they'd all gone. So, and they were like, I felt really cool. Like I was in skins because they were the neon ones with like the bright oh, yellow side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wore them for so long because it had a backstory as well. Right. So wrestling news, wrestling's happened. This is this just is like good Wardlow. News. This is just like Wardlow on AW. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, hey, yeah, no. yeah. That's really good. Oh, Thanks oh. for saving that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yikes. Well, obviously what we'd like to do with the Cultaholic is start off all nice and breezy and then go to the news, which is obviously grim. And the important news this week, a legendary promoter, Jerry Jarrett passes away. Oh, yeah. Uh, see, the father of Jeff. Um, reported by Dutch Mantel, who broke the news. I'm here reports that he's passed away. I last saw him last year. We did the Vice Show on the Territories, Atlanta. Uh, he was 80 years old. Probably do a really good episode on one of these long-form videos. We're pumping out about him, but bloody hell. Um, promoted since the early 70s alongside his mother. Jarrett founded Memphis's Continental Wrestling Association in 77. And then some other stuff happened. Jared bought off the remnants of Dallas's world class from who else but the Von Erichs um, and merged the two groups to form the USWA. Jared stayed with the USWA until 95. We sold off his stakes. He'd become a consultant for WE and WCW. Um, him and his son Jeff then helped form uh, TNA and spent part of his later years arguing the toss in the, the newsletters of um, <laughs> Jeff Jarrett's podcast, anything to go by, uh, and also staying in touch on contacting people uh, via the Wrestling Classics matches board. It's one of those old-timer people that was still in contact with oh. people and would talk to them and just be like, yeah, hey, George, I've got a question. Yeah, what? Well, mm. Which I thought wasn't really fascinating. Uh, yeah, very important part of wrestling history. Not many of those type of people still kicking around nowadays. It's like the Bill Watts and that. Yeah, and and uh, when I I was Tom did a nice sum, kind of a summary of of his legacy, which is hard to do in a news video because mm. you've got to keep it quite short. But Tom did a good job of it, and I realized well as he was speaking that Jerry Jarrett's got like two. It's almost like he's had two careers. Like he's got the the old school history with Tennessee and Texas and all that sort of stuff. But then as the alternative to WWE, like the TNA side of things as well. So I, was, I thought I thought it was when Tom was saying it, it made me realize like what an important figure Jerry Jarrett is. Yep. So yeah, and he's probably going to live on. At least for a while longer with uh, next to Bruce Pritchard's crap impressions of him. What is it he always says? What's his catchphrase? Well, says? you know. Well, you know. That's the one, yeah. Chicken salad. Yeah. Know. And then you hear, you watch clips of Jerry Jericho and stops nothing like that. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, yeah. Obviously, we send our condolences to Mr. Yeah. Jerry's family and friends. Mm -hmm. um, Devon Dudley denies WWE threatened to fire him over the ECW reunion <laughs> show. I'm worried where you're going to go that after denies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. So... Uh, this one was confused. I feel like I've missed this first chapter of a well, story. Well, no, I remember, because obviously I do the news. Right. Um, when d was working as a producer, I think, for WWE, the Extreme Reunion Part 39, yeah. the bloody arena, happened. And they, I think they promoted d or maybe suggested he was going to be there, and he tried to get time off, and he said no. d words came out of d mouth. He's not good at talking. No wonder Bubba did all the talking for the Dudleys. <laughs> Made it sound like, a hell of a lot like... Uh, if you do that re reunion show, if the Valks have advertised you, if you, we don't care. If you do it, stick to your guns. We'll get rid of you. That, that came from Devon himself. Yeah. So uh, Devon this, was, said, this was just before Christmas, wasn't yes. it? Yeah. Uh, let me say this. No issues with Triple H. Triple H did not threaten to fire me. Did you threaten to fire him? Uh, what a lot of people don't know is I did not speak to Hunter directly during this. No, he did not threaten to fire me. It was just, you know, miscommunication on the dirt cheat writers or whatever, but that was not the case. Again, I can't really go into detail right now. The source was you. <laughs> it's twice you've done this now, Devon. Just, just don't do it. Uh, Elias provides an update on Ezekiel. Oh, thank uh, God for that. What, what's know, the news? Right, God. Uh, yeah, I've got to be honest with you. The boss is in way more contact with him than I am. He wants to know like when he's going to be back, how is he, everything like that. But the truth is, all the reports I get is that he's still in a coma. He's still in the hospital recovering. Ever since he was taken out by Kevin Owens, I don't know if you remember when the whole family was gathered by the hospital bed. How could we forget? Yeah. I kind of keep my distance now to protect myself emotionally. It's hard to see my brother like that. But all the reports I get saying he's still in a coma. We're hoping for recovery, though. And it's just saying the cult-like news thing. Uh, we were... Speedy recovery, Ezekiel. We hope Elrod is doing all right, too. Yeah, Elrod. Yeah, that was the third <laughs> one, wasn't it? That's right. Yeah. Do you oh. think... <laughs> this story made me feel sad for Elias. Not because his brother is in a coma. <laughs> because it's him. 
He's Ezekiel, right? Let's, what? No, no. <laughs> let's not play this game. You mean game. like metaphorically or? Oh, <laughs> Aren't so we close. all Ezekiel in a way, Ross? But <laughs> it makes me feel sad that he's having to kind of entertain himself. <laughs> like he's been given nothing to do that's yeah. good. I'll make up my own crap. <laughs> Yeah, like, the, yeah, the Grim Reaper's around now for old Elias, isn't he? I hope he gets something good. I form, hope he gets a good feud. The I form of Rick Boogs. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> oh, instead of a scythe, it's his guitar. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wouldn't, wouldn't, he, wouldn't he be like, oh, uh, he woke up for three seconds and say, I hate Boogs. <laughs> <laughs> and he went back into a coma. We, we could have a, they could have a good feud. Maybe they are going to feud. I guess they are going to no, feud. No, they guess. They are going to feud. I'm going to guess yes after all. Maybe Elias week. will win the feud? <laughs> 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 Rick Boogs has to oh. earn Elias's uh, trust or whatever to yeah. get a collaboration out of them, doesn't he? Yeah. That's where we're at currently. That's it, yeah. Oh, will he do it? I don't know. Yeah, I'm a little bit country. Well, I'm a little bit rock and roll. Oh. Yeah. Anyway. Rap is crap. Oh. Even That's how they get together. Like, yeah, rap is crap. <laughs> oh. WWE 2K23 had its grand roster reveal this week with over 100 superstars from Raw, SmackDown, NXT, and the Hall of Fame playable from launch. Oh. While the inclusion of the likes of Cody Rhodes were expected, some inclusions raised eyebrows like that of T-Bar. <laughs> Justice! <laughs> Who said, oh. yeah, he basically said, not too worried about being T-Bar in the game. Uh, the games had my back last year. I'm sure they'll have my back this year too. Justice will be served. It's good for Justice Bastard that he's got like, <laughs> he's got one playable character he's got himself in there as well. I assume oh, it's just three T-bar. faces of Daija. Yeah. I don't know what you even say about that. Like, have you ever seen uh, those videos where they like talk to like Jack Grealish or something? Like they talk to a footballer and they go, like normally a young one who will have played FIFA. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they go like, here's your card from the latest FIFA game. And they're like, no way, more pace is crap. Like they're always oh, annoyed yeah, about yeah, yeah. 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 Do you think they should do that with the wrestlers and be like, you're only rated a 73 in this game? They'll be like, oh. Who was it that kicked off a couple of years ago because they were rated less than a lady wrestler? Oh, oh, I can't remember. Who was it? I can't remember who it was. It was somebody. Hmm. I'm sure it was, unless I've dreamt it. I don't remember that. The only thing I remember was Natalia taking issue with about. the... Hey, Never. Build, build, the <laughs> right, build the dream roster. You have this much, and oh, she was on the one dollar. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and she was like, how dare you? I'm like, no, I don't think you've understood this. It's just social media, it, Natalia. It, it's fine. It doesn't mean anything. No, but it does mean... No, imagine build your I'm dream the lowest roster. Tier. Imagine that. <laughs> Oh, I'd kick off. Everyone would be on the top tier. Yeah. We would have no one on the bottom tier. You couldn't build a very good one because we'd all be too expensive. The only yeah. people higher than us would be the fans. Oh, <laughs> yes. Great baby face. <laughs> Got him. <stuff>. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, that was class. That was really good. <laughs> Our response has kind of cheapened the effect, though. <laughs> <laughs> the fans. <laughs> uh, new photos emerge of Super Smash Brothers Pro Wrestling event. Uh, this has been these lost media oh, aye, things thing. for ages and ages. The big old to promote Smash Brothers. Uh, the launch in, good oh God, April 26, 1999, North America. <laughs> Nintendo Stage Slam Fest 99 at the MGM Grand Adventures theme park, featured a 17-minute tag team match, Mario and Yoshi against Donkey Kong and Pikachu. <laughs> Mario and... Oh, yeah, that old tag team, Mario and Yoshi. Yoshi. God, I know. Because you can do that. Who, who, oh, yeah, go on. Who booked Ross. this crap, eh? What, eh? Happened, to, what happened to the, and L, they the Don, L man? They showed Donkey, <laughs> showed Donkey Kong the card, and he went, ook, ook, <laughs> lower, than, lower than Yoshi. <laughs> oh. Hey, that was not there. very good. <laughs> you know, that's fine. Like um, the FIFA cards. Anyway, yes, the event was oh. yeah. the event was live streamed, but it has been lost to time. But they finally found it. Uh, fun fact is the costumes of the match were the same ones you know, well, well, boring now. Oh, this is from oh right. Oh, that's way more interesting than I thought then. So it's from the old it's from then. It's yeah. old footage. Yeah, oh, it's, a, they, they, it's one of these lost media things. So I watch some of the lost media channels like yeah, yeah. blame it on George or Jorge. I don't know how you pronounce it's it. The boogie. Blame it on, yes. Andrew's <laughs> done a couple of them as well. Lost wrestling media. He's like, hey, it was here a minute ago. <laughs> it was beautiful, the Coholic live thing. Hey, these buildings are so tall. Because yeah. the... he's like that, and I forget, because I only see him like a few minutes a week, and I think he's just in game mode. So they're doing the, the big questions. And I'm just like, I'm like, you all right? Hey, I'm so drunk. Can I? I'm like, <laughs> Andrew did. I went, oh, that's great. Thinking, oh, he's doing a character. And he's like, hey. He started rambling. I went, oh, he really is. <laughs> can I? All right. When, just way before, and you said how long ago the original Smash game came out, and you went like, oh, can yeah, I just yeah. read this tweet from Fraser? It made me feel so bad. Oh, God. Do you know the one I mean? Go on. It was just the, it was We're crazy. 16 minutes in. 
When Roman Reigns won the Universal Championship, it's almost like he's bragging. I was still in university and had a whole year left. And I was living in Edinburgh and I was only 21. Brackets, I'm 24 now. Oh, <laughs> What's in that response to? Um, how long Roman's been the champion? Jack, Jack, oh. Jack said, I'm feeling really good today. I hope nothing ruins it. <laughs> uh, One of the best runs at the top ever. He means, he means his, obvious. Means, it means his own youth. <laughs> oh, this is one of the most enduring runs ever. <laughs> was he at uni getting his degree in stating the bleeding obvious, eh? <laughs> eh? <laughs> no, have you, you ever seen Owen tweet when Liverpool win? <laughs> it's like the official channel, isn't it? Yeah, it's really by the book. Great win Great for the Mighty Reds. The lads. <laughs> Lovely to see Salah get a brace. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Clive. Back to the studio. Joel's, Joel's seen it before. <laughs> and the big news, uh, Karen Cross. Sorry, Owen. Sorry, Fraser. They would, they would be on the one dollar tier. No. Think. Oh, <laughs> the only two though. The only two. Oh yeah. <laughs> Karen Cross reportedly unhappy with current Dewey position. Um, oh no! Now, oh, oh, no. Oh, 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 this this is a two part. No, 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 no. He says it himself, and right. we put it in the picture, right. and he had an issue with it. Yeah. Right. So we reported here at Cult of Holly, <laughs> the CNN of wrestling. Uh, quote: This is probably unhealthy, and I shouldn't say it. I'm just going to say it. This was from an I, interview him, that he did himself. This is out of his own mouth. During a yeah. recent interview, yeah, thank you, with Josh Martinez on Superstar Crossover, I actually get really P star star stars because I'm not enough. It's not enough. I haven't reached my full potential yet and people haven't seen my best work yet. I know what I can do. And at this level, you need to be afforded certain types of opportunities, which is difficult with a big roster and only two hours of the program. And I know that once I'm afforded that particular shot, because I've been afforded a lot, let's not get it twisted, once I'm afforded that particular shot to demonstrate what I can really do, what I've done, where people on a major scale haven't seen it, people are going to be blown away. I'm going to fight that, fight for that every single week to get closer and closer to that shot. And I'm being straight with you. I'm being very real. And I think it went on for a bit more. I'm not nope. going away. So then Call the Holic reported it. Carry Cross. A bit of upset, he went, he, woo, woo, woo. That's not what we <laughs> And said. then you thought he was upset before. <laughs> he was really bloody upset when he saw that headline. And... Uh... Uh, Got you tiered something like, oh, clickbait. Well, this no. is, this is, Fraser told me, because I've not, what, what quote you've just read there, I didn't see that. I didn't see any quote. I just asked Fraser, Fraser, have you done some dirty clickbait there, son? Because Fraser's the guy mm -hmm. who makes those wonderful images. And he's like, no, it was a, a direct quote straight out. And it was mouth. a direct quote. Yeah. Now, in to try and sort of play devil's advocate, on Karrion Cross's side, right, is, and I might be wrong here, so please correct me if I am, but. Is he maybe annoyed, not because he's denying that he said the quote, but because the quote we've used for the title doesn't quite represent the overall sentiment of what he was saying in the in the interview? Possibly. That, uh, then I can yeah. maybe understand. Uh, he says, yes, lol, clickbait equals ad rev. Listen to the interview with yo, Josh Martinez. Right. So uh, he didn't say... So he did direct people to listen to the actual interview, which is good. But if people, oh, do, but if people do listen to it, then he, he probably did actually... Well, he did say the thing. that Yeah, yeah uh, Luke Osborne's thing, which is claiming that somebody else can put a carrying cross of two ways. Carrying Cross, unhappy with current position in WWE. Huh? You know what? I thought it was funny when he did it. Um, I don't know what. I don't know the words. We, we can't see the tweet, Matthew. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, sorry. I thought you guys had seen it, but like, it's in the group chat. So I assume everyone's all doing it. Oh, right. right. Oh, fair. Um, and I just said it was, it's a different guy. It's Carrying Cross of two ways. Oh, because oh, Fraser cause it did a typo. Yeah, 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 bloody yeah, Fraser. Yeah. See, putting that degree to So point. then we changed it to say Karen Cross, happy with current position in WWE. <laughs> Very happy. Uh, so, yeah. I mean... I, I big, understand, big fan, I understand why I'd I'd feel like I'd be annoyed that I'd put my foot in it and I would go these bloody I would do the same. Yeah. Because it's, you don't want to get it goes out there and it's like Karen Cross unhappy with position, then you worry you'll turn back up and they'll go, Well, you're not getting a push now. Like I understand it totally. Of course. But maybe then you shouldn't have said that. <laughs> We're completely blameless. Yeah. <laughs> That's more of the story. <laughs> Not quite a Devon Dudley. Why, why are they saying that? Because you said it, Devon. <laughs> I, I will say, generally, though, it does make sense. If you read something and then it, it directs you to the original source, do listen to the original source. Like, yeah, to get an overall mm. flavor of what's happening. But only after you've listened to us first. Oh, yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah. <laughs> and that is the news. <laughs> Dublin, Japan. Richard went to a New Japan show in Osaka five days ago. If he uploaded this picture the day it happened, he he did. He was at New Japan, the new beginning in Osaka. Mm -hmm. He had a good time. Nice. He did have a good time. Look at that famous that cerulean quote. canvas. Feels like New Japan is picking up steam again. 
no. Or maybe it's just <laughs> the fact that I'm, <laughs> that I'm going to these shows live that I'm enjoying NJ so much ATM. Oh, because it's got a cash machine. I just uh, want to see you. She get to run with the belt. <laughs> either way, another great show tonight. Can watch main event Shingo matches all day. Oh, yeah, that Smiley was meant, face. Mm, that was meant face. to be good, that match that he saw. The Shingo Okada one. Don't but watch it. They're all still wearing masks. Because it was an, uh, half an hour long, so I think you wouldn't like it. Oh, it's that New Japan main event style. Yeah. Ooh. yeah. yeah. Be still my beating heart. But yeah, they're all still wearing masks and like being compliant with COVID. It seems like a thing yeah. we don't do in this country now. Oh, it's all long gone. Just they left here years ago. Yeah. 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 <laughs> if it never gets reported, you never know about it. So yeah, whatever. Out of sight, out of mind. <laughs> Oh, that was it. Tubman in Japan. Thank you very much. Uh, did well, you watch it? Can we, uh, we segue that into Jack on film? Oh, no, I've not watched any films this week. Oh, the Jack last, off film. Last... Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good end of the segment. That's, <laughs> That's it. Everybody get excited for the Cultaholic Hall of Fame. Ah, that's on everyone's favourite segment, the Hall of Fame. In condescending, in condescending order, <laughs> I've just seen the results. Uh, in last place, basically. The Guns, the new AEW Tag Team Champions, the last heels. Thereby proving AEW. your point. Yeah. 15%. That they're not liked, so they're good heels. Because if they'd won... I didn't think of it like that. Yeah. You're right. Ha ha. You mm. fell for it. Well, Jack. You, yeah. Cheers. No worries. Yeah, right. uh, Call the Holic Shorts content. 23%. That was from. No, uh, no, 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 no. It's uh, That was a last minute pick. You see. Fraser got a bit defensive <laughs> yesterday. Oh, but... did he? Yeah. Well, Fraser didn't put the poll live first and foremost. I wasn't here. It didn't go live until yesterday. So sorry, everyone over at <laughs> patreon.com <laughs> forward slash cult. <laughs> sorry, Fraser. Sorry, Fraser. <laughs> I wasn't here. Kind of like, on the... He's the Patreon guy when sorry, I'm not Fraser. there. Um, so I went live yesterday. And I, it went live for like a minute, and it just it had it had, it had four votes on. And I was like, "Whoop, Fraser, no votes for Cultaholic Shorts." <laughs> and he got so defensive. And me and Jack were like, "Whoa, it's only the Hall of Fame there, Fraser. Calm it." He's like, "Such a last minute pick." I didn't know I was doing the Hall of Fame until I got in the chair. Look, <laughs> <laughs> you roll your eyes. So in Fraser's defence, it was a panic selection for the Hall of Fame. Uh-huh. And, he and was a brand and ambassador and for Cultaholic. What we've done there is we've mocked him for being a good company guy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Pick a... He would be the second bottom tier on the thing. Pick yes. an old song <laughs> or a spider or something. Yeah, Fraser. how Come dare on, you? Yeah. Not positive about the content here. Pick a little doggy. Yeah. The long-term storytelling of the Cultaholic Fantasy Football League, 62% I'm, and easy win. I'm shocked. I wasn't expecting it to win. Well, there's lots of people who listen to podcasts and watch you guys do lovingly. On the Twitch, so well, they, but this isn't the Twitch, though. I mean, this is the fantasy football league. That it's just an in-office oh, right, yeah. thing. Yeah, I'm surprised that people. Oh, I've only just realised. Yeah. I genuinely thought the thing last you're week in. we were talking you're about. In it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but it keeps on, it keeps on kicking me out. Uh, ask me from password every time I log in, so I have enough of it. I've looked in months. <laughs> You'd be winning if it wasn't for that. Yeah, that's just what I just go with it. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Thank you, Jack. Um, very positive today. Yeah, last week I gave a brief history of the four-year sort of arc that is the so like. Owen, James Jenkins won the first one of Triple Jump. Owen won the second one. See a single ice drink and then. Joel won the third one. And now, well, now actually, Owen had a good night last night. So he's he's closing in on me. Are you third still? I'm falling behind. Oh, this is, every week's a new twist. What's going to happen next? <laughs> and I'm glad a lot of people resonated with that. So thanks everyone who voted for it. Thank you for the, the people that voted last night. <laughs> Oh, yeah. That's when the match was on. <laughs> this has really been uh, rigged, hasn't it? <laughs> People have been thinking about FPL. Mm. Guns got robbed. But well done, Jack. What have you got for us this week? Um, sound teacher advert. Do you know the advert I'm on about? <laughs> what? Have you seen the advert with yeah, the sound yeah. teacher? Yeah. Ross knows in the, exactly in the corridor and he's like, keep your chin up. Yeah, yeah. Like, hey, lad, yeah. <laughs> so on last night's stream, I was <laughs> crying with laughter because our chat was being so funny. I mentioned the advert and a lot of the chat had seen the sound teacher advert. Are people, are Americans going to understand? Sound means like nice guy. Canny. Canny teacher. Dead canny. He's, a, he's dead nice him. But he's also kind of cool as well. He's yeah. a cool young teacher. And it's to get people into teaching. So it's like a guy, an advert that shows, it sh hey, it shows the ups and the downs of teaching. Right. But this teacher is like the best, soundest teacher in the world because the first scene, they're all filing into the classroom. He's like, all right, oh, nice trim, mate. So he's on the level of the... <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> and then there's a bit where a kid's obviously kicked off and he's in the corridor, like throws his bag against the lockers and he comes out. He's like, whoa, 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 what's going on, mate? It's just 
he's the soundest blow. There's one part where he's turned off a gun. He's like, listen, it stops now, all right? Like, but he's calm with it, right? There's a bit where another teacher hands him a stack of registers and he goes, lifesaver, mate, nice one. He's a bit Mancunian or like, <laughs> I can't quite work out where he's from. He's he's like a handsome bloke as well. Young teacher, good looking. Ah. Nice, tr nice trim, mate. Um, <laughs> and then... To cap it all off, at the end, it's the end of the school day. Everyone's leaving through the, yeah. the playground. One of the kids goes, sir, nice one. Oh, he goes like, nice one, sir. And he goes, nice one, mate. And that's yeah. the end of the advert, right? And, he goes, and like, I guess the car park is, <laughs> tires are gone. It's been <laughs> key to hell. Sugar in the gas tank. The no, sheer no, sadness no. of the situation makes him do <laughs> them rails with Tom Campbell. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just a brilliant advert because so many people had seen it. The the Twitch chat, like like a player wanted like a contract extension because we were doing those summer transfer dealings last night. And one player like didn't want to accept his new contract. The chat all just go whoa whoa whoa, what's going oh. on? Right? So, like, at the end of the at the end of the stream, they all went nice one, sir. <laughs> it was just so funny. So my nomination because of that is sound teacher advert is so good or a commercial for the Americans there. That sounds so rubbish. I love it. We could play the audio maybe, but I think the only version I could find on YouTube was like too long. It was like the full version. I think that's been cut down for the, the director's cut. Yeah. I've got to say, I'm playing a cans next year. I only ever encountered one teacher in my entire school life who was sort of like him. <laughs> His name was Mr. Milton, geography teacher. He All was right. childhood friends with Sean Maloney. All right. Celtic player and other. He's, a Bel he's still a Belgium assistant manager. Joe oh, Mike, no idea. Right? He was, used to be or something like that. Maybe the Wigan manager, manager now, but he's the only one out of however many years you go to school that he was remotely like sound teacher advert. Mm. Do you have any? Um, name them. Nominate them. One, the whole one or two. One or two. Mr. This is, he had a bit of a silly name, which is unfortunate for a teacher, obviously, but Mr. Mutton was a good lad. <laughs> no, don't laugh at Mr. Mutton. He was a good lad. <laughs> he was a good teacher, right? It was, it's often, yeah, he took his chops. <laughs> but he, apparently once, apparently once he like got stopped when he just started, there was a rumor. I don't know how true it was. I feel like it might have been. When he started, oh, he was no. like straight out of like uni or whatever as a teacher. Yeah. So he looked pretty young. And I think he got mistaken for a sixth former one day and got told to like do his top button up by another teacher. Oh. Like, oh. Yeah. That's class. Oh. Brian Alvarez taught you. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So um, he was nice. There was a few, but none as sound as <laughs> sound teacher. <laughs> There's a bit where he's talking to another kid in the classroom and he goes like, you know what? I would never have thought of solving it that way. Well done, mate. When has a teacher ever said that? <laughs> He's like a Shut up, that's not what the book says. You've got guys, there's so many good quotes in it. Guys, you've got four weeks until your exam. He sounds like a, a condescending football <laughs> manager. <laughs> Everything I do, I do for you. A, there was a guy in the chat called Exploder who was really was oh, just yeah. nailing all the lines. At one point he went, pens down, let's do this another way. <laughs> pens down, and then in the next scene, he's got them all stood in the middle of the classroom. He's like, into a liquid, now into a gas. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh. It's the particles lesson. We all know the particles <laughs> lesson. It's so crazy, that teacher. He got up and did a dance. I would urge you and everyone in their own time to find the sound teacher advert. He sounds like the teacher that plays the lads at like Call of Duty or UFC 4 and just gets hammered every night. He doesn't cross the boundaries. He's not friends with the students, but he is the, a good mentor. We had one that Very crossed fair. the boundaries. Oh, my not God. Uh, we had the That's old, great, Ross. We <laughs> had the old Bunsen burners on the go. <gasps> oh. And we, were, we had the islands with like, the plugs in the middle, and there was yeah. a lass. He was just do, doing it. It might have been about some of Adams and all that sort of bollocks. He, she was just flicking the, the plug switch on and off. And he goes, excuse me there. You're flicking my switches and turning me on. And he just continued talking to the rest <laughs> of the class. That was in year nine, and that has stayed with me forever. <laughs> I forgot it what it shows. <laughs> Mr. Brown, I think did his anyone, name was. Did anyone realise? Oh, said? yeah. Oh, everyone right. was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> she stopped doing it to be fair. So oh, it right, yeah. Weird and little yeah. kids out. Oh, yeah, teenagers. <laughs> um, we had a teacher at King James who he told everyone that he used to do like pyro and stuff at concerts and gigs <laughs> and stuff like that. And then we had a lesson where we had acid in uh, test tubes and stuff like that. I don't know why. Maybe we're heating it up. I remember what possible oh. thing I could be doing. Were you wearing goggles? We we were. So <laughs> luckily, our eyes were the only thing that didn't get mildly <laughs> soaked in it because the blue things kept on smashing because right because it was heating up glass, <laughs> as as <laughs> glass it tends to do when heated, and acid got everywhere. <laughs> We were like, ah, oh, sir, smash, ah, oh, sir, it's around. It's not like CZW. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, this is great in a way. But at the same time, the teacher just had to look at his face like, I'm fired. Yeah. I'm so fired. And he was there for another few months, so it's all right. <laughs> but not, not, any, not any sound like, hey, kids, type of way. 
teachers now. I had genuinely good teachers. Well, this teacher, the the tone of the advert really nails that he's not he's not like super cool. He's not like Poochie from The Simpsons. He's not like. Let's just say at the end of the advert, he drive off his motorcycle with no, his leather jacket. But he is one that you know that the, even even the naughty kids will be like, you know what? Actually, sir's not sir's all oh, right. Oh, a proper sir. Okay, well, yeah, probably, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I hate everything he does in this advert, but I've got to see it. But <laughs> oh, yeah, we had we had a genuinely good teacher. Uh, Should we just put it on? Should we just put the advert on? <laughs> we'll get a copyright straight, I think. Oh, That'd be worth it. Oh, no. Never mind, Joel, never mind. I think you've done everything in... I've pretty much done everything. Like short like remake. Sat here in the room, to be fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, pens down. Let's find another way. <laughs> wow, I'm going to vote for it. We haven't seen it, so well oh, done there. Nice one, sir. The crap teacher advert. <laughs> uh, Ross, what have you got for us? Robert Stone acknowledging the cultaholic. Oh, oh hey, no, I thought that was our new course. winner. Oh, oh, boy. So if you haven't happened? seen this week's NXT, come Tuesday, loses his open NXT North American title match against Wesley Lee. And backstage, he's going radio rently, he's throwing things against the wall because that's what crazy big men do, don't they? Mm. When they lose matches, they should maybe win because they attack the champion from behind. And he's like, oh, I don't know, the title slipped through my hands, Wub. And then Rob's <laughs> like, help me help you. Help me help you. Oh, you've mm. just become a meme called Come Tuesday. And it's the innovators. I'm claiming that we are yeah, the innovators yeah, 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 of the yeah, Come yeah, Tuesday yeah. movement. Yeah. I know there's several people on board. Stephen Lar- or Steve from Stephen Larson was tweeting about it. But the <coughs> mentions, my mentions haven't blown up like that since 2016. Wow. My heyday when Come Tuesday was mentioned on NXT. So we <laughs> are the innovators of Come. And Robert Stone, thank you for acknowledging us. I feel like Robert Stone said you're just a meme who says "Come yes. Tuesday." Oh, not who? No, you didn't call him "Come Tuesday." He said you. Yeah, yeah, you're, say. Na- you're the one who calls him "Come <laughs> Tuesday." He's like, just, like, yeah. We all do. We all. Yeah, call yeah, yeah. Come Tuesday. He's our favorite. <laughs> come, what's he like? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, our little come. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Thank God a teacher didn't say that, eh? Uh, but yeah, I, yeah. yeah that, mm. the, the acknowledgement, it was resounding. Mm. Of course. Mm. So you're going to have to wait a week to win this one, which <laughs> I think in the business they call edging. So, yeah, well done, What Ross. business? The wrestling? Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, edging and wrestling could be taking your girlfriend. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, 2004, whatever. Um, Jack Lugger views. Mm. Yeah, so, yeah, well done, Ross. Mm. Thank you. Edge, yes. the rated R superstar. Yes. Well done. As you sometimes called. You should have gone first because uh, mine is Lilt. Oh, <laughs> oh crap, sis. Wow. R.I.P. Press F the chat. Well, for is it, Lilt. Is it R.I.P.? Because I read it's getting, or so, it's, a, it's becoming a Fanta flavor. So is Lilt just becoming a Fanta flavor? Is it being absorbed like WCW into. Exactly. Yeah. Like USWA. Mr. Absorbing uh, WCCW. Mr. Fanta is going to appear on the last episode of Lilt. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Lil oh, well. instead of the two TVs when he's like I've got both he's got two cans I'm just like, yeah <laughs> yes that's exactly what's going to happen Lil is going R.I.P. Lil I should have drank more of you but well, you, know, you can get a good knockoff version at uh, Aldi's yeah that's cool wait are the knockoffs going to tropical going? something or other that's great, my mum gets yeah. all the time oh, yeah. is it nice yeah it's sugar free as well oh lovely just the additives and the sweeteners in there mm-hmm. probably I don't know I'm not good sure. <laughs> that's what the kids need <laughs> So Lil, uh, the drink of our childhood. Were you a big fan of? I was never a big fan. You know, Summer's Day, Lil. Oh, oh yeah, oh, nice. I, I don't like Coke or Pepsi. I like one of the other presenters here, I guess. Um, oh my God, <laughs> would that be Tom? <laughs> uh, it, it rhymes with Rom. Tom. <laughs> if I was, Tom, any of if word. I was Tom watching this, I know. Like, eh? We should probably <laughs> knock that on the head now. <laughs> yeah. Yes, he should. He does need. <laughs> no, 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 no. I agree. We'll, we'll see you after this. We'll see you soon. <laughs> just to clarify, we're completely taking the piss. Yeah, yeah, There's no need to mention just, Tom on Twitter or anything like that. <laughs> yeah, we're taking his piss for a drugs <laughs> test. Oh, God. <laughs> Matthew, please. Milt! Although you're... Made from Tom's piss. I think, so, I think Tom drink would, a little and run a mile. I think Tom would let you get away with it, though, so we're all right. If you, yeah, yeah, as long as you're Tom's like a news... Yeah, people Twitch are going to say... Twitch are going to... What if the wrestlers start doing this? What if the wrestlers start doing this? What if Karrion Cross says, Tom is basically flat out, uh, Tom has a drug addiction. <laughs> what? At KarrionCross.net. You know... We'll you be know, like, hang on, let's click paint. He's like, ha, 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 ha. Tom and, Tom and um, Amir, Amir Jordan at oh. North, they were both they were the two most energetic people because I, I haven't, <laughs> well, I haven't no, seen... No, 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 <laughs> no, not like that. I just haven't seen... Why would you say I that? just haven't seen Amir Jordan live for a while and there's I, entrance. I, I, I didn't remember how energetic his entrance was, right? Then he wrestled a full-on match against War Horse. Oh, anyway. 
Our, our horse. horse. Our <laughs> yes. Horse. <laughs> I did Jinx that. touch with black magic. You I, can't talk. Can no, I? honestly, by that point, I had a couple of drinks. I tried to start. I tried to start an hour horse chant, and only John joined in. Photoshop John. It was a shame. Mm-hmm. Thanks, John, for that for joining in. Thank you, John. <laughs> okay, I, I you know. Like, <laughs> thanks for coming to the Jack's show. Jack's looking at me like I can't. Hurt the rules. <laughs> thanks for, I'm going to go to prison off this podcast. Thanks for coming to the show as well. I'll see John. Tom in there. I guess. Uh, Lilt <laughs> on what? the way of Kiora <laughs> and Umbongo. I, oh, I preferred Kiora. Sorry for Barry and Lil, sorry. I prefer Rita Aura. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah. So this is going nowhere slow. She's uh, not very Lil. good on The Masked Singer, though. I've never seen it, to be fair. She's... I've just seen Chris Jericho. That's all I've seen. That's all I need to see that This show. is The Masked Singer UK, and it doesn't need judges. But there are judges. Or an audience. It's just like every show now has to have judges. Peter Crouch was on there, wasn't he? As a guest judge. As a guest yeah, judge. Yeah, yeah. I saw so, that. Because regular... if there's one person who's about masks and singing, it's Peter Crouch. <laughs> <laughs> your regular judges are Rita Aura. Oh, no. Davina McCall, isn't it? Davina McCall, Mo Gilligan, and Jonathan Ross. <laughs> Wibble wobble. It's a weird... <laughs> and then it's like, they just make wrong guesses until it's revealed to be the person everyone on Twitter had sussed out it was. Did you see who was trending today because of the US mass thing? No. Dick Van Dyke. No way. 97-year-old Dick. He's a mass singer. 97-year-old Dick. He's dodgy as well, though. He's dodgy blowing. Dodgy? Guy, because his, d- his wife's like 50. How young? The age gap there is <laughs> Shocking, disgusting. Shocking, <laughs> Shocking. <laughs> the Leonardo DiCaprio of the 50s. <laughs> Why? I'm just saying there's a 40-year age gap between the two. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I said something embarrassing. We've had to we've had to remove it from the pod. Um, oh. <laughs> Thank you very much for those magnificent selections for the call. You are just going to be like, we don't care about the Hall of Fame. Know. Is this going to be the thing that people in future episodes are like? No, tell us what was said. No, we should oh. move on. Okay, so right, okay, say this. okay. The oh. nominees this week are Ross Lil is Sweat. Oh man, <laughs> <laughs> mate, mate, I've lost a stone. <laughs> Lil. Your pick of Robert Coach. Stone acknowledging the Cultaholic Wrestling podcast via Come Tuesday mm. reference on NXT this week. <laughs> there we go. That's easy you want to type up. And Jack's pick of the Sound, sound teacher. teacher advert. Nice one. You're, you're putting brackets. Put down your pen or something. To people know what you're talking about. Um, can you put brackets? Nice one, sir. Oh, Ross, can you put I'll brackets? Nice one, here. sir. Please. Don't know why I was looking at Jolie. Nice one, sir. Put put in brackets are mine. Third place. <laughs> You can vote for those magnificent things by going to patreon.com forward slash oh. called Dalek. He should have been there. <laughs> she should have been there. Bloody hell. <laughs> that says this week in the wrestling. It's this bloody week in the wrestling. Ha! Ah. Ah, this week in wrestling. Smackdown. You know we, uh, you know we belong. You know, right, to put your boots in. Right, hang on. Before <laughs> this, no. Before this, I messaged Matthew. Said, "Do you know the Home and Away theme tune?" And he said, "All too well." You said, yeah. you, "You really said you knew it." Yeah. You know we, we belong, belong together. together. Oh, so you, you get the first line. Yeah. You, you and, and I together and ever, no matter where you are, you're a guiding star. The oh, very first verse. moment I saw Damn you, saw you. He wrote these down. I, I never <laughs> felt such emotion. Such emotion. I'm, I'm walking Not on air. air. Just to know, just to know, you are there. You are there. Hold, Hold me in your arms. <laughs> Don't let me go. I want to stay forever. Closer each day. Closer each day. Closer each day. Roman and Jay. Roman and Jay. <laughs> There's the bit. It. it was long and worth it. Roman and Jay. Wow. That's the one 90s TV theme I think I don't know. Really? I'm going to you know quite, quite good on TV. I know the home well. and away bit, but the rest of it, I've, that's a, I'm a fish up a tree. Mm. The oh, second yeah. verse I didn't need to include. Do you do neighbours? Do I do neighbours? <laughs> Is that what Tom's? Uh, <laughs> Everybody needs neighbours. Yeah. Should be there for one another. Give us back peace and understanding. It's not as good Where as the whole thing. It's great. We're just doing, yeah, yeah. <laughs> For some reason, is, was Neighbours and neighbors. Home and Away like the Monday Night Wars? Because... Be my mum is a staunch home and away over neighbours. She's like, oh, home and away is far better for some reason. But to me, they're both Australian, so I don't know what's Maybe, different... but my parents would watch both of them. Really? They'd flick over from like... Sometimes, over, 
Mum will watch it during the day and then in the evening. Oh. In case she missed anything. Oh, <laughs> right, okay. Oh, wow. Like going back, like match of the day, but for Home see, and Away. Do you want to see all the Uncle Howdy bits of the bag? <laughs> missed, you know? Apparently, Home and Away. Let us know which one your parents prefer in the comments below. Yeah, please do. Yeah. Paul Heyman opens the show and says, Sami Zayn isn't here tonight. It turns out he actually is and gets in the ring with Paul. Who uh, Sammy cuts a promo on the bloodline and says the group is falling apart. He tells Heyman not to worry about Cody taking Roman's titles because Sammy's going to do that himself. Mm. Later backstage, we see Jimmy Uso desperately trying to call Jay ahead of their tag title defense to no answer. Ooh. Oh! What did we think of this start to the show? I thought the promo was entirely pointless. <laughs> <laughs> Apart from the one bit where Sammy said, uh, Jimmy will side with his brother he shared the womb with instead of his uh, abusive cousin. That was the only takeaway I had from that opening mm, promo. Mm. Other than where yeah. was Solo? What was Solo doing? Where was he at? He was conspicuous, I thought. Yeah. He was riding, riding Solo. <laughs> was there, ah, yes. Was this um, promo just to get Sammy on the live show, do you think? Then? I think so. Okay. Yeah, and continue the story about Willie yeah. Oney. So, yeah. so I think he was pointless. So in the seeds of what Jay will do. Yeah. Just gear, gear one of many. Up the womb. Heyman's the good womb. when he's being threatened. It happened the other week. It happened with Cody on mm -hmm. last week's Raw as well. Yes. Shit, don't worry, Paul. I won't hurt you. Oh. The best one still <laughs> was Samoa Joe, though. Uh, when that was amazing. Yeah, yeah. Something very bad's going to happen. I'm just a messenger. My tripod. <laughs> True and Sheamus beat Hit Row. They beat them so quickly, Cole couldn't get any jokes about top dollar. <laughs> <laughs> Afterwards, a Viking Raiders vignette. Air is challenging them to a match. Ooh. Mm. He, hit Row didn't look very good because they were like, yeah, let's fight. And then they got the fight and they were like, no, I don't want it. <laughs> hit, row, hit Row are now Vic and Bob. <laughs> let's, I don't want to fight. <laughs> I tell you what, they're a shanty. He's got a lovely drop kick. <laughs> Why oh, should do <laughs> <laughs> it just uh, the thing I was thinking of there. It makes you wonder because it was uh, the stories in the news this week. Probably the dirty dirt sheets doing the wrong things again. Oh, shocking! Saying that, that uh, Triple H has allegedly maybe given up on Corbin, like the current gimmick, the current incarnation, and he's mm -hmm. going to do something else with him. Has he now given up on Hit Row? Because that's what this segment made me think. I about. feel like Triple H was. Ex it seems like Hit Row something more was expected of them, but I didn't. I think they're fine in their what they are. Yeah. What what more could be expected of them? Did they're not that them, good. Did he want them to be as charismatic as they were when they had Swerve? Because mm. that's going to be hard. Because Swerve's really good. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Flop Dollar's not a leading man. Whoa. Is he? No. Eh? Eh? He's the heavy at the back. Yeah. You can hear the back taxi for Top Dollar. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and he's driving. <laughs> so. uh... Yeah, I think they're perfectly placed where they deserve to be, which is making other teams look good. You're like, <laughs> if you were in a rap battle against Top Dollar, you would slay him because of this fascination you have with his previous job as a I, would, I saw, though. I saw the one he did on Jinder. Yes, I would. Uh, <laughs> there is, I think I might have mentioned it before, there is a famous rap battle where one of them finds out beforehand that the other one is a school bus driver. And you go, the two just American guys, and he's like, you don't drive through town with your gun shooting, you say, sit down. When the bus move in and everyone's like, whoa! <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's uh, conceited versus Arsenal. Right, anyway. Oh, Arsenal. did Arsenal try to walk it in, didn't they? Like, yeah. 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 He did a battle in London once and he took off his coat and he was wearing an Arsenal shirt and everyone went, it's like, it's just wrestling. Rap battling. Yeah. 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 Except it's real. <laughs> <laughs> Lacey Evans wins a squash match against Carmen Harass. Harass? Har what? what? That says Harass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, That's all no. the correct work in there. Uh, <laughs> I made sure to spell it H A R R. Ha ha. E. Ha ha. Double S. Mrs. Harass from Home Alone 3. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> she, would, she would also beat her because she was an old woman. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This was you weren't here for that, were you? I think no, it was Ross. Yeah, it was Ross. Yeah. I had no it? idea. Oh yeah, yeah we did yeah, two part. That's right. I'm a yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell was that? Sorry, that was a rather camp laugh on myself. <laughs> this match was bloody pointless. I've never heard your voice go that high. You've got quite a thunderous voice, you. Sometimes the, the laugh just jumps out. <laughs> I'm like, no, get back in. Imagine you like stealing a fifty pence piece or something from the floor <laughs> in a shop. <laughs> Apple scrumping <laughs> in the <laughs> orchard. <laughs> Put a kick me sign in the back of someone. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew's been <Beano> laugh. <laughs> <laughs> pointless match though. Why what uh, we're we doing this for, Lacey oh, Evans? Oh, you thought everything about this show. Hey, no, I'll say I'll say it like it is. Uh, I didn't like it. Did what? you know? Nah. It was just. Oh. I think this is just a 
reinforcing, wasn't it? When we've got nothing to do that week, just have a, have a, just have a beat someone. But it's the same the apart from the Cobra Clutch. It's all the same. Operation Cobra Clutch. That's the only difference. It's being carried out. <laughs> it's one manoeuvre. Yeah. And what a manoeuvre, because it beat mm. Carmen turning. Harass. Nah, yeah. I'm leaving that one alone. <laughs> That was a name. <laughs> uh, uh, so, yeah, well done, Lacey. Uh, backstage, Jey Uso can't get a hold of Jimmy. He asked Paul Heyman for help, but Paul leaves him high and dry because he didn't Paul. save him from Sammy earlier. Paul, mm. the bloodline cracks are forming. It's not about you, bloodline. Paul. It's not about Paul, is it? But it's I like Paul. that even Paul might is in the court up in this whole, who's going to turn on who? Mm. It was like a Stone Cold promo, though, from Jimmy. He's like... I said text, what? Emails, what? <laughs> <laughs> spoke to his girl, what? His little brother solo, what? Still can't find him, what? <laughs> I, I hope that, I hope that um, Pancho the, the cat at, on Austin's ranch is doing okay. Pancho the barn cat? Yeah. What happened? It's friend, Lefty died. Oh. Oh. Yeah, later on, because he goes like, hello, Pancho, and the cat like comes down. <laughs> <and> like, <laughs> it's like, it's weird, the, the contrast between this little cat and Austin being like, hello. <laughs> and it, the cat loves Austin, clearly. It's meowing to see him and stuff. And then yeah, it's the like, cat's a big fan of the attitude. And he puts the camera on himself and goes, Poncho's best friend left. He died the other day. He was killed. We don't know what by. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. I hope Lefty's, well, I don't hope Lefty's also a cat, but I hope Lefty's not like a human. <laughs> He's like, Poncho's best mate died. We're for Bob the Builder. That well, oh, was Lofty. Lofty. Uh, oh. Lofty's top of Jack Atkins' lovely lad list. Yeah. That sounds weirder now that I've said that. It's not the weirdest thing you've said. Jack Atkins has got a list of <laughs> lovely lads in media. One of them's Lofty from Bob the Builder. Another one's Benny the Ball from Top Cat. Which one was Benny the Ball? The little blue one. Hey, TC! Oh, yeah, yeah. Ah. <laughs> the suck up. Right, I see the theme the there. The sub? The suck up. Oh, <laughs> right. He I did have some energy, to be fair. Sub, yeah. Yeah, I suppose so, yeah. A big Dom. Top Cat. Dom Cat. <laughs> He's intellectual. Oh, God. <laughs> Uh, Sonny Deville complains to Adam Pearce about not being in the EC. Chelsea Green arrives and wants Pearce to file a complaint against the Raw GM. Pearce explains that he manages both shows and books the pair in a tag team match against Raquel Rodriguez and Liv Morgan, which they lose. Karen Green is my new favourite wrestler. Are you enjoying the gimmick? Facial amnesia is the reason she didn't know that Adam Pearce was the manager of both Raw mm. and SmackDown. Mm -hmm. That's prime NXT 2.0 material on the main roster, and I'm all for it. Didn't you say when you... Did, was it Chelsea Green you had on Desert Island Raps who said that... Who it you was said, called Straight to Hell, actually. Oh, no, what have I done? Remember when I did that? Uh, Remember when I did that? To be and, fair, and you was, like, it, and you was like, it? You were doing, you were doing the kick out of Two-Face, like, ah. Oh. Mm. Ever since I've grown the pubes on the face, uh, did me and Tom get comments when we were doing news saying, are you the same person? Oh, really? And I'm like, no, I'm drug-free, bro. <laughs> That's what I was about to say. <laughs> so, um, was it Chelsea Green <laughs> who you said had... Loads of creative ideas. Yeah, she, right. Okay. Those news reports came out of her trying to piggyback on everyone else's gimmick. That came from that episode of Straight to Hell because she said like she was pitching to be like a Rollins or like disciple, a yeah, yeah, someone, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. She was pitching to latch onto Roman somehow. Mm -hmm. I can't remember. <laughs> that was a weird thing to say out of context, but there we go. Latch onto Roman somehow. But it didn't just sound like she was trying. It didn't just try to. It didn't just sound like she was just making like cheap ideas. It sounded like she was actually coming up with creative. Oh stuff. Yeah. Yeah, 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 stuff that would have added to the presentation. Well, this thing. may well have been then. Everyone, yeah, I show up and I'm great. I think everyone, <laughs> I think everyone knew she was going to be good at this sort of thing when she was the jilted bride on Impact. That was really good stuff. Oh, it was a good run, wasn't it? Mm. She like she is good. She, I think her and Matt Cardona. The idea is that their their drawing room must be a drawing board must be amazing. <laughs> so many ideas. You can't see it with all the action figures and stuff. But yeah. yeah, it does look great. <laughs> Jey Uso arrives at last second to help Jimmy successfully defend the tag titles against Braun and Ricochet. Backstage, Jay tells Jimmy. He'll always have his back, but refuse to comment on whether he's loyal to the bloodline. I loved this little segment because there's just so much going on. Who's 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 loyal to who? Can somebody tell oh, me who's no. sleeping nah. with who? Is that my time? It is, yeah, it's right at the end. Time. Why does it say that right at the end? Because it's the game. I don't know. Because <laughs> it's all insider references, bro. Mm. <laughs> so, so I I like I hope. No, I'm just worried that this is all going to be for naught. When at the Elimination Chamber, the Usos are just both back on Roman's side. I'm worried about that. Mm. Mm. This match, that's a good point, but I was just waiting for the did thing like the to happen. Did you like the big in the crowd? I did like that. And I was thinking, I listened to the FDR podcast um, because I like it. I have to justify myself to you. Right. And uh, I, I did like, like it when, well. Yeah, and I 
was thinking because he uh, he says like because obviously he loves his he loves himself and the put work he puts in and so he should saying FDR himself, Young Bucks and the Usos the are like puts. the top three t- tag teams in the world okay. right now. I'm like yeah, and I was trying to think about myself then who would I pick if I had to pick a favorite out of those three, and I'm thinking. Ooh. Oh, Chase, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Out of those three tag teams. <laughs> uh, and I probably would pick the Usos. Because even in this, this is my, this is obviously they've won the tournament, stuff like that, and it's not been about Braun and Ricochet, it's about the entire problem. But, uh, I was still like, God, this is a good match. They God, the Usos really have good. had great matches, even when, uh, when they went to Saudi Arabia to take on mm. the Braun and Brutes. Not the good ones, the other <laughs> ones. <laughs> and even then, they were trying their asses off, even when no one thought like, they so had a chance. Me and Ross had a colleague. I won't mention them by name, but we had. A, it's not someone anyone would. Does he I do don't, drugs? I don't think they're very public face now. I don't think anyone would know them anyway. Don't work here. No. Oh. So we had a colleague who, in sort of 2015, used to say consistently, and we would mock him behind his back for saying that um, the Usos were the best tag team in WWE history. And we were like, what? in history. But Ooh. now, there's way more of a claim for that. Like, but it, this was in 2015 when they were doing all like the. In 2015, I wouldn't have put them above. No, oh, no, no. Like, yeah. last few years, absolutely. But now it shows what a run. That, now I'm like, that's maybe he was. Maybe he was a genius. I tell you, what, I was still in high school. What's he doing now? Don't know, actually. Oh, okay. Not in touch with him. <laughs> Do you know? I don't know who you're talking about. To be honest, we have forgotten. Oh, Mr. Hits. <laughs> oh, Mr. Hits. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Moving on then. <laughs> it's not even. It, he wasn't a presenter or anything. He was. He was a writer. Uh-huh. But just Mr. <laughs> He referred to himself as Mr. Hits. <laughs> oh, oh, Un- oh, unironically. Oh my God. Unironically Mr. to me. Hicks, Ryan. This was when we were new as well. So Mr. Hits was very much above us on the. <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was sad working underneath someone who called himself Mr. Hits. And made you write about boobs. <laughs> oh, that was fun. Do you feel good now that you've probably lapped him? Yeah, oh, fuck, right. <laughs> <laughs> Good save. What was I going to say? I can't remember now. Oh, the Usos match. At the Usos match. Yeah, I thought the J return was very good. It was yep. just a shame it happened in front of a bit of a dead crowd. Mm. I thought yeah, the, the crowd was a bit dead. Sure. And I do like Dax Harwood's tequila rundowns. He did this uh, yeah. at the start. I learned a lot about tequila through him. Yeah, don't, can't stand the stuff, but I like <laughs> I like the sound of what he's saying. Is tequila I've never thought the sort about... of thing that just always tastes the same? Like? He gets That's caramelized, thought, like, he's oh. getting oaky notes and stuff like that. From tequila. Oaky notes. Wow. I love that TV show. <laughs> oaky <laughs> notes, <laughs> oaky notes, a friendly helping hand. He'd be a friend with a worm. <laughs> he's, well, on my, he's on my top lads list. I, I could probably try two shots of tequila one after the other and probably not tell any. I did not know the tequila was a sort <laughs> of drink. Yeah, Dax Harwood coming I know, now. yeah. Um, I, yeah, I think, to, yeah, tequila's horrible. I, I will do it. I will on a night I'll, if I'm feeling crazy and someone says, "Do you want a tequila shot?" I'll do it. Yeah, I'm not that's scared. the thing. That's the thing, though. Like, yeah, I'll do it on a night out, but I've never thought, "Ooh, I should buy, buy a bottle of tequila." No, I've never gone like, and bought, no. bought myself a shot of tequila if it's there. You get offered it, yeah, right? Yeah. Do you prefer Sambuca? Oh yes, Ooh. Samuel D on the MIC. See, I'm not particularly good at like <laughs> remembering dance moves and stuff like that. So I always struggle when it's like I put the salt there, the lime there, drinks. Like, Mate, I've had some book fast. Can you just well, well, whatever? It's just three. It's salt, tequila, lime. It's that order. Yeah, but when you uh, like, yeah. Yeah. And you are sensory, <laughs> sensory yeah. overload. Most yeah. clubs are doing this. The music's loud. Someone's trying to talk to you. Some guys go, "What do you think of Roman Reigns?" <laughs> or whatever. I'm like, uh, so you know, the limes in my eye, the salt in my ear. That's what you're meant to do. You're meant to do lime in the eye, snort the salt, and then put the. the, the oh, well, Tom's halfway there. <laughs> Natalia cuts we a promo on this on the head. Can I make a point about Jey Uso? I think he's full of crap, right? Because oh. in this match, he was doing the whole bloodline taunts and yes, whatnot. Yes, I was. think he was just luring Roman into a false sense of security. He had an elimination chamber. He only came back to save his own personal title reign mm. for selfish reasons. Mm. Hmm. Or was the ones thing... Is that a bloodline thing or is that an Uso? That's a bloodline thing. Ah, the, we, oh, we the ones. Right, bloodline. Okay. Yeah, the bloodline. Okay. Yeah. Down since day one. But it's mm. very, well, that, That's an Uso thing, though. Down since day one. That was his day one as the Usos. Yeah. But was he we doing are the other ones? ones? Okay, yeah. right, okay. So we are the children. Yeah. <laughs> <Is> that, <laughs> the other ones who make a brighter day? That's it. That's start That's what they do before hitting the move, yeah. Okay. Natalia cuts a promo on Shayna Baszler, calling her a knockoff Ronda Rousey. <laughs> Shayna interrupts and disagrees. Natalia, call <laughs> anyone else that. Come on now. Nutty. What, a knockoff Ronda? Or just a knockoff? Ah, just a knockoff anything? Uh, she yeah. can't say that. Uh, it's, uh, can you be a knockoff something when you are of that family? Yeah. Yeah, yeah look can, at Bruce. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Ronda. But she, but she comes a... out to be. Which yeah. is, I think, a bit too far. Yeah. Especially when you're a baby face, I think she is currently. I think. 
I'm getting yeah. Charlotte Flair vibes. Man. Like, <laughs> right. yeah. But Ronda makes a surprise arrival to say, no, I'm the knockoff Ronda Rousey, I guess. <laughs> uh, Ronda and Shayna beat Natalia down. <laughs> Bless you. Sorry. Shut sure. uh. Shotzi tries to make the save, but can't stop the pair from injuring Natalia's arm. Yeah, thanks, Shotzi. But there was a bit where there was a bit of tension between Ronda and Shayna, though. Bless <sighs> you again. Did you see where there was a little Ronda's like staring at Natalia, and Shayna goes, "Stop there!" And then they beat her up anyway. Yeah, so like, what's that about? Shayna's losing the plot, isn't, he? isn't she? Because uh, people are calling her a knockoff Ronda Rousey. Ah, uh, so there could be a bit of seeds being sown there. I wouldn't mind Shayna versus Ronda Rousey. Mm. Is that a WrestleMania match? Why I? Uh, there's two I, nights, yeah. I was too busy going, wait, hang on. What about you and Charlotte? Is oh, that Ronda, Ronda's fine with losing the belt, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was rubbish. <laughs> yeah, if I was Ronda, I'd be probably quite annoyed that time my title reign ended and just yeah. that was it. Yeah. She doesn't care about the fans, though. No. I don't care about Ronda. Doesn't care about these millennial fans. Yeah. Oh. You, someone showed me the video of a really bad attempt, I guess, at like being cool and hip and down with the kids like your teacher, of Rhonda with a saxophone backstage on TikTok <laughs> years ago, and she's playing it all. Well, she's pretending to. She's In WWE? Or yeah, yeah. All right, okay. But it's, she's not playing it. They'll probably put a song or someone playing it, and then everyone's like, wow, Rhonda keeps on playing the sax. And it's crap. Wait, you're meant the to entire think, locker room is trying to, to put her over as are charismatic. You, are you meant to think that... She's actually no, playing I couldn't it. figure out. I was supposed to she... think that she's doing it because she plainly wasn't. The audio levels were all over the place. She oh, plainly wasn't. I think there's a bit of bias here against Ronda Rousey. If anyone else did that, you would never think twice about it. But just because it's Ronda, you're like, well. Oh. You're right. If, if AEW did it, then it was sold T-shirts <laughs> on it. But yeah. Um, it may, it, I'm sure if I saw it, I'd find it cringy then. It's crap. <laughs> on his way out the building, Jay is stopped by Sami Zayn. Sami tells Jay he appreciates what he did at the Royal Rumble and tells him that there's a way out of the bloodline if he wants there to be. Oh. He tells Jay he acknowledges him. Oh. All just pissed up. Crowl's like, Jay. Oh. And then he gives Fist. it. Yay! He fisted oh. him. And then he left. It's just... This is on SmackDown, this, just like it should be. This was unreal. The little sneaky meeting in the in amongst the production trucks. Like a level of Metal Gear Solid, who having to hide oh. from Roman. I'm, I'm taking it too far in my imagination. Yeah. This was really, <laughs> really captivating. I enjoyed it a lot. Yep. I'll be cross when it turns out to be a ruse and, and Jay is back with Roman. Do you think no, it's it's a, I, I think it'd be with Jimmy, but not with Roman. Oh. Jimmy will, because he's nobody's bitch, Jimmy. Do you think, do you think Roman's going to end up going into Mania with no allies? Correct. Oh. That would be way more scrumptious. He'll be all alone on the island of relevancy. Mm. <laughs> So alone, he's almost irrelevant. Mm. Oh, yes. He. <laughs> he can find backup lackeys to have. I'm sure, I'm sure Maximum Male Models wouldn't say no to Roman. <laughs> it comes out of mania with them. They've got their own thing to be dealing with right now. Yeah, got their, yeah. yeah. It's going to be interesting, though, on this week's SmackDown, like tonight's SmackDown, if anyone goes, do you see what happened last week, Roman? Because that's the only thing that's like roaming away from like knowing everything yeah. like oh no he rang Heyman later on I was going to say yeah we'll get to that oh. um, at the, yeah, the very oh, end yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, right, lad. stop it LA Knight is interviewed backstage finally and, and <laughs> <says> <laughs> The Rock is back on Smackdown he's, he's and, alive after Uncle Howdy <laughs> missed him with yeah. a dive <laughs> and says he doesn't want to talk about the pitch black match correct he <laughs> wants to talk about the future because the future is LA Knight yeah, yeah. I died laughing at the fact like so what happened to that? I don't want to talk about that ever again I want to move on with my life and never address it <laughs> Uncle Howdy was not mentioned this episode and I was Bray Wyatt it was hilarious that's how we're dealing with that crap it was, yeah. oh, sorry. three months <laughs> or whatever he carried Bray on his back Three months just to go, yeah, moving on. Push him up like Sisyphus. In one of the matches at North, the guy the ball. some guy standing Sorry. near me tried to do, try, I think he was trying to do like a rock and roll kind of a war horse, kind of go, yeah, or something like that. But instead he, he went, yeah, and then <laughs> I went, is that LA Knight? And uh, the guy, I didn't see who it was, but I heard him go like, yeah, I was trying to do something else, but it came out like LA Knight. And then it just started <laughs> to become, like every punch was like, yeah. It was good. LA Knight's The war horse became LA Knight. LA, <laughs> I can't remember which match it was. I feel like it was war horse. But anyway, the point is LA Knight's over in Newcastle, bro. Good. And the rest of the world. Uh -huh. And yeah. everywhere else yeah. he goes. Take that Bray Wyatt. Bray hasn't been on since the Rumble. Oh, no, no they had the no, last thing. week, didn't they? And that was Looking it. at the camera. Oh, I... That was yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. That's all we've had. Yeah. Fair, <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> yeah, the guy who's come there and told me he was double parked. <laughs> <laughs> that, lo <laughs> that lovable baby face Charlotte Flair, it says here, nice has trim, a sit-down nice interview and says she'll put Rhea Ripley oh. in her place at WrestleMania. She was heel why, as hell why, here. Yeah, why she was. Does anyone want Charlotte? I think WWE know <laughs> surely that people, everyone wants Rhea Ripley to win. I think this was the start of like a natural re-healing 
spelt H E E L heel professional wrestling. Yeah, just the way she was like, she was young, green, and wasn't ready. Three years later, I hope she's ready. Oh, no, she's very Yeah, it's the natural heel promo, wasn't it? Yep. It's going to take more than three years to get on my level. <laughs> I thought I taught her a lesson three years ago, and now I'm going to put her in a place. That's got to be them just going, oh, well, we know who's going to get cheered here. Let's might as well get Surely. Charlotte booed a bit more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Before yeah. you though, they're like, all right, Charlotte, you're likable. And go, I'm the best, and everyone loves me. <laughs> and you all stink. All right, Charlotte, that's great. Can we do that again? <laughs> what was wrong fair, with that? That's, she's probably just seen what the young bucks do. And she's like, well, they're cheer them. <laughs> it, yeah, she got a good point, actually. Yeah. Uh, and then... While Gunther watched in the uh, very tapered off crowd pit. Yes. There were not a lot of people there this week. Um, we got told that he is the si- his, la- his reign is the sixth longest as your championship run. Oh. Uh, longer than Shelton Benjamin's 2004 run, but just a bit shorter than The Rock's 97 98 run. Really? Well then. Gunther, the ring general. The Rock probably held the IC belt longer than he ever held the WWE, the main one. Probably. The Rock never really had it for long. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't need it. You know who does need it? The main event, Madcap Moss oh. won a four-way match against Rey Mysterio, Karrion Cross, yes. and Santos Escobar Go to on. become the number one contender for the IC title. Now, he's, done it. he's got coloured pants now. That's character build. That's, that's character that's, development. He's, he's got a nice tealy bluey sort yeah. of thing going on. Mine were brown from laughing. <laughs> Well, why? Goodness me. I went, oh, well, it's pretty predictable who's going to win this. It was like, oh, bad cat boss won. No reaction from him going in. No reaction when he won. Well, there was no reaction from the crowd for most of the night. They were piss poor. I that crowd. Always, That's why I had Mad Cat Moss beat them. I always think, God, I don't know much about Mad Cat Moss. And then I, I look at his body and I'm like, oh, I see what WWE see in him, brothers. He's, you see what Emma sees in him, eh? Yeah, yeah. Do you see what I he's, see? He's one of the best body guys in this business currently, in mm. my opinion. But they need to give him something. He's got a girlfriend. That's not character. What more do That's you not want? a character. He's got a girlfriend. He's got blue pants. He's got lovely hair. It looks a bit like a like an old fashioned sort of piratey type. The long white socks. Yeah. And jobs uh, all type so, yeah. type. Yeah, that sort of thing going on. Um, Karen Cross, I learned in this match, is still really slow compared to Rey Mysterio. <laughs> <laughs> we lambasted for being a knackered old horse a few uh, weeks ago. Which he technically is. <laughs> but he's still quicker than Carrie. Carrie Carrying Cross is still going for a spear across the ring and missing Rey Mysterio. <laughs> that can't happen. It Ray, shouldn't happen. Ray could it's st- like the first boss in a game. <laughs> Ray could still be all of us in a scamper from rope to rope across the ring, I think. Yeah, but we're not going we're quicker than him. No, we're not. We're not. No, this is why we're cocking to him on social media because we know we can outrun him. I've, I, I've seen Matthew lose a in-ring speed-based skill challenge, actually. A what? video of WXW. Oh, right? yeah, right. oh, what was this? Like pin the tail on the donkey or something? So like a parlor game it kind was, of thing. No, no, because that requires some skill. This one was... <laughs> ev- oh, all right, all right. Long story short. VXV, they're starting off the show with that. Hello, Das Pre Show. Sorry, right, great, thanks. Um, all right, Matthew and uh, Strigger from cagematch.net. And lovely person, all this stuff. And uh, the idea is, you both start the middle of the ring. You have to run the corner first. But the idea is, the question you're given... You have to answer a question, sorry. And then... <laughs> yeah, like I'm messing the story up. Like I'm so sorry. You have to, oh, answer. no, you have to get the terminal, then say the answer. That's okay. right. And they said, who is known as the ring general? And did that thing where you... You cartwheel to the turnbuckle. Any other time I'd know the answer, I just went, uh... <laughs> and didn't even move. So I stood there in the middle of the ring going, well, what am I going to do? Run and not say anything. He was probably main event in that show. That's what I mean. That's why I struggled with tequila. Century <laughs> Denver, like, Matthew, for a sold-out crowd in Germany, here's a question. A dog knows the answer to. <laughs> what is two plus two? I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. So uh, Strigger did that, and everyone shouted "Botch Mania" at me. And people were like, "Oh, Matthew, you're so good. You know how to, you know how to play." You really a put him crowd. over. Kid. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Any other thoughts on this match? Um, no, I can't get past the decision to have Madcap Moss. We're nothing against Madcap Moss. It's just weird. Uh, who should have won? Who were the other three again? Ray. I mean, Karen Cross is anyone getting in the time? Cross and who was the fourth? Santos Escobar. Santos is oh, getting out. Either Santos or Karen Cross should have yeah. won this match. Yeah, sure. Cross shouldn't win. He lost to Ray. Nah, he Conclusively, he's he to Yeah. But he's well. building momentum. He's rubbish. Actually, no, he's not. He's slow. He is. I take Madcap finisher should be the spear when he was doing those shoulder blocks in the corners across the ring I've never seen anyone move quicker apart from when you were in Dove Edstum, obviously um, <laughs> but I, apart from that it, it, this is Madcap Moss's world and, yeah and we're, we're just, living in it just residing I, I somewhere I used to like Madcap Moss when he was Corbin's lackey and he'd tell jokes so bad that he'd nearly fall out of his chair laughing I loved that that was class you should go back to that yeah well there is a space for being a suck up to Corbin I guess so yeah and then the main event 
<laughs> Paul Heyman relays some instructions from Roman to Jimmy, telling both Usos to stay home next week, and then says, it's funny how something's going to appear different on TV than when you hear. Oh. It was really hard, wasn't it? Fire on me. That's how Paul Eddie. Oh. Yeah. Oh, One sorry. Just, but yeah. I had some people go. I, thought, I, I was like, "What's happened here?" <laughs> I but so people say like, "I don't, I don't get what he meant." And I'm like, "No." Earlier, he Heyman said, "Your brother was there." He was, "Yeah." What did he say? Nothing. Nothing. When he had, so obviously Paul had said. I can't believe that needed explaining to some people that I knew. The bit that does need explaining mm. is: Did Paul call Roman, or did Roman call Paul? Call Paul. Better call Paul. Better call Paul. Paul. Oh. I, d- I think I like. I just like the sinister. Like, oh, he's he's seen. He knows what's going on. Yeah. If I was Jey Uso, if I was Jimmy, if I was anyone in the bloodline now, I'd be scared. Yeah, it's also a good way of getting them out of Canada. No, they can't go. I think, they I think go. this is. A, oh, they can we, now. We've, we've oh, worked, yeah. Don't worry, Matthew. We've solved it here at Cult of Holly. Ah, there's a bait and switch. They're going to end up at Elimination Chamber. Oh, yeah, <gasps> they're allowed in. My God, mm. Jay was. And then Jimmy now is as well. Oh. And all the locals will say, Sacre bleu. Because <laughs> some of them are French. <laughs> Thank you for explaining it. <laughs> That's Quebec. Sacre bleu. That's we are Canadian. <laughs> yeah. uh, I tell you what, it's a, it's, it's a wonderful web they've weaved, yes. this story. Oh, absolutely. Because now, is, is Roman going to take kindly to Paul being a little tattletale, what? a little mm. bitch? Or is he going to say, yes, well done for why, serving me, young man? Why in America? Sorry, why in the continent of North America? Do French people live in Quebec and Louisiana? What the like, Cajun people? What's that about? What's happened there? Anyone in the chat? Any in the <laughs> comments? Any, right, Stevie Turner. any French Canadian or Cajun people? Please leave a comment down below explaining that. Thank you, Stevie Turner. <laughs> <or> chat. <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know famous Cajuns in fiction? Lash Larue. Lash Larue. Damn it! That was the punch. Uh, Skinner. <laughs> Gambit from the X Men. Mm. Yeah. Can't think of any more now. Oh well. Oh, was fun. Yes. A.W. Rampage, the Trench Connection. Up oh, the French. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sacre bleu. <laughs> Moxie, Claudio, and Wheeler beat the Butcher, the Blade, and the Whimsical Kip. <laughs> oh. <laughs> whimsical Kip Sabian in a six man tag. Ooh. But he, he threw them off their game, though. Kip Sabian's thing at the minute is that he, he loses every match, but he throws, but, he, but they have to think a bit to beat him. And he, he's really he's cerebral imp- assassin. He's really impressive in everything that he does, apart from talking and existing. No, no, but, he, <laughs> but, he, no, but, he, the, but I'm so confused because I remember when World of Sport happened and him and Yeston Reese were a tag team, and there was a backstage promo, and Kip Saban was like the most charismatic one on the show. Yeah. So like, what's hap- what's happened? I don't know. No. All right, we should. Wearing a, wearing a box over your head for a year, I, cover I, facts I, on I, you. Until ago. this match, you remember the first match in AEW, the first, like him yeah. and Sammy, yeah. and they did all the moves. Until then, I thought Kip Saban was primarily like a promo guy. I didn't realize he also had all the moves. So what's happening? Well, it's all right. Now he's got nine, though. It was now he was doing the moves in this match. It's like his moves, especially the stuff he was doing with Yuta, was like really technically amazing stuff. But then he's just everything else. It's like, what the hell are you doing? As I've said it before, the super, super bad Kip Sabian so, would, yeah. would bully this Kip Sabian if yes, he was he still would. around. I if they were want different boys. The old Kip, well, the old Kip Sabian. <laughs> Yeah. It was really funny when Penelope had a dildo out for Claudio, though, because I was watching a bit quicker than normal. Anyone's not... And she went like that with the thing, and I was like, what the bloody hell is that? <laughs> and her handbag was a telephone, and it was like the, the hand bit of the telephone. Uh... But it just looked like she was going like that. Mm. With it. I was like, yeah. what the hell have I tuned into here? That would throw me off, my game. Yeah, that, yeah. That's one way of distracting someone. Uh, yeah. I put highlight this, the match was Jericho being happy that his foot has grown back. <laughs> <laughs> what? I think he was bored. He's just having a, he was on, he was on one. <laughs> Another highlight was the, the butcher going back to the shaved head. Oh, I yes. was attached to the skullet, but the bald I, head is a step up. I, I don't mind yeah. whatever the butcher looks like. He always looks hard. Mm. I love yeah. him. Darby Allen keeps his word and agrees not to go back after the TNT title while Ch- Joe is not go back after. Oh, I see. So right. Yeah, not going to challenge right, for challenge him while Joe's yeah, champion. Yeah. Not actually go to that location of TNT <laughs> while Joe's champion. He and Sting still have something planned, though, and say they're going to be, go out in a blaze of glory. What does that mean? Like the Vampiro Human Torch match at Great American <laughs> oh, Back 2000. If they get Vampiro in, that's class. Oh, my God, Have you seen please. this AAA World Cup that's going to happen? No. It's bad. There's a Trios <laughs> World Cup, and one of the teams is led by Alberto El Patron. Uh, I know, I know, I know. Well, he's, it's all right, he's not going to be showing but all, up. The, all the teams are called like <laughs> Team Mexico, Team USA, Team Rest of World. And then Alberta's team is called like the Dream Team. <laughs> they're not a country, they're just the Dream Team. 
Of course. So yeah. Uh, wow, he who, who do a World Cup tournament now? Huh? <laughs> um, <laughs> Shut up, man, Matthew, man. That worked really well. Yeah, thank you very much. That worked really well. I've always I mean, I personally that. was responsible <laughs> for it. I spent hours booking that show. Oh, Del Rio, can you do this booking? <laughs> <laughs> Elgin's not showing up. Damn. Oh no, it's ruined. <laughs> oh, wait, sorry. I mean, made better. Elsewhere, Ooh. Ricky Starks wants revenge on Jericho and his pals, starting with Daniel Garcia. Yeah. Yep. I mean, I think... <laughs> this was not an exciting episode of Rampage. All of this is leading to Starks versus Jericho, right? Because on Dynamite this week yeah. as well, Jericho went, I'm not giving him another match. So, yeah. Yeah. But we've already seen it. We're doing this in reverse. We're now it's a reverse, Jericho is feud. Starks, is Starks still trying to beat all of the lackeys? I thought he'd already lost. I thought he'd already failed at this. He won a gauntlet match, didn't yeah. he? And, and then they beat him Jer up afterwards. And so he's, he's still not... Jericho now he's going to have another match against Garcia. Again, it's a Jericho feud. Do you not remember a few years ago, him and MJF? I've got a little... He'll, and Orange Cassidy. Dan, uh, what's he called? The MMA fella. That guy. That had the Minnesota history match. Was it Minnesota? Oh, what? Dan um, Lambert. Dan that's Lambert, the one. Dan yeah. Lambert. Yeah. Dan Lambert. Which is French for Dan the Burt. <laughs> I've got a little theory, guys. A little booking theory. Oh, good. I think that Tony might be... Keep, like, when you, like when you're making a Sunday roast and you've got all the pots on a different oh. simmer, right? I think he's got... He's got Darby, he's got Starks, he's got Jungle Boy, all simmering away. Except now Jungle Boy, Christian's back, so that, the theory might be gone, but simmering away. And then MJF's obviously the champion, and he might have a four-way with the four pillars for the belt, a double or nothing. That's my theory. I hope Interesting. Well, the house will come falling down, won't it? With all, with all the pillars in the ring, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's true. Hmm. <laughs> it's a were nice they, one. they the four Good pillars? Up. Yeah yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they kept them saying it over and over again. And yeah. it's like, mm. kind of then, ruins it if they're saying it. Stop making whatever. fetch mm. happen. Sam Punk was like, yes. Britt Baker also. And then MJF went, stop trying to get with Britt Baker. <laughs> 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 oh, we missed that off the news. There was apparently a big thing in the last night's Dynamite. There was a big old, apparently, CM Punk returning thingy. And the Young Bucks what? have spoken about their relationship with CM Punk this week or something. So Did he? I yeah. didn't see that, the Young Bucks bit, but I saw Cody talking about it. Was it scene. Cody? Oh, Cody on the Errol Hawani's thing where it, he he just said all the words. No, the it was class. Was it not like CM Punk ruined the vision? Or no, the, no mi the, the, mission. Mission. the mission. The mission. The spirit of All In ended. The spirit of All In ended. And, and I realized then, that I did but not But then Cody it. said, <laughs> no, in fairness to the roller coaster, <laughs> he then said, I'm not saying that the spirit can't be re... It can't, they can't, I'm not saying they can't get it back. It's just that at that moment... Well, was, obviously, Punk's uh, gone, so we get it back. <sighs> Punk, a punk's, a diff, punk's a different, more potent spirit. <laughs> get him back in. <laughs> I did when we say the mission against, you know, being the, we meant, you know, do we get out? Did way? they mean Operation Cobra Clutch <laughs> is the mission? And they want to get Lacey in. I did see the bit where he was like, um, somebody told me, like, getting out of the company when he did, he's like, you're the smartest guy yeah, in the room. Absolutely. And he was like, that's BS. You don't save that. I think all of, tw <laughs> I think all of Twitter were <laughs> yeah. calling Cody the smartest man. <laughs> Oh. Uh, yeah, I mean, you, you would have missed out on segments like this if you'd stayed. Two of the lads from Impractical Jokers come out with Jericho's <laughs> bat and insinuate that he has a small weed. Dick. I was going to say, Ross, my, you like Impractical Jokers. I love Impractical Jokers. So these two are Q and Murr? Murr is not a wrestling fan. Yes. Q is a wrestling Murr's fan. The and the other one, one the other big Sal one. is a wrestling Sal, fan. That's right. But Sal, Sal wasn't there. No. Yeah, because he probably couldn't have taken this bump through the table. So Murr, Murr's the little one. Yeah, Murr's right. the little bald one. Yeah, yeah. Looks like a ferret. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and... <laughs> this did. I've seen some impractical jokers, and me and mates used to watch it. I haven't seen it in bloody years. I know there's some drama and stuff like that, but oh. so I know how the show but Joe, works. Joe left. That was it. Yeah, right? exactly. But now the show works, and they didn't do anything with it to make it really sell the impractical jokers. It was here's some lads you already know, well, right? I, I, I assume that in at least in America, could grab Jericho's bat. I think oh, Jericho, Jericho called Jericho. There was there was so many things they could have done with yeah. it, but did they need to? Because all the impractical jokers so famous in America. That it didn't matter. It's like here's the impact. Apparently so. Yeah. Him and Bow Wow. Uh what are the other people have had in AW Bow recently? Wow. Oh right. What happened to that? They just shown up, oh, done yeah. something, and sort of that guy with the wow? Jade's got Jade a restraining Cardio. order against the Mahead. Hanhausen, or whatever's his name sounds like Dan Hausen, but it's not. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Something Paul, Hausen. Paul Hauser. Mr. Paul Hausen. The Stingray from Cobra Kai. Stingray, Stingray. Yeah. Rick name. Rouse. He's Ricky another one. Rouse, he was good. Yeah, he actually, yeah, he was yeah. all right. Keith Lee. Accusation. You know, yeah, I'll keep. He, him will keep. I've seen the Rick Ross. The other Ross, people on the Natalia tier. I've seen right. the Rick Ross accusation thing be used like, it's like a meme now. Like if someone says something dodgy, someone will put, accusation, it's Rick Ross. <laughs> yeah. I've seen you're a big person. 
Oh, wow. Oh, okay. It's just a <laughs> in its ass. That, <laughs> never mind. Lee, you're a big boy. Oh, yeah. That, that's, yeah that, 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 that I remember that. now. Do, yeah. Do you remember when Keith Lee came out in the Rumble and brought Lesnar in? Big Ooh. boy. <laughs> Suits you, sir. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, this was rubbish. It was a painful, painful segment. And it came to a merciful end where Daddy Magic had the little tiny bat symbolizing the winky. And he did a wrestler like a oh. triple H sledgehammer shot to Mur, who just didn't move. <laughs> If you well, go back yeah, because you didn't hit him with it's, it. It's a, it's a botchamania worthy thing, I oh. reckon, Matthew. The fact he gives it the beans to Daddy Magic and Murr's just like... I think Murr's maybe, <laughs> maybe Murr's an old pro because <laughs> our wrestlers know if he doesn't hit you, don't sell it. <laughs> then he went, he went through the table and Q obviously did Murr and he just he, he started to get up by the end of the segment. Who did? He did, yeah. it, he did it Murr. So Q knows the game. He knows Q's the stage. Q's a big wrestling down. fan. Mer. Q did a, a bit with Tommy Dreamer in a ring once upon a time on the on the show. Mer's oh, I'm doing, sorry to hear that. Mer's <laughs> doing a Steve Owen Pontius yes. where he doesn't know how much he should and be selling. Chris savage. Jericho is Umanga. Right. Yep. <laughs> did he hit him right? No, no. Oh. we wish. Was he cross? Maybe when the cameras went nah. He was carrying cross. He was very upset with WWE. <laughs> um, yeah, this was rubbish. It was very WWE. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. This is where the mission's being lost. Mm. <laughs> This could be Dustin. The spirit of all in. <laughs> uh, Dustin Rhodes could. I said Dustin. That's not whatever. They all look the same. I know me. what you Dustin meant. Rhodes could. <laughs> thank you. Could to on Swerve Strickland, but gets beaten down by Parker Boudreau, and uh, everyone's <laughs> favourite French Trench. Yeah, the Maginot <laughs> Line. No, <laughs> that was a World War Two joke. That was good. All the World War One. World War One was trench. Right, thank you. They were in a massive barn, right? This barn was about a mile long. <laughs> oh, right. right here. And Dustin's cutting the promo in the middle of the barn. Yep. There's a yawning chasm of space in front of them. The only place they could have come from was this <laughs> empty space. Oh, I didn't think about were that. Were they not inside they were... a hay bale? <laughs> like, walking oh, along. That... <laughs> hey, that hay bale is moving. <laughs> yeah. So Dustin's speaking for a Dustin, minute or two. An exclamation mark appears. <laughs> he goes, it's Parker and uh, the other one. <laughs> and the trench connection come from behind the, the camera. Trench connection. <laughs> so the only place they could have come from was from in front of Dustin. It's the old... I'm not going to do it for a second week in a row. When Owen Hart got attacked from the front. Or was it Owen Hart attacked someone oh, from the front? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who yeah, was yeah. it? Back in the day. I can't remember who I can't remember who you're talking about. In a locker room. But AEW oh. done so many times, it's hilarious. Yeah, so. it was just funny. Swerve was fantastic in this, though. Yeah. But it made me... It's, it's just an racist there, Father. What? Because uh, he ends the segment by going, Happy Black History Month, and he does an evil laugh. <laughs> what? Like, I didn't see that. <laughs> wow. Swerve gets over dust, and he's like, Happy Black History Month. <laughs> 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 what? You can't be doing that. I'm like, it's Does Dustin, that happen? Justin. Yeah. Yeah, it's just wow. a racist part. And, like, but Dustin's the baby face. Yeah. <laughs> Not anymore. This is like in <laughs> early TNA when Ron Killings was the heel oh, for yeah, just wanting yeah. to be treated equally. <laughs> <laughs> and then they got some NASCAR drivers yeah. in to go... No, 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 you're no. not. You're not a real athlete. I drive cars, boy. <laughs> wow, uh, shocking and then, scenes. And then I'm pretty sure one of the NASCAR drivers beat our truth as well. It was very bad. Ah, it was. Okay. Uh, Brian Christopher was on the NASCAR yeah. lad's side. We'll move on. Okay. Meow. That was a That's bad a noise of us. time. Moving on. <laughs> Ruby Soho Impact's beats better now. Ruby Soho <laughs> beats Marina Shafir. Hope it's better than this. But Tony oh, Storm leave and Soraya... Marina Shafir alone. No, I'm just saying this episode of Rampage. Oh. But Soraya talks to her afterwards, or tries to talk to her. They're cut off by Jamie Hayter and Britt Baker. They have a big old brawl on the ramp while Ruby watches on. Ooh. Mm. I, Ruby did a lovely shoulder catcher suplex, someone on commentary mm. called it, which was a good move to be done. Then I thought the booking of the, the three-way on Dynamite was a bit odd, just the three that are involved. Because obviously Rub Ruby's in the middle. And then you got... Storm and you've got Baker either side. Mm. And I'm like, hmm, ha, ah, hmm. I don't mind barefoot ass kicking Marina Shafir. It makes her stand out a little bit more. And I think everyone was like, oh, Marina Shafir's not really standing out. And now she's a bit more standing out. She could wear those boots Seth Rollins was wearing and I would still be bored. Uh -oh. Well said, <laughs> I like Marina. I think she's got a great look. I think she looks hard. She does, yeah, but yeah. she's also really boring. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she's, she's Roddy, her and Roddy Strong could team up and be a wife and oh, husband ass kicking. Really, you. really boring wife. Roddy <laughs> Strong. Hmm? Locked in Chase U's basement, I've heard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and under Chase said, nothing you did. Still um, waiting to be picked up. Like, no, they said last, uh, next week. Come yeah. on, guys. <laughs> Backstage, Smart Mark Sterling offers his managerial services to Mark Briscoe. He's turned down, so calls Mark a stupid chicken farmer. Briscoe threatens Sterling with his confrontation with Josh Woods, or as he calls him, ah, what the? <laughs> which is the most anyone has done to put over Josh Woods <laughs> since he started. 
in a, I don't know how to say this, but it, I'm glad that they're not because obviously the whole tragedy with Jay Briscoe and everything. It's I'm so, I'm glad that that doesn't mean that they're not letting Mark Briscoe be. I'm glad they're not making him an ultra serious guy because that's just not his persona. So I'm glad that they let him be. Still a bit silly and stuff. That's good. I think they didn't try to do that. Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> I know, yeah. I don't think you could stop him if you wanted to. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Again, a reminder that uh, of this fact that the Briscoes did the reach for the sky, boy. It's not based on anything. It It's just what that's what Woody from Toy Story says when you pull the thing in his back. Mm. Oh, and there's a snake in my boot. Yeah. And all that. Oh. Yeah, it could have been there's a snake in my boot, <laughs> Briscoes. Uh. Jungle Boy squashes Ryan Nemeth and has a stare down with Brian Cage afterwards. Well, right, imagine getting Good squashed time. by someone as pretty as Jungle Boy. It's pathetic. What a dream, like, eh? Give me a second. No, no, I didn't mean, <laughs> didn't mean how nice it would be. Oh, I meant, oh. like, how embarrassing. He's too pretty to be getting one over on you that far. He's like Will Ospreay, just, repla- just, just, just replace Jungle like Boy with Ospreay. Fre- like Will Ospreay. He does the old thing to the back of the heat now. Oh, the... Hidden Whoa, the, the oh, flash shit. and blade, Alan Robson. <laughs> <laughs> flash and blade. <laughs> <laughs> this place where Jack's talking about there with Kevin Roger Bean. He's going for the, oh. the hit, the flash and blade. <laughs> <laughs> Just gives us a brief history of all the hangings in the northeast of England <laughs> while he's doing it. I'm Jungle Boy, and welcome to Night Hours. Oh, That's too local a reference. That I'm sorry. That was really <laughs> local. Yeah. It, it was allegedly big in America back in the day. But the if Night my show. dad's oh, listening, no. he'll absolutely yeah. love that reference. <laughs> if he's put up the rest of the show, just listen to that. Yeah, yeah. Very yeah. Up. Do you know on the other Civic Centre, there's a pit where they used to I put the dead that bodies video, Ross. during the play. Ross showed me a video of Alan <laughs> Robson near, near the Haymarket going, there used to be a pit. And there was a bloke who ended up in the pit and he was trapped there, but he was still alive. And then he ate all the other bodies. <laughs> and he came out all big and huge. And, and then, then he, he popped. He exploded. <laughs> <laughs> Alan Robson, shut up. <laughs> You're not telling the truth right now. <laughs> He's just like the, near the Civic Centre. Near the Civic Centre. There's absolutely a, Yeah, near the Civic Centre, there's a pond. And he goes, where that pond was, the exact shape of that pond. Uh-huh. There used to be a pit where they put people who they thought had the plague, just in case they did. <laughs> and one of these lads didn't actually have the plague, so he, he was buried. He was alive still. He was alive, but he ate all the, be- the dead bodies in there and drank their fluids and that to stay alive. Oh, he drank their fluids. I forgot about <laughs> drank their fluids. Oh, <laughs> no. He moved all bulbous and huge. <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, yeah, and he popped. And all the, <laughs> and all, and all the, all the <laughs> juices went everywhere. <laughs> All over. And that's why the hair market signs yellow. No, he didn't. That's why he didn't say <laughs> That's right, Mr. Partridge. <laughs> yeah, it's yellow. really like, yeah. But that is the ah. story of how Jungle Boy is like, well, I'll spray Meanwhile, backstage, Ortiz has a message for Eddie Kingston. He says he has Eddie's oh, back nice. and more to him become a martyr. For what the was he talking about here? I don't know what's going on. House of Black don't want Eddie. How can he then be a martyr? Have we missed something or is it just <laughs> no. confusing? Is it just bad? It's just a bit rubbish. Eddie wanted in. Imagine. Tommy End. <laughs> Big Tommy. He didn't want Eddie. And now Ortiz thinks Eddie wants in. Imagine, Eddie, Eddie's going to eat all the House of Black. <laughs> imagine, imagine having Eddie Kingston on your roster, right? Like the most believable natural, charismatic bloke, maybe in world wrestling. And this is the sort of thing. I don't want it, man. I don't want Maddie Kingston to be in this story, in this spooky stuff. Give him gave him the belt. Give him, give him his old yeah. gun back yeah. and allow him to be the old Eddie Kingston. Yeah. But, and you can team with the old Kip Sabian. I'll be an odd <laughs> oh. couple. <laughs> Renee interviews Hangman. Oh, actually, before this, maybe... Sorry, it's not as a people person again. Um, so... The Mark Henry, it's time, the main event stuff. They're now, he's pre-recorded now, which I think loses a lot of the momentum and coolness. Oh, it's it. just as robotic but, as ever was. <laughs> stop it, stop it. <laughs> but now they, they're airing it. They aired it before this promo. So was this the main event? Yes, it was. All right, all right. Rene interviews oh, Hangman, yeah, the main event. Right. Enough time, the talk yeah. is over. <laughs> no, they, no, it's not. <laughs> They're going to open the show it's next time. Just a little bit more talking. <laughs> next, the start of the next show. The time for talking is over. <laughs> Who's angry about losing two of the three matches against Moxley? He says this isn't over, but it's interrupted by the whimsical <laughs> Kip Sabian and Pilar Ford. Hangman almost attacks Kip, but calms himself down and walks away, Cause possibly Kip's, poison. Because Kip, uh, possibly poison. Yeah. Kip's, can, he's in his head, he confuses people. Do you remember Pac was confused when he wrestled him that time? <laughs> this is this, There's something going on with Kip. He angers people and throws them off their game, like Prince Nassim. <laughs> <laughs> How great would it be? We get come Tuesday in NXT, and this is our over contribution of wrestling. <laughs> and we're like, poisoned you. The only problem is he loses all the time. But if not, it would be genius. 
But the thing yeah. you'll know is that he'll try again next week. Yeah, yeah. And that's the good thing about Kip Saban. When were the Butcher and the Blade his... Has this been for a while now? Uh, it's it's been, been a little while. Okay, right, okay. Yeah, I'm sure. not entirely sure what the tie... I think the tie is Penelope and uh, the Bunny. Has he paid them oh, in? Oh, brings he... them together. Oh, right. Yeah, good to I thought he work. was paying them in shillings. <laughs> <laughs> In the main event... A sack, a sack of monies for you, <laughs> sir. And you know it's a sack of monies because there's a dollar sign on the side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Orange Cassidy retains the All-Atlantic title against Lee Moriarty thanks to Danhausen taking care of Stokely at ringside. After the match, Orange and Danhausen are beaten down by Jarrett and friends, but the Acclaim save the day. Whoop. The Whoop. Acclaim, they've, they've kind of... Um, the Acclaim have kind of been shuffled away a little bit. Uh, but oh no, uh, no, uh, never mind. On, on they ch- they changed that on, on air dynamite. Yeah, didn't they? yeah. Lee uh, has sorry. nice submission holds there, Matthew. Yes, he does. He's got lovely submission holds, especially the thing where he pins the arms back and then leans back in a bridge. Mm. That looks like it would really hurt. Is Lee? What's your favorite bridge in Newcastle? <laughs> My favorite bridge in Newcastle is the Tyne Bridge, and My, I think uh, it's yeah. such a shame how it's been neglected by the local council for so long. Good point. Go on. Maybe they can't decide whether it's <laughs> Newcastle or Gateshead. Like which one it belongs to. Yeah. You have to argue the toss. Yeah. No confusion with the Millennium Bridge. No, no. No. Ooh. That little island on the side means it belongs to Gates Heed and mm. they have to Aww. pay for it. Um mine's probably the Tyne as well. Joe? What's yours? Oh Joe. As an outsider. Tyne Bridge. Yeah. It's the most iconic yeah. one, is it? Yeah. It's green mm. yeah. as well. Not many green bridges. I was thinking how much time the one last. How long yeah. it would it take? Yeah, mm. yeah. 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 Oh, he's more impressed. Absolutely. With the yeah. I think the bridge is more iconic than the Angel yeah. of the North. Right, you can do more stuff with it. I, 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 I get like... straight. <laughs> <laughs> I like the I like the swing bridge. Mm. That's all right. The whimsical swing bridge. I don't like <laughs> driving over the whimsical swing bridge because the bit where it becomes like the bit where it swings, the, the little yeah. it's too jarring of a drive <laughs> over. Oh, you think yeah. you go straight in the tight. Bump, bump. <laughs> Terrifying. Um I, if I'm, Kip Saban was driving you know the what? car, his wing car would sprout wings up the side and then fly away. Over, chitty, chitty, bang, bang, <laughs> we love you. Over lockdown, but once the gym started opening again, um, I'd usually go at like, on a weekend, I'd go quite late at night to the gym just because it would be empty and it'd be nice. I could use whatever I wanted without waiting for anything. And so I'd walk down the quayside and cross the Millennium Bridge. And I noticed that around that sort of time, a lot of youths would hang out on and around the Millennium Bridge. And I thought, this is like a youth hotspot, the Millennium mm. Bridge. Is that true? <laughs> what? <are you> asking? <laughs> oh, uh, have you yes, heard, it's actually the notes of, for this week. I'll ask Fraser, he probably is one of them. <laughs> Fraser doesn't go out after nine o'clock at night. He's one of the youths, though. He's tucked up in bed with a hotty chockey. Mm. Orange Cassidy did two diving DDTs, right? That should have been the end of the match because they looked gnarly. Mm, the rest yeah. of it was great. Every move was hit perfectly. Mm-hmm. Monday Night Raw was also on. Yeah. yeah. Rampage <laughs> was just whatever this week. Yeah. <laughs> I would like that comment. It's going to get me punched in the face. <laughs> Monday Night Raw, Becky and Bailey and Belair and Bobby and Brock and Bronson and Boogs. Okay. Thank you for really giving your all of that one there. Thank you. Thank you. you made it better than I, had to. I just noticed there was a lot of people who began with B on this one. You are right. And it starts <laughs> off with one of them. Mm, Becky Lynch mm. opens the show asking Adam Beas <laughs> for a chance to get an elimination Bamber. I'm going to stop doing that now. It's Brian Bedonde on the show. <laughs> Bailey <laughs> interrupts a battle. and complains about a cage match loss to Becky last week. They argue until Belair arrives and says she doesn't mind wrestling them both. Pierce books a triple threat. If Becky or Bailey win, they're in the chamber. But if Belair wins, neither are added. Ooh. Right. Oh, what an idiot Bianca is. Creating herself more work when she doesn't have to. But she wants Working that. Working harder, not smarter. She, but she wants that. She can stay ready in other ways as far as I'm but concerned. But she wants it. <laughs> <laughs> she wants all the smoke. <laughs> Let yeah. other people have some smoke. <laughs> Pass Just it around. Yeah. Just a bit of a smoke for a treat. <laughs> uh, the Judgment Day beat the Street Profits in a tag match for attack by Edge and Beth Phoenix, who was too busy grabbing their asses afterwards. Beth spears Dominic, but Rhea hits her with the Riptide. Mm. More smoke references from Finn Balor saying he's going to get the Street Profits and they're going to get rolled up, balled up, and smoked up. Whoa. Pass a fatty to that. Finn Daddy. Oh. <laughs> that was good. Yes. Wow. You're like one of the group. I am kid British, me actually. Um, this is what your group look like. Um, but yeah, Dom, when he gets an elimination chamber eventually, that's a nailed on winner. Yeah. Because once again, he was like, I know a thing or two about yeah. being locked up. Yeah. Uh, he's going to be dominating that chamber like he dominated his block. Yeah. Yes. Which he really did. People at home who don't get the jokes. Yeah. He really <laughs> actually did. Yeah. Um, so, oh, wait. I can't remember what I was going to say. I had a point and it's gone. I tried to cling on to it and it's gone. Oh, no. Help, lads. 
Oh, oh, yeah. oh no. Judgment Day vs. Street Profits oh, was good. I genuinely can't tell. That was it. Who's going to win that mixed tag match at Elimination Chamber? Because it should be Rhea getting the pinfall over Beth Phoenix, surely. Or even Edge, if they're going to be really putting her over. But it's not going to happen, is it? Because it's in Canada. A lady touching a man. Well, she might do. A, <laughs> you know, well, I wouldn't mind it. Like, do you remember when Ronda beat up Triple H? Like, if that sort of thing. Yeah. I guess the ref wouldn't allow her to pin because it's a mixed tag. You can't yeah, do you've that. Gotta get out the ring. Yeah. But um, but I don't know if they actually will win because it's in Canada. Like, do you not think they'll just have? Oh, edging? getting booed out the building, wouldn't it? Edging. Yeah. I mean, yeah, good heat. Then, but then no, the that, end, that would really help them actually the because end, they want Rhea to be booed. But then at the so. end, but they don't. Not after Charlotte's thing, maybe. Well, don't they want Charlotte to be cheered? I don't That's know. the thing. But then, at the, so but then at the end of the show, presumably Sammy's going to lose as well. So it's like all the Canadians are crap. Sammy's going to win. Oh, 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 ah, but, oh, but it's have... Canada. They might just boo and cheer who they want. It's bizarro, lads. It's bizarro, world, everybody. Mm, yeah. They boo who they cheer and cheer who they boo. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I'm JBL. Oh, you nah, were sounding nah, a nah. bit like the Canadians on South Park. Ah, Terrence, 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 Terrence. <laughs> but every Canadian watching that loves this. Oh, but I thought yeah. the, the match was um, the Ballad of Angelo Dawkins. Oh. <laughs> right? How does he, that one go, Ross? Was, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> he was a bit awkward during the entrance, right? Because the camera was on. I don't know if this was by design, but I took it as by design, so I'm going to talk about it. it was, camera was on Dawkins. Ford didn't do his normal get on the apron and start like doing a little pose on the apron and whatnot. Ford went off to the announce table and Dawkins was just a bit like, oh, and he just sort of awkwardly walked nah. around. They're not on the same hymn sheet. Do you think that was happening? Or do you think that was an accident? I don't, I don't it was know. Part of the story. I like to think they're sowing the seeds. Maybe. Maybe I hope not. You'd never see more coordinated tag teams make an entrance mistake like my favourites. Boisterous behaviour. <laughs> No wonder they lost. And all, yeah, also when I say there was a... one. You say two one, oh one. Two one. Thank you. <laughs> two one. We could be in boisterous behaviour. There was also a little misstep on one of their tandem manoeuvres, which never happens. What? I, I guess that can happen, but you know, I like to think this. It's by design, maybe. And also, Dalton's taking the pin after a pretty short match. I was thinking, oh, oh, uh oh. Yeah, that's that. That was a bit shocking because he's the bigger. He's the bigger of the two as yeah. well. Yeah. And Montez yeah. will be like, I won. I'm in the chamber. You're losing every week. I bring the swag like nobody can. You mm. don't. Yeah. You lose every week. Mm. <laughs> yeah. You're like, you're done, Matthew. Are you all right? Just waiting to get to the NXT, I think. I am. <laughs> we usually, sorry, we usually have a little, little break, so I think I have one after Raw. Oh, do you sorry, I didn't realize you needed a little break. Sorry, Excuse Matthew. me, sir. Do you want to go for a pee pee? <laughs> no. Nice one, sir. Yeah, it's nice. It's that that review, you know what it is. Um, but no, I'm full of energy. Full, right. lean, and full of beans. You need to get Tom on the phone again. <laughs> <laughs> You're yes. the one saying you. <laughs> hey, he's got Matthew stuff there. <laughs> Ron Lesnar arrives, the contract signing, but Bobby refuses to get Bobby, in the ring. Bobby. Instead, staying at the top of the ramp. He's not sure if he wants to sign the contract, which annoys Lesnar. He, he did Austin as well. I got my kids to check it, my lawyers, <laughs> my representatives. Yeah, my, my kids <laughs> checked it. He even good. paused to think of another word because the crowd <laughs> yeah. were going, what? Yeah. Who beats up the security guards, separating them. Lashley hits a backdrop and a spear in the ramp before signing the contract. Backdrop was scary. I reckon that backdrop was a shoot, you know, lad. A shoot backdrop. A shoot backdrop. <laughs> it didn't look like it was meant to happen, but it just happened because they're two big brawly boys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> maybe maybe Bobby planned it because he was like, if he charges at me, I'm mm. going to shoot backdrop him now. On the rundown later on for the card this Saturday, Corey Graves does say, ah, Lashley versus, uh, the, 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 what's his name, Lesnar. I'm so serious saying Bobby Lelele. versus Brock. Okay. I actually forgot their names. Lele versus Bebe. Um, this will decide who will be main event in WrestleMania. What? He said it on the rundown. Start again. He said who will be like the other person challenging for something. My oh, goodness. so on night one then. He said it, and I'm not sure if he meant it because the different graphic came up, or it's just like, this is going to be the, <laughs> the thing. Like, oh, okay, I, well, I Brock assume... or Bobby won, so they get the shot on a... Oh, I assume night one was going to be um, probably Rhea beating Charlotte. I thought... So yeah, but... that to me seems like they they probably and maybe won't... it was a mistake then. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. maybe. Oh, hmm. a mistake in the wrestling? Hmm. Never. Yeah. I thought uh, it was is Bobby the proper? He How long's Bobby been the proper heel? Hey, this this felt jarring that he was suddenly in a suit going my representatives. Yeah, yeah. The classic yeah. heel stuff with his own table up the top of the ramp like a chicken poo would. Mm -hmm. It's been a little bit every week. So I'm like, why would I want to boo Bobby? But then it's like, uh, okay. I feel like there needed to be a more concrete. He's back with MVP. I'm all right that they're not going too out there with all that because right. it's been a natural thing. Because it's just you just, just want to see them go at it. Yeah, that's it. So Andrew's not excited for it. Oh, Why yeah. not? On the pitches, no. He was like, oh, I don't think it's been that good so far. <laughs> what? I know me and Ross were aghast. I am also aghast. 
I could see his reasoning, but I can't remember what his reasoning was. He preferred... He went, e. I think he preferred the... Maybe... Maybe I was thinking of, like, Goldberg stuff. Because he, he mentioned mm. the match that I had, and he was like, it wasn't that good. I was like, oh, yeah. Maybe I was thinking of Goldberg versus Bobby. I can't remember now. Or maybe I was thinking of Goldberg versus Bro. At Mania. I don't know. Yeah, mm. I can't remember what his reasoning was. But but I, at the time, it seemed... He preferred the segments to the, segments ah, to the yes. matches, and we were like, no, 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 no. But then by the end, because he's so agreeable... We were like, yes, Andrew. <laughs> and also, I, I do feel bad just disagreeing with Andrew sometimes. It's hard. So, you see agree. his heartbreak. Yeah. yeah. It's like taking a sweet away from a child. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's the random child in the street. We've all been there. One of the questions <laughs> we got at Coldaholic Live was, who is the loveliest member of the team and why is it Andrew? Yeah. Who's and we that? all went, oh, Andrew's last person done that. She's like, no. And another last in the crowd went, no, that was me. Yeah. <laughs> what, what a dream. Everyone's hand going, no, it was us. Yeah, it was yeah, us. Yeah. We all think this. Yeah. Just say when the cameras aren't rolling. That's all I'm <laughs> mm. It was great because that's the one thing he, that's one thing Jack and Andrew did not need right now. I feeling a bit nervous was compliments. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> stop it. Oh. I was an absolute stallion in front of a live crowd. You were you great. About? You were yeah, great. I know. <laughs> Piper Niven beats Mitch Him. Do you not see? I felt like a wrestler, man. When I did my entrance into the room, paused halfway down and just stopped. Just oh, then, yeah. oh, yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Know, was that? Like a wrestler. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, this was a match that happened. Uh, Piper Niven took a big old DDT on her head. And I'm not sure if she took that because she's a pro and she was all right. Because Corey oh, Graves yeah. was like, ah, oh mm. my God, ah. I'm like, I've seen Pipe Devon take worse. Why, yeah, she's just showcasing what she can do. Yeah. She was throwing bitches around one moment and then being thrown around the next. I just can't believe she's not in the Elimination Chamber. I think it's Natalia who's in instead of her. Oh, yes. I, that, well, there you go. That seems like such Because a... it's where? I know it's in Canada, but oh. there's already Canadians on the card. I think you could have had Piper in. You could have both of them in. Make it a seven person. Piper should have been yeah. in this match. Piper Niv. <laughs> <laughs> She's got a new finisher name, though. You'll never guess what it is with her being from the Scotland. What is it, Matthew? Have a guess. The Battered Mars Bar. Nelly. Oh. But not Nelly. Uh... Just name other Scottish oh, things. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah, you know, I genuinely don't know the answer. It's going to be like the Haggis Driver. No, no. The, um... It's not food related. Oh, oh all right. Thistle. Nah. Uh, ben Nevis High- Bounce. Highlands. Getting closer. Highlands. Oh. oh. Lock. Oh, the, it's the Loch Ness Driver or something. The Loch Ness Slam. Loch Ness Slam, that's the one. That's horrible. <laughs> it was a nice squash match, I thought. Continue to build a Piper for after WrestleMania. Yes. Yes, I agree. The Loch Ness Slam. That's a horrible. <laughs> oh, the, the lawn sausage set up <laughs> into the... It's like you doing uh, the Bish Buster. Yeah. Yeah. I like that, actually. Oh, <laughs> right, 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 right. The Broken b- Buster Bish. <laughs> Sorry. Um... What are we doing now? Somebody's saying interrupts the show. I wants to talk to Cody Show's Rhodes. called TakeOver, right? Yeah. I'll just never forget when Seth Rollins yeah. took over TakeOver. <laughs> Sammy asks if Cody really thinks he can beat Roman at EC. Cody says he does. But what do you want to talk about? It doesn't really. It doesn't really matter what he thinks. <laughs> Why does Cody keep saying what do you got? I don't to? know. Is it his catchphrase? Because it was funny the one time when he said it before it was a meme. Yeah. All oh, right. Okay. <laughs> but that time it wasn't meant to be funny. <laughs> Sammy was already talking to him. Yeah, <laughs> what yeah you wanted to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know. It's in that Alan Robson documentary. What the <laughs> people. Does Sammy himself believe he could beat Roman? The pair hype up Sammy's chances before Cody tells Sammy he doesn't want to see him next week on Raw because he'd rather see him at WrestleMania. That is Aww. Neil Warnock levels of mad <laughs> Don't want to see you next week. Because I want to see you at wrestling. Yeah, he's absolutely setting him up to get his head kicked. Cody in. could be sound teacher on the advert with, oh, <laughs> with no. motivation like that. That's Imagine exactly if a is. teacher <laughs> rocked up looking like Cody. Thousand, thousands. What, in of... an English, in an English comprehension. Yeah. <laughs> this shoes. This school. Suits. This school has more than one teacher. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! I don't know if he'd make it out alive with the, the tan, <laughs> the hair, the tattoo. Oh, he'd make it out alive. He'd be, he'd be dropping down the floor, uppercutting kids, <laughs> crossroads, eraser, <laughs> and a compass too. In my pencil case, I take to school. <laughs> oh, it was nearly good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh what we're saying here? Yeah, Cody should be a manager. Um, if he 
ever stops doing the wrestling because oh, yeah. he was very inspirational. Yes, yes. He made me believe not once but twice. He gave, he gave, he came again. He came and he came again. Stop it. Um, the organic chant of Sammy's old theme was a nice little touch. Yeah, because yeah, Sammy yeah, was yeah. like, oh, no, we shouldn't bring it back. It's no, step, you should, Sammy. You're wrong. Step back for me as a character. Mm. I hope that was a little swerve from him. Was it Ariel Hawani when he was baking the biscuits or whatever? He did, yeah. he did say that he... Um, he wouldn't mind it for one night in Elimination Chamber. But I think, just have it back. Yeah. But I know he's more of a serious guy now. That's it, yeah. I get why they change it, because it's hard to, like, here is the biggest match of his life. <laughs> 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 he doesn't, I, I get where he's coming from. Yeah, he frowns. Yeah, he's done frowny stanking before. Yeah, he has. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he's done that in, like, NXT before big matches. <laughs> I'd like to watch his entrance before Nakamura, the debut. Oh. See what that entrance was like. Because that, that would have been a serious... Skank. Well, I, 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 skanking all the way to the hospital after that one. I remember watching that behind the scenes thing where Triple H says to Nakamura, I don't care if your entrance takes F in three minutes. I'm like, go on, Triple H. You're leading this revolution. Yep. It's a shame what happened to NXT. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers, pal. Uh, backstage, Nikki Cross is getting ready to team up with Nikki Cross. <laughs> That's what it says here. Oh, no. <laughs> Nikki Cross is getting ready to team with tag. Carmella? Uh, yeah. 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 A crazed Nikki introduces their third partner, Nikki Cross. No, 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 no. Oh, right. <laughs> clown, clown ask her. <coughs> Candice LeRae arrives and asks Nikki why she's been following her, but Nikki just laughs. Ah. Later, Carmella, Nikki, and Asuka beat Liv Morgan, so, Natalia, and Raquel Rodriguez. I thought that, until Candice said that, I thought that Nikki had answered it because she's been playing hide and seek with her pal Asuka. I thought she wasn't following Candice at all. She just happened to be in the background hiding from Asuka. She's been stalking her for months at but, this point. Ah, uh, yeah, it's been longer than Asuka. <laughs> it's been longer than Asuka's been little DDP. Yeah. Mm. Oh, hi, the little DDP. Yeah. Mm. Ah, she wants to. No. She, uh, yeah, she, she wants to shag Johnny Gargano. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, if we get Biker Johnny <laughs> as Biker, like Biker Taker, that would be amazing. Oh, I thought maybe he was from right around the corner. <laughs> no, Biker Johnny. Sorry. <laughs> Keeping it local. On his BMX. He's stolen BMX. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I, I thought Nikki Cross being cracked and then t- like the revelation of the airport stuff made her look like completely mental next to Asuka, mm. which was weird because mm-hmm. Asuka looks mental to begin with when mm. you get up. I, I wouldn't mind them as a tag team, although I do think Asuka sh- should win the chamber as a solo star. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. I thought the match was interesting. You know, the one night of the year where the, the superstars of SmackDown and Raw go head-to-head. That was a nice <laughs> little touch. Yeah. I know that's not a thing anymore, but you know, <laughs> we might as well throw it in there. Yeah. 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 Um, Nobody stood out in the match until Asuka started throwing fools around. Yeah, and it was an interesting pick to have Sabu lose by submission. It's not really in fitting with her character these have days. What? Sabu? Oh, Liv Morgan, Liv yeah. Morgan. Right. I was like, Liv what? Morgan tapped. Sabu would never. No, Liv That's Morgan right. should never tap. She, she's a, well, she's a homicidal suit. You know, that sort of stuff. Oh, that sort of stuff yeah. Yeah. She wants to have a match with, what was it the other day? Like, in the press, she was saying, tables on fire or something. No, no. She's, she's a <laughs> crazy lady. And you know yeah. what, right? The other day, um, my girlfriend was watching that Pamela Anderson documentary that's on nothing. I'd turn it off, me. All right. <laughs> Did you not think that Pamela Anderson has the same voice as Liv Morgan? <laughs> I was like, hang on, <laughs> Liv Morgan? Potentially, I. I just didn't understand. I watched about ten minutes of it just because I was intrigued. I didn't really understand what was going on. It was just like her going, "Oh, I'm Pamela." It was a With really music in the background, and that was it. It was a really <laughs> yeah. It go it goes through all like the hardships and that, which is fair enough. Like that she's suffered in her life. But the ending was like a clumsy tying together of every, like it was like it ended with her starring as the lead in Chicago on Broadway, despite not being able to sing or dance. <laughs> and she's like, I can't sing or dance. And then it cuts to like her son who looks the spit of Tommy Lee saying like, yeah, she's so brave. She's a badass for doing this. And it's scenes of her kind of singing the songs from Chicago and everyone going, well done, Pam, you were brilliant. And I'm like. <laughs> it was a did weird... she actually perform on? Uh, did yeah, yeah. Did she? Yeah, oh, okay. and That's wasn't weird. that good. I mean, there'll be some poor ass out there who was going to get that part, and then yeah. they were like, sorry, Pamela Anderson. No, gonna... it's a good story. Yeah, the heart yeah, thing at the Yeah, it was weird, because yeah. the bits where she was talking about, like, like the sex tape being leaked yeah. and all the... It, I didn't get that far. Just all the, to, yeah. all the stuff that she'd <laughs> suffered over the years, famously. Right. I was like, oh, fair play. Like, she's had a bad life, and she's managed to make something good out of it, like all of her yeah. activism and all that sort of stuff. It just didn't need the weird Chicago bit at the end. It was odd. Aye. But, it, oh. but I missed the start. So from the sounds of it, I didn't miss much at the start. I oh, know you didn't. <laughs> right. I got bored. Fair yeah. enough then. Yeah. Speaking of boring, Baron Corbin is backstage. He's angry at Sammy and Cody for interrupting his promo. Uh, that was like, brilliant. That, Do you like how I thought that was, by saying, I, by the way, my girlfriend was watching the Pamela thing and I just happened to be in the room oh, paying, yeah, very, yeah, yeah. paying close attention. No, no, no. I was watching wrestling. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, that'll be like people who's just like, all right, I want to say something, and he's getting rid of the. When bystander, Kathy goes there, goes back to him. there's something important happening in the ah. arena. And the camera cuts. <laughs> Classic bum ass <laughs> behavior. <laughs> Although it is, and, yeah, it's a promising step for his character. And also, I did it. My all right tweet of the week. I already oh, need one. Is uh, right retweeting tweet that of, of the week. week. <laughs> was that Baron Corbin? He said it a few times, but I think it's the only time I went back and checked. It was like, it can't be right, right? Yeah, the last time Roman Reigns was pinned was by Baron Corbin. At TLC 2019. The end of days was a serious... Was it from the end of days? Yeah, because Drew kicked yeah. out for the first time last year, didn't he? Yes. WrestleMania. That's right. That was the setup. Uh, he dropped the rope. Yeah. Wow. Oh, God. Kaboom. I prefer him in the bang bros or whatever. <laughs> yeah. I also prefer him getting banged. Yeah. Uh, so Baron Corbin... He's doing the banging. That's right. Uh, <laughs> whatever. Um, he had to have Dolph and the Revival help him. Dolph and the Revival. Yeah. When? In when the he TLC beat Roman. Match. TLC 2019. But he's yeah. still still last person to beat Roman Reigns. Yep. Fair play. Was this when he put dog food on his head? Yeah. Oh yeah. my god. I think that was the culmination of that feud because that was like the early days of SmackDown on Fox. Mm. The dog food. That's right. And then he built up the Rumble where they had that false count anywhere match. That was just oh, them yeah. going around the arena, going, "Wow, it's pretty big." Remember this the place. spear <laughs> on top of the dugout. That's right. Yeah. Oh, was that against Baron? Yeah. I remember that was a good. That was an exciting. I watched that in Aspers. <laughs> remember that. <laughs> yeah. You're going, I can't tell the difference to these tequilas. It was brilliant though when he's, he starts going brilliant. off on Cody and he's like, he's like, I think his wife's a joke. This, that, and you know, oh, yeah, I yeah. think his dog's it. Just... Yeah, that, that was it. <laughs> yeah, Pharaoh's too far. You yeah, can't, yeah. yeah. Cody attacks him and they fight to ringside for an impromptu match, which Cody wins very easily and quickly. I was getting shades like of the Revolution Ladder match where Cody was in the background selling his injury <laughs> in the tunnel. Do you remember that? Boom! <laughs> yes. <laughs> And I know it wasn't... Uh, that, match that was. It, I know this was better than that, but I, I just couldn't help but think of it. I was like, oh, no. You know what would have saved Cody on that occasion? What? Is if he got the microphone while he was down selling, just shouted to the crowd, what do you want to talk about? <laughs> it's what everyone wanted to hear. Everybody. That would have saved the segment. I think... He, I have started the revolution. It's here. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. that, and the camera zoomed in to his... <laughs> To his listening hand. <laughs> it zoomed in just at Cody selling, missing all the action mm. that's happening in the ladder match. That would have helped him. <laughs> Cody Rhodes was in that match. You know what else Hey, he's him? America's hero now, and let's get on board. Well, they can show I'm him. I'm on board, Chad... but I'm scared about Sammy and the whole... Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Chad Gable stops Otis from eating a hot dog and accidentally <laughs> throws it in Monsieur's face. You want Otis to be a big, burly boy. That helps your tag team, Chad. Mm. Yeah. Let him eat all the hot dogs he wants. Maxi Dupree wants to recruit Otis for some modeling. The models leave and Bronson Reed arrives for a little stare down. Like, oh, sorry. Otis. Otis, yeah. Otis. Mansoir keeps getting spaffed in the face by Otis's juices. Last week it was sauce. <laughs> this <know>. week. <laughs> <laughs> it was good. We missed it off last week. I think Gable's last... what he looked like before he went to the pit. And Otis. <laughs> what are you saying, Ross? <laughs> You've just said Otis looks like a man who's my juices are coming up. up. Otis is a man who's eaten (laughs) humans riddled with the plague. Yes. And emerged from a pit. That's what you've said. In in a word, yes. Otis (laughs) is really funny. He is. When uh, he made some American psycho references under his breath. Do you know when they gave the business card and he went, what am I Mm. going (laughs) to It's a scary... I'll stay in touch. And he went, touch. (laughs) He's so good. It can still oh. go one or two ways, though, which is the terrifying yeah, thing. Yeah. Nobody's not just a fat lad getting mocked in funny clothes. There might be a few weeks of that, but yeah. I think he might, he might come good in the end, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully with a man swab and he keeps getting spaffed in the face. I liked how Chad <laughs> thought they were talking about him to be a model. Oh, Chad. I'll Chad be has been a model, you can tell. Chad's yeah. a good-looking man. He's a sexy boy. But, uh, no, I'm not going to say that. I would have sounded like Matthew. Height-shaming Chad Gable. I was going to say models are tall. <laughs> You shamed me, is that what you're saying? No, 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 you always height shame Chad Gable. What? You always go, <laughs> Shorty G. No, I'm mocking the gimmick. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. not, I'm not, I'm 5'7", who am I being mocking? <laughs> but you... Ha ha, look at that short, man. You're short, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Shorty. I mean, well, Deck did it, and I'm a celebrity. He always used to mock Dennis Wise for being a very small man. A very small man. Yeah, me Deck... and Deck are often spoken the same well, sentence. Deck's a small man, so that's the joke, I guess. It's allowed. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, go and play with your hair. Uh, <laughs> it's in my Bron- eye. Bron- it Bron- <laughs> I think it was entwined in an eyelash. It's gone now. Bless you. Bronson beats Mustafa Ali really quickly. Guys, you deck him. The Good bump life. on the timekeeper's oh, chair was gnarly AF, bros, no cap. Yes. Um, uh, not as gnarly as Kofi's in the rumble, but that was mm, more of an accident. Yeah. I think they're doing a nice job of slowly building Bronson. I don't think yeah. WrestleMania's come too soon for him to do anything of note. So I reckon he's another one like Paper, who's yep. uh, being built up for after WrestleMania. Yes. I agree. Yeah. Seth Rollins is the guest on Miz TV, but doesn't want to talk about Logan Paul, a man after my own heart, <laughs> because he doesn't give a damn about three, two, one. This business. All this business. All this yeah, bro. Because oh, Logan, <laughs> Logan doesn't Sometimes care. I forget you guys can't use <laughs> Logan, so so Logan else, doesn't so. care about this business that That's Seth right. dreams of main eventing WrestleMania. Of course. And people are saying because of the one CM Punk video we did last week, all the stuff about him never highlighting WrestleMania was a dig at him. I could see but that being... Like, oh, nah, 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 just nah, knowing nah, how nah, weird nah. and subtle wrestler humor can be sometimes, yeah, right. I would actually not be surprised if that was a dig at Punk. Yeah. This reminds him that... Uh, <laughs> I have headlined WrestleMania. <laughs> he murked him right yeah. off, didn't he? Seth Rollins yeah. is... <laughs> he went, yeah, Seth stupid, Rollins... basically. He goes, I might be stupid. I've headlined WrestleMania. <laughs> yeah, <but laughs> Rollins... And then he spaffs him on Saw's face. <laughs> <laughs> but Rollins has beaten Lesnar and Roman in the main event. Does that, Does that count, count or... apparently? No, yeah. you got to close the show. Maybe... It doesn't count. He did. Yeah, dude. yeah he oh, did whatever. the thing on the... I remember oh, that. that one. Yeah, 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 yeah. He wasn't in the match. He wasn't on the marquee. Oh, right, he wasn't yeah. He wasn't the name. He wasn't the draw, yeah. 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 Anyway, this provokes him into attacking Miz. Seth hits Miz with the... Sorry. Miz hits... Seth hits <laughs> Miz with a stomp. With those root red, Rudy, Rudy, red booties on. That's <laughs> I don't right. know what happened there. But with Austin's the theory on. gets involved and hits Seth with a town down. Yes. But uh, imagine taking the stomp off those red boots. Oh, oh, great, don't they? Devastating. Like, Will, 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 Will Wellington? Will, Will, Will Washington? No, he's very worse for five, doesn't he? Yeah. Uh, with Will in his big red boots. What was he called? <sighs> Willie. Wish, Willie. Wish Wellington. Wish Wellington. Wish Wellington? No, no, Wish Wellington. <laughs> What's I don't that? know what's happened. What's going on? He had big red boots, though, didn't he? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's, that was the aye. That uh, he it did, because was... this is the most cutting edge I've seen WB in for quite some time. With the fashion? Yeah. This is the thing that I've seen on social media a lot this week. Yeah, they've accidentally stumbled into... And they go, what type of idiot would wear this? Seth Rollins, he wrestles for us. Get him. I looked on Twitter, and when this account's retweeted the red boots thing, it was the company that makes the red boots. Uh-huh. And I looked at, they had like a million followers. They had loads of followers. I was like, oh, WWE have, yeah. yeah. They've stumbled. I went, Jack Atkins, who are these people? And he knew instantly who they were. Of course. Because he's Jack Atkins. He's so good looking. And well dressed. He's not, yeah, right? he collects shoes. Drippy, drippy. You can tell. He would lend me shoes to dress up like a twat for YouTube <laughs> videos. <laughs> Sometimes Did you tell him that though? That's yeah, yeah. Oh, right. Stussy Dunks. I didn't know what a Stussy was before the, the meeting Jack Atkins, that's for sure. Sometimes I feel like now that Tubman's gone, it's like when it's like in 2001 when there was a monopoly in the wrestling world. Like, no one's challenging Jack Atkins in the drip oh, no. stakes. You know? We need, we need someone to. Joel's quite drippy. Can you up your drip? You are quite and drippy. Then, you got no chance. I know he's too. Right. I know. <sighs> He's the Fed Yelenko of uh, why I even bother trying to pronounce that. He, Move plays, on, Matthew. he plays for Everton, doesn't he? Yeah, sure. Not Backstage. The, the lightweight boxer? No. Damn it. Oh, move on, Matthew. Okay. You're dying. Backstage, Elias tells Rick Boogs that maybe they can collaborate one day. Boogs has a match with Miz, who doesn't want to wrestle after being beaten down by Seth. Boogs wins. And I liked how they went back to the ring and gone, well, Miz is still down. Yeah. yeah He's got a yeah. match next. That was Good nice selling. Touch. Yep. Uh, I it's it's weird how Elias thinks he's Yoda in this when it's just clearly as we said earlier the Grim Reaper is Rick Boogs for him. Yeah. Um, it's good. Yeah, the promos remain a bit awkward for me with Boogs when there's no one for that him to play off. He needs part. Yeah. yeah, I think they'll they'll get there, but right now it's like the crowd remembering. Like, oh right, yeah, yeah. So if you stay oh, yeah. completely silent when I go, I'm Boogs it out. Ooh, I'm Boogs it out. Ah! <laughs> God, it's awkward as balls, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> uh, it is awkward and I fear I fear for Rick Boog's post feud with Elias mm. yes get him back on Smackdown Pat can do it yeah Chelsea Green wants to be put in the main event Adam Pearce just says no and walks off yeah a lot of Adam Pearce this week doing dealing with admin yep I like it admin Pearce mm. oh mm-hmm. it's his name Despite an interference from Io and Dakota, Bianca Belair wins the triple threat against Bailey and Becky meaning neither is in the elimination chamber match ha 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 Making Bianca look really strong before Mania season. Yep. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. 
I liked how everyone had an answer for everyone else's offense because mm. they've all wrestled each other that much. It makes sense. It's like what Kurt Angle said of Roddy Strong. Have you seen Roddy Strong's shoot interview where he's in a dark match on SmackDown against Kurt Angle? And he yeah. says he walks in to say hi to Kurt, who's just doing press ups. <laughs> he's like, don't try anything out there. I've got a counter for every counter that you could counter. <laughs> 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 and Roddy's like, then I get in the ring and he headbutts me in the back of the head. <laughs> Oh, I'll tell you like what, he's quite funny, isn't he? Oh yeah, he can be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Shame his wife's boring. Oh come <laughs> on! I'm like Michael Cole with top dog with the British <laughs> fear. Um, Take my wife, please. Hit the thing. What? Go on. Take my wife. What? Please. What? Oh, then <laughs> never from... mind. Yeah, come on. Please just move on. Uh, hit the move of the week jingle, please, <gasps> Joel. Oh my! Oh, oh baby! <laughs> Because Becky Lynch's Diamond Dust, which mm. happened on a prone Bailey, is my move of the week. Oh. It was lovely. Very nice. It was silky. I was expecting it to be like something from like the Tornado Tagging Diamond or something, but you instead got oh, a Oh, no, this was more of a better. More of a solid, yeah. I, I liked how it was laid out. Mm. She like took out two dust. foes in one fell swoop. Mm. Lovely. <sighs> is it going to be Becky versus Bailey at WrestleMania then? It has to be, really, doesn't yes. it? Yes. I think... Oh, no. Yeah, it will be. Yeah, I was going to say one of them versus Bianca, but she's got the winner of the chamber. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Six yeah. women match, I guess, to deal with all damage catal. Oh. Uh, Just get more people That was meant to happen this weekend, according to some dirty sheet. It was meant to be um, damage catal versus Becky, Trish, and the Right. Right. That was when I started, so I finished my Yeah, you know, this is that was when I was having a break now. Ah, NXT. Mm. Too much happened this week for a sarcastic title. You said it, pal. Oh, yeah, I couldn't even choose. <sighs> Tyler Bate beats Grayson Waller in the opening match of the night. Yeah, this is disrespectful, William Regal. That's right. He, Waller is back after a one-week suspension. Suspended sentence. He got out that same day. <laughs> that was for Jack, who watches films. Uh, shortly <laughs> what after. What film that from? The Godfather. Oh, <laughs> That film you've it? seen. Yeah, the opening bit. I believe in America. Oh, oh, yeah, the first speech. Bit. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. That's very dark. Yes. Short, shortly afterwards, Grayson Gubbins, Shawn Michaels, I and Gorilla. You, honestly, I thought you were doing a Northern Irish accent, and that's why I couldn't. Ah, I couldn't he was a pretty suspended awful sentence. He got out the same day. <laughs> I have made a peaceful <laughs> request. <laughs> I will use all my skills. <laughs> you took me daughter. Uh, Grayson, Give her her back. Have you seen The Godfather? Nah. Oh, right. That's very... Apparently, <laughs> I revive a my impression. I've seen all the parodies of like, It's my daughter's wedding day. Yeah, yeah. Don't you bloody ruin it. Oh, no, he takes requests. Uh oh you Ruin me daughter's know. wedding day. No, it's just you can, ask, you can ask him a favour on the day of his... You can't do yeah. that. Yeah, my daughter's wedding. Yeah. Yeah, some lovely can't ring here. Bate surprisingly wins, I thought, after the referee yes. notices his cheating. He later on wrecks a bunch of stuff in front of Shawn Michaels. Uh... HBK going crazy backstage. Pfft, HBK should have been proud of him. Yeah, he should. Hey! Yeah. He should. Um, Just needs the summers and stuff like that, doesn't he? That's <laughs> he's missing. Grayson Waller goes backstage and fights Bret Hart for no reason. <laughs> Grayson Waller would probably do better against Bret Hart than Sean did. Uh, I, wouldn't, I, I, tell you, I wouldn't mind Grayson pulling out Tyler's hair. Doesn't Ooh, suit him. Doesn't suit him. Doesn't suit him. You think he should have a more conservative Preferred, style? Yeah. The quaffy stuff back mm. in the day. And that's not on. But we're splitting the hairs there, literally. Oh, yeah, literally. Uh, oh, good, good. Waller's flipping unprettier is what Christian should have been doing all these years. <laughs> where he ran away from behind and then flipped mm. over the top. Much he better way to settle He loves a little evasive move, doesn't he? Like the rolling through the ropes. Rolling through the ropes. Uh, I was surprised he lost as well. I guess they want to keep Tyler strong. Mm. Yeah, and it also sets the Grayson Waller just flipping his wig. Well, um, Gan Raj, as we say. Keeps building to Grayson Waller versus A Train. Oh. And Shawn yeah. Michaels. Maybe it's going to throw oh. back to WrestleMania X9. Shawn's doing something, <laughs> definitely, here. He's he's too involved with it not to lead to something between him and Grayson. Not necessarily a match, but there's got to be something. Mm. Would Shawn come out of retirement? No. For Grayson no, Waller? No, no, no. <laughs> I think he should. No, no. 2019 wasn't enough. Was it 18 or 19? Can't 18. remember. Tyler's been fisting an Oompa Loompa, though. That's oh, what I've okay. written down there in my notes. Hmm. So we'll Why is that? Because his hands were... What's it orange? Oh. And the rest of it's um, just lovely gold. That's bar. just from readying bop and bang for the match. <laughs> Is that the upper lumps names? No. <laughs> Backstage, BJ tells JB that he's nervous about his date with Kiana James because he's never kissed anyone before. So uh, they then he 
tells her him to practice the 90 10. Oh, aye, right. And as they're about to kiss, Fallon Henley walks in on the lads in a hilariously compromising this position. <laughs> she, <laughs> she advises BJ that if Kiana is playing with her keys, that means she wants to make a move. Ah, yes, that old chest. Playing with your keys? Yeah, I've I never heard this in my life. I play with my keys all the time. I don't want to kiss people. Frat boys running at you ah, from all ends of Northumberland. Dodge them left, right, and centre. Get away. <laughs> But it's my fault, though, because I twiddle my keys. <laughs> <laughs> so they call you Ross. Twiddle. Watch out, lads. Ah. Watch out, lads. He's going to kiss us. <laughs> um, these, and there's more of it later on, obviously, when it, the story gets really heartbreaking. And I was proven right, by the way. Yeah. But um, the, these skits, my big takeaway from it was that BJ and Fallon make JB look like a hell of an actor. <laughs> like, JB, <laughs> yeah. by the impossible, is amazing in these. Also, I don't know if she's a bad person, because she could have told... BJ before you left the room, but you didn't. Is that being a good friend? She waited to ruin his moment. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, she's not a good friend. She also could have just asked, who's this Zach blow? And to be fair, Kiana could have also told her when she realized what she was thinking as well. No, wait, that's all right, that's my brother. They could have cleared this up weeks ago. God, wrestling, eh? Aye. Terrible. Mm. Home within your heart. (laughs) Uh, Apollo Crews is trying to write in his journal. In the park at night time. <laughs> yeah. Under a street light. Yeah. Street yeah, light. was it the park or was it just a, a it suburb? Just a street, wasn't it? Just like, a residential area. He just picked the darkest place to write and just go, oh. Yeah. Uh, he's too distracted by Dabba Kato's oh, throws betrayal. it down. Now is this he the end of the revenge. journaling? Littering. Well, no. Yeah. Apollo says he isn't focused on the future. Again, with the clip of him winning the title shown one more time. Ooh. It's happening. But what's he done? He doesn't know what he's done. Dabakato was like, you know what you've done? And he no, was like, doesn't. I don't know what I've done. No. Who are so you? what's he done? <laughs> I'm sick of wrestling stories not being explained to us. I know that we always laugh when wrestling promotions spell things out too obviously, but I'm sick of Thea Hale getting dragged off screen. What happens? Or oh, we'll never find out. What happened No, we are. We'll find out this... We'll, uh, She's not said. She's not said but, what's But we're happened. going to find out. Are we, though? <laughs> <laughs> What happened? I'm going to tell you. Oh, that's if, the end of that storyline. What line, was in it? the lockbox, for example? Well, that was rubbish because we didn't get anything. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah. Hopefully there will be a solution or resolution, I should say. JC Jane cuts a promo explaining why she Actually, turned... Actually, I think we know what... Never mind. ...on Gigi Dolan. The lockbox... No. <laughs> oh, I see the where Wall you're going. Journal. And I'm yeah, going to move yeah, on. Yeah, and it really yeah. ticks all the boxes. <laughs> yes, I'm glad that you said the same thing Sorry, as me. That yeah, this was... Yeah. Stop talking. That this was the... <laughs> that this was the... Uh, the most by the numbers oh, bloody I've promo. Written it down, Last yeah. week was the end of the toxic attraction story, and now it's all about her. She doesn't regret kicking Gigi. The only thing she regrets is not doing it sooner. Yes. She's the real victim here, and she's no longer going to be held back by Gigi. She has a message to all of these fans. Screw you. <laughs> we all see her as the what her message gonna be. Screw you. We all saw her as the weak link of the group, but now the spotlight is on her. Yeah. Uh, it was very by the numbers. There and was also, uh, she... Yeah, so the only thing she needed was a suit to come out wearing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, she, also said, uh, she also calls her ex-partner Jeanette because everything must be references on NXT. Sean it, needs to remind us yet again. <laughs> uncalled for that, I thought, from the sexy boy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, he doesn't need to say that himself. He, I, I assume he had a hand in writing that promo for JC Jane, whose name, by the way, is screamed at the start of her entrance theme. Just so you know who it is. <laughs> JC Jane! <laughs> <laughs> Lovely stuff. Maybe it'll lead to Janetti making a cameo in NXT. <laughs> to fight JC Jane? Yeah. What, was he in the lockbox? Do you think that... Trying to get think, confused that Sean's he's... No, was, no, no, no. Do you think no. Sean's gone, Paul, can I get Marty in Triple H? He's like, no, 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 no. They've called Marty and they've gone, is JC Jane my daughter? No, <laughs> Ross. <laughs> Damn it. There was one highlight of the promo for me, and that was where she was like, all the fans were like, do you have to kick her that hard? Yes, I did. Whoa. I enjoyed that line. That bit was nice. That, that was good. good. I enjoyed the boot being her Tron as well, because mm. she kicked a woman in the head. That's her thing, <laughs> She has boots. Yes. If she had Seth Rollins' gear on, she'd be deed. Aye. Aye. Head caved in. Those big Aye. red boots. Food for thought. Mm. Thea Hill tells Andre Chase and Delightful Hudson that she's ready to overcome her fear of the schism, but still can't say what happened when she was kidnapped by Ava Ray. I'm fuming. Shortly afterwards, she has a match with Tiffany Stratton, but loses when she's attracted by several people in schism masks, as well as Ava Rain herself. Ava Rain. It's obvious then... Uh, you should still say the schism because they made her watch her promos. <laughs> oh, I'm getting flashbacks to when Woods was scared of the Wyatts. Yeah. Mm. 
But except he... That's still good. Except Thea over... She's like Nicolas Cage. Like, she overacts everything. And it works, because it's wrestling. Yeah. Makes Whereas it really unlikable. <laughs> makes it really unlikable. When she's in the ring at the end, she's, like, she's doing the old, like, Mankind rock back and forth, but she's doing, like, the really cartoonish version, like, if Mankind was, like, two years earlier. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> the opposite of how Woods did it, because he went very within himself. Xavier like, really tried his ass off he did. to get that to work, and yeah, it yeah. stunk. It wasn't his fault. It wasn't his fault. This match made Thea Hill look like Bruno Samaritano, as you would say, Matthew, in the mid-90s. Who's that? The, mid, the amount of offense she was getting in, despite all the distractions going on, and facing Tiffy bloody strats, by the way, she looked fa- fantastic. In kayfabe, is Andre Chase the weak link of Chase U? <sighs> nah, he pinned Conor No. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he did, yeah. <laughs> he also beat William Regal's son. Yeah, tried him. Clean, somehow. And he's still the heart of the watching NXT universe. <laughs> <laughs> Adventure's Day. Do you think that Duke's now proven that he's... Do you think that's all over now? They seem to be putting the back oh, for a he's, bit. He's pulling out the wool over the eyes still, I reckon. There's still a chance. Yeah. Oh. I'm not fully convinced. Okay. Yeah. It's but also, happen. shout out to Tiffy Stratus' perfect moonsault once again. Mm. Better than Kenny Omega's same variation of the oh, same. Oh, I agree with you. You will not escape, he says. No. Nah. <laughs> She doesn't even need that little bit. You, you can't escape. <laughs> you will not. He says you can't escape, but frequently people do escape. From He's him. a liar. He is. Back in the ring. What? No, being in the ring. Oh, right, I see. Being in the ring allows Saul Rooker to be creative. And oh, free this was one of the worst. What? No. <laughs> Never, ever. <laughs> Should a professional wrestler on the wrestling show say, I still dig going to practice every single day? Can you? <laughs> she's, oh! baby, she's baby face. We're talking about practice. <laughs> that first sentence was amazing, though. If, sorry, yeah. yeah. Uh, Saul Rucker, free spirit. She, so Saul's she, parents, what did she, sh- so, so she's in the recap. Being in the ring helps me be a free spirit, and that's what I am. Saul Rucker, the free, free spirit. spirit. <laughs> Saul's parents used to let her bunk off school to go surfing and snowboard, snowboarding and stuff. As long as her grades were good, that seems kind of productive. It says it does because if she's never going to school, yeah. Because of all the free time she had away from rubbish school, Saul became good at lots of things: snowboarding, surfing, skateboarding, gymnastics. Now we're all still what? Boston. <laughs> yeah. Photography what? and playing the guitar. What? Although it shows her with ukulele, maybe she could play that. Too. Thank you. <laughs> I was fearing. Thank you. It was, yeah. I even learned to play the guitar. Oh, what are you twelve feet tall like? Because that was a time. <laughs> She's kind of big. Yeah, she's quite tall. Yeah. She wants a rematch with Zoe Stark. Now, this reminded me of when, do you remember when every week Nikita Lyons was good at another thing? <laughs> I'm not just a wrestler. Uh, I can rap, sing, dance. I, my mum was a groupie. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, so, Saul Rook is good at loads of things, even photography. That's the one where she goes, I even got into photography. Oh, whoa, <laughs> hey, wow. I'm better than you at Beyblades and all sorts. I'm class at loads of things, right? Mm. But I still love going into practice yeah. every day. I hate that line so much. <laughs> Why? Imagine Ric Flair or someone back in the day going, <laughs> whoa, I've won another title. I wouldn't have been here if I didn't enjoy practice so much. But she's a baby Ooh. face. That's a, it's symptomatic of a big issue, big issue of Shawn Michaels' baby faces. These promo packages where he tries to make them like everyday people. Like yeah. The fisherman fringe is bollocks. Like They're the, awful. The Bron Breaker fishing. Yeah, yeah, that's not it, man. You you were you were the sexy. You were the heartbreak <laughs> kid. Imagine he was doing this sort of stuff <laughs> back in the day. Yeah, he's yeah, like putting yeah, yeah. sequins everywhere, <laughs> walking down the streets. I'm going to get myself my a parents, coffee. My parents. Hey, <laughs> Sean, should we go out drinking all night again? No, Marty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to stay in and read a book. I think book. that's what he'd like us to think <laughs> with yeah, the right? story. Imagine Sean, when I was at school, my parents used to let me bung off to pursue my dream <laughs> of being a male stripper. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't that basically Sean's thing? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The rockers. Yeah. Because they were off their rocker uh, every night. They were doing a tom. So... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Will you stop it, Matt? Will you stop? <laughs> Sean doesn't... Yeah, the the, the Saul Rook a bit the, where she was a bit relatable and down with the kids was when she was like... She said it in like a cool youth way as well. She was like, I wasn't... My finisher wasn't always this sick. I used to... When I first tried it at training, it was rough. So... <laughs> NXT TV, some of these skits look like the stuff in the young ones. Whether he's watching yeah. the show. <laughs> Half a boy, youth TV. See what the kids like. He kicks the TV yeah, to yeah. death. That's the Ben Hamster's best watching that. That. Yeah, it's Not the right yeah. of the young ones. Just the actual, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's oh. great at that. Hey, everyone. <laughs> the youth TV. These every man, My every lady My favorite one promos. was Nathan Fraser's one about how he could have been <laughs> in the Premier League if he wanted. But he prefers diving into the sea or something. <laughs> oh, that's right. God. I could have probably made the EPL. 
He's playing Sunday Could League. Could you? Sunday yeah, League. Yeah. People he, are smoking cigarettes at halftime. Could have been anyone. He was. He looked pretty good for a Sunday League. Oh he was yeah. Cutting yeah. inside from the wind. Well, what a compliment. <laughs> Against uh, everyone's dad <laughs> hungover. <Yeah. laughs> against six men because they're uh, in bed. Uh, Big Body Javi. Oh, from the yes. sublime to the ridiculous. This was a fantastic promo. <laughs> Big Body Javi asked Tatum Paxi to be his Javi Tyne. It doesn't even buy Javi, uh, But she's taken. Ivy now by is, him in real life. Oh, is an that, item. That's is why that it's such the, a good segment. That is... That's clever. Yes. Oh, oh, if only that, I was on the inside knowing this information, that, 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 that'd be great. Oh, that has now popped me. That oh, was, yeah. we change our opinions. It's now a wow, really crap what segment. A, no, what, a, what, a, what a good looking couple they make. That's lovely to know. We'll have wonderful children. Really strong. Yeah, and they'll all do crap <laughs> promos like oh, on this show. Oh, come on. Make sure they play the ukulele. It says a guitar line gets. Uh. Um, I was trying to work out which, because obviously Big Body Harry's on this run of like trying to steal WCW, uh, WCW gimmicks. And I was like, the closest I could come was the Fit Trick Thriller. That's easy for me to say. Oh. Fit Trick Thriller. The Fit Trick Thriller. Fit Trick Thriller. Mike Awesome. Yes. In this instance. Has he got a bus? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Ha- the Harvey bus. I can't think of a pun, but neither can he. But the Harvey Gator. Navigator. Mm. Harvey Gator. Oh, okay. That's not, that's not that bad, actually. Uh, we'll go with that one. Uh, Tame <laughs> actually declines, so Ivy Nile's right next to her, so Harvey just asks her. She says yes, and she's like, oh, get in. It's all a ruse. She chokes Harvey out. That was nasty. That was the setup. That was mean. <laughs> We then oh, get... Oh, what the... Yeah, I forgot about this. Isla bit. Dawn's disembodied <laughs> voice <laughs> towards Tatum for hiding behind the diamond mine and not seeing success on her own, which means that both lasses go, what's that? And the camera pans to nothing. So, no, I think there's, there's a, a speaker, speaker there. Is that what that was? When you train, over the speaker. yeah. When you train, obviously one of the trainers wears a headset. You go, oh, double leg, leg take down. Yeah. So like that. she loves practice. <laughs> yeah. So they somehow Isla Dawn, the mystical witch of the modern day, olden day, whatever the hell her nickname is, <laughs> has commandeered the headpiece. She's that the a hacker. Plays. She's like Sammy Callahan. Or she's just <laughs> ran, in, ran in the studio after or after hours and then just nicked the headpiece and gone. <laughs> I thought. <laughs> but there's a go. Right. But it was shot so badly that I also it thought was, what Matthew yeah. said that they'd pan to no to no one and they're both going. And they were CGI her in later on, like <laughs> the, the end of Return of the Jedi. I no. thought that when they, I almost thought because it was so, it had just come after such a comical bit that they were going to leave after Ivy had gone, you all right, Tatum? And she gone, and then once they left, I thought she was going to stand up from behind the speakers yeah. and like sneak up. Oh, I thought Javi was going to ask her out. Right, yeah. <laughs> Disembodied vice, will you be my Javi time? Like, yeah, all right. Yes, I will. <laughs> this is weird. We'll go to an Italian restaurant and you can bring your oh. laptop. <laughs> Got brought up at the live show. Yeah, yeah once or twice. Uh, When's it going to happen? I think there was a... We did come up with a possible solution. Oh. Like a tie into a video somehow. Le- lethal Leap Year. No, I can't remember. <laughs> I think we said we'd do a Godfather parody where I'm looking for it behind the toilet. I'm going to bring the laptop out. <laughs> I can only hide the laptop behind the toilet. Mm. <laughs> Axiom, which is Spanish for meow, beats Damon <laughs> Kemp in a short match. I, I thought Damon Kemp was promising. What's so did I. Yeah. yeah. He was. He was good in he that was, feud with the Creed. You know. Now, action is more the, promising. He sort of took down a part of the diamond mine. <laughs> knocked a <laughs> From chip the off the diamond mine, yeah. It was surprising how quickly he lost it. Uh, after which we get Twitter update on BJ and Connor James's date. It seems to be going well, yeah. but back in the arena, Fallon tells JB that she has to tell BJ about Kiana's suspected uh, dodgy dealings on the Sardell so, boy. No, it said dodgy dealing. It says dodgy dealings. Oh, my word. <laughs> what was I thinking? You were on the same stuff as the NXT writing crew. <laughs> but yeah, Action gets his revenge on Kemp after kicking out with some cool suplexes, like electric chair drop suplex. Oh, thing. yeah, the German. Yeah. And, and his in... wheelbarrow German. Mm-hmm. Very Viel- efficient. Wheelbarrow German. <laughs> very oh. good, very good. Oh, no. That was awful. That no, it really it was. was. Good German. It's what the show deserves. Uh, yeah. And then we go on to Braun Breaker cutting a promo. Braun Breaker sucks. Braun Whoa. Breaker sucks. We better show these people <laughs> holding these anti Braun Breaker signs. No, this was legit. The of subtext. course it was. The subtext. Of course. Look at all the plants in the NXT greenhouse. Uh, he cuts a promo about how we all want to see Braun versus him next. Possibly apply to be Kamala Hayes, or it could be the disembodied voice of uh, <laughs> the, that one witch. I don't know. Yeah. Instead, he's interrupted by Jinder Mahal <laughs> and Indus Shur. Yep. Uh, Jinder asks if being NXT champion is all it's cracked up to be, and points out that 
Some fans have turned on Bron. <laughs> wow. He challenges them to a title match next week, and Bron accepts. Bron makes a joke about the three man band, but Jinder points out that he only did it to appease the fans. Maybe you should look at that, you get. I mean, I, I uh, was offended when he laughed at the great group that was the three man band, because yeah. we all like the three man band. Yeah, and everything's got to be references, NXT. <laughs> Remember sure. that thing. Three man band, I like them. They were responsible for the greatest pre show match in. WWE history, weren't they? Absolutely. Yes. Yes, they were. But yeah, hey, wow, look at this. Wow, can you believe it? Some people are booing and, and doing all the stuff, and Jim Mahal brought them up. Someone watches this podcast now that works for NXT. Why? Because we were saying, Hi. weren't we, that the crowd weren't with him at Vengeance Day. Oh. And what happens the week after? Mm. What well, happens elsewhere on the show? Well, these fans are parody of us. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Oh, that'd be crazy. They're all like, oh. <laughs> There's a fat one, one in a hat and one in an outlandish shit. There's we'll a weird one bought a puppet. We'll have, we'll have to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we go back. <laughs> the puppet's got a sign that says Golden Eye is good or something. They're all wearing t-shirts. I am stupid. I'm a big stupid yeah. head. <laughs> <laughs> We're actually, the, we might be in the top percentile of NXT fans in the world. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah. of course we are. Nobody, nobody dissects Something to aspire to. Nobody is as emotionally invested in the show as, us, as we are. I don't think. They should get us on the right not. team, really. Yeah. I mean, they did steal our content back in 2019. That's, <laughs> That's right. right. Point. Yeah, That's bastards. A right. <laughs> couple of great lines from Jinder in this promo, though. Is that really? all you forget about Key? <laughs> yeah. Oh, right. Okay. They played yeah. in the arena, didn't yeah. they? Yeah. Uh, a great champion should always expect the unexpected. Coming from Jinder, that is a fantastic line. <laughs> that also was what Vince used to tell Austin Theory all the time. Expect the unexpected. Oh. Oh, oh, my God. God. He's back. Pull out, pull out an equalizer. <laughs> yeah. That was a bad time. Oh, and Vince sounded like a car starting up. It was great. Yeah. What was the whole thing when he said he was going to... Do you remember when he got Austin Theory over by saying he would batter him? I'll pull out an equaliser. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> he really was losing it. Egg. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then also Jinder was saying, you either, die, you either die a hero or become a villain. And I was... <laughs> Jinder's got lost. He's meant to be he's on trying some to, sort of he's film trying to set quote, somewhere. He's trying to quote the Dark Knight. I know, yeah. but what's he saying that for to Bron Breaker in the NXT greenhouse? This is all just to get Bron over more, <laughs> isn't it? But it's not working really. Yeah. yeah. I did like one set, the, the, the three MB sentence from Bron, the way it was delivered. That was good because it was more like a Steiner. And that's mm. what he should be. He should just you know be why? Because yeah, it had yeah. a number in it. Yeah. <laughs> i just be more like a Steiner and bollocks of the boring fishing yeah. and smiling. Yeah. I don't want my Bron Breaker to be an every man. No. No. Make me feel like crap. Yes. <laughs> Make me aspire to be you know who mm. I can never be. He's... I'll be the guy in the crowd. The, the sign. Aye. Yeah. Aye. Yeah, if Bron went to the, the crowd and suplex the dude with the sign, <laughs> it would be all all right. Oh, there was nearly a fan beating up on AEW Dynamite. We'll get to that later. Of course, sir. In the main event, yeah. It was a plan. It was a plan. The oh. heels nearly beat up a fan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bron yeah. Breaker yeah. sucks. Yeah. Suplex. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where we are? Frank says the Cowie girls apologized to Roxanne Perez and Michael Satamora, mm -hmm. the final boss, mm -hmm. for the way they acted last week. But everyone agrees to still have the tag match later on. So this, they didn't want to turn the Cowie girls heel in the end. They've, this is them going, actually, we they yeah, 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 yeah. That, actually, like, like the JBL Baron Corbin thing just now. Yeah. We talking. chatted a little bollocks last week. You're the champion. Mm. That's what they should have said. That's that fair. promo was bollocks. Yeah. Katana Chan saying, well, you've got no loyalty. What does that matter when you're the champion? <laughs> no. It's sad that I've become more... I'm, I'm more into the Cowie Girls now, but it's after their tag title reign. Like, yeah. Just, I think they should be on the main roster, me. Yeah. Mm. I definitely think so. Cowie's forever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Roxanne thanks Miko for being a partner. Miko says, aha, I do have my reasons for doing so. Ah, and we'll saucy see. devil. Uh, in a backstage interview, locker room leader Indy Hartwell says that <laughs> toxic attraction were always unpopular in the locker room, and everyone in the locker room was pleased to see Gigi Dolan get kicked in the head. On the other hand, though, JC Jane is also not very well liked locker room, and she's going to end up being behind Indy in locker room pecking order. Now, I've overstated the amount of times Indy mentioned the locker room there, God, I... but I'm doing it for a reason, and that's because they have made Indy's character locker room last. She's, she's the heart and soul. She's the one Somehow. who, she's she's the one who went, Tiffany Stratton, you don't deserve a bigger locker room than all of the girls in the locker room. Why have they made it? And then the she lost, room? didn't she? And then she lost, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Tiff got, yeah, I, I want yeah, one now. I'll, I'll win Why and, are they making them. her this locker room leader? Someone's got to be. Because people like the way, in an unironic way. Uh, and I don't think anyone else is like that much in NXT these days. <laughs> that's a good point, actually. <laughs> yeah. I think that's what it boils down but to. They've taken away all the funny aspects of her character, and now she's just angry woman who never wins but is the locker room leader yeah. she's she's got a great sting she's hardcore holly <laughs> oh my she's god she's an angry locker room leader who never wins yeah 
hardcore, isn't he? How are you like me now? JC Jaren, I want to take you down to the forest and tie you <laughs> up and set you on <laughs> fire. <laughs> oh, first, I'll cover him in fire rounds. <laughs> Now I'll shove something up his... <laughs> Tony D'Angelo and Stax answer Wesley's open challenge for the North American title. They get attacked by Die Jack, as he's sometimes known, not in the video games, obviously, on the <laughs> ramp. Can I just say, Stax was incredible. Going back to save Tony. When yes. He, he, he could have had the shot, yeah. but he, he went back. He started to take off his jacket. He thought about it. No. He'd rather have his life than a championship title. Aww. To be able to convey all of those things in a millisecond... He's amazing, Stax. He's almost as good as Denzel Washington. Or Al Pacino in The Godfather. <gasps> Come Tuesday was compared to Denzel Washington what? in The Book of Eli by Booker T. Wait, what? Now, I've, what? Not, what? I've, not, I've not seen The Book of Eli, but I saw the poster. And oh, Denzel I've never seen that, yeah. looks cool as bowels and his shades on the poster. He looks like a bit of a G.I. Joe kind yeah. of get up. Come Tuesday was compared <laughs> to Denzel. Did you say that? Yeah. I just zone out on Booker T now because he's Did just he not crap. mean die, Jack, because of the shades? and the... No, he definitely meant come. Right, okay. He yeah, I say, like, hang come. on, if there are two people, well, neither of them are compared to the... What? Booker, I've seen that film. Booker and I don't remember anything about it. stop putting his own backstories in place yeah. for people on NXT. Yeah, really good reference, though. <laughs> just looking at the post, I don't know anything about the film, but... When I see Denzel in those shades, I think of come Tuesday... Throwing things at a locker room, or a locker. Oh in the locker God! Room. Oh, it was oh. weird though how a little offense he got in though. Come, because then he attacked him from the rear. Yeah, well, yeah. He, but then it all feeds into Robert Stone saying you're no, you're off the boil. You need to let yep. me in. Let Next me week we're gonna have come in the bar owned by Fallon, mm. just getting pissed. Real boys, Gallus in I'd the background. I'd like to see there. Cowboy Von Wagner. I think. <laughs> Why not? Yeehaw! <laughs> It'd be proper Jimmy Wang Yang if he did do that. Oh one. yeah. If he was a cowboy. Not like a hangman, natural sort of thing. Yeah. I can't wait for cum boy. Cum boy. <laughs> Hank, the security guard, has a fancy new singlet and wrestling boots. Uh, and he, I already hate him. I just put... And I already hate him. Because he's got real gear now. He's it gone re- from Hank, the security guard, to Hank, the, the wrestler. It yeah. wasn't the most flattering either, was it? No. Did it remind me, remember when Heavy Machinery split up in the mid-tucker where there was little oh, hands for the, yeah. the silver space boots? Oh, yeah. Did you do any more interviews about that? Because it was such a weird period. I might have asked. I can't remember. It never, ever was ever going to work for Tucker. No. But Hank hasn't gone... He hasn't fallen from a higher position like Tucker yeah. did. So I've, I've still got hope. And he's also got something more important than wrestling yeah. gear. He's got a story. <laughs> That's right. A storyline. He gets beaten by Charlie Dempsey, who was, of course, Pete Dunne, William Regal's kid, who chokes him <laughs> unconscious after the bell. Charlie leaves with Drew Gulak, and Hank's not happy about it. Drew's a this. proper snake. He's a slut. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> He's a slu- slut. I put <laughs> a snake and a slut. He's a slutty snake. A slut. <laughs> S-N-L-U-T. Easy for me to say. It is. I put Dempsey, he looks British. Dempsey, <laughs> Pete Dunn's his dad. <laughs> what? He does look very British. <laughs> but he also... Would all do that in the big market? Has someone else... Dempsey... Has someone else compared him already? Have you compared someone to this? You know the the statue head on Art Attack? Ah, uh, <laughs> the head. He looks like that. Hello. But have we, <laughs> but have we compared someone else to that before? I feel like it rings have. a bell. That yeah. Head getting mentioned. But now I think that yeah. Charlie Dempsey looks like that. Mm, I yeah. guess he could do. Mm. I love the intensity of their collar and elbow tie. Oh, it was nice. You can though, tell yeah. that's William Regal and Pete Dunson oh, doing that. Yes. Mm. And I like the I like the setup of the match. How Charlie was just going straight for the finish, and then mm. Hank was battling to get out of it. It was nice. Oh. It felt real to me. And I laughed my ass off when Gulak went, "Ah, oh, yeah, you're right." Go <laughs> well, he's trying to build a, a superstar, not a house. I hope the real to me, damn it, guy is okay, because he's right. You know, we all want that magic back when we watch wrestling, and he just had the balls to say it and to wear his heart on his sleeve and then he gets mocked for it always <laughs> I've just had a moment there where I'm like oh poor God. I've said before like that guy got like I don't know actually I do know why like people mocked him for doing that but like I get where he was coming from yeah like people are like haha local fan thinks wrestling's still real he 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 I'm like no no that's not what he meant should have bro. nominated him for the Hall of Fame not this teacher nah. we should name the Hall of Fame now. after him what's his name Jeremy Piven. Still real to me. Jeremy guy. Piven? Jeremy Piven's the guy. He's from, an actor. He's the guy who came on with Ken Jeong on Raw <laughs> and was rubbish and called it Summerfest. <laughs> he was the opposite of it's still real to me, yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. It was never real to Jeremy yeah. Piven. The check is real to me, damn yeah, it. Yeah. We should rename the Hall of Fame the it's whatever still his name real is. To me guy, Hall of Fame. <laughs> <laughs> we don't even know his name. <laughs> Hall of Fame. 
Backstage, Robert Stone tells... We've already talked about this. Uh, but yeah, yeah so we'll say it again. Come Tuesday is official. The North American title slipped right through my hands, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> I think this felt like when Sean, Ma- remember when Vince McMahon would have like certain promos happen, and he would, it felt like Vince was speaking to a talent through yep. a promo. This felt like Sean Michael was speaking to come through this promo, mm-hmm. saying he's got no connection with anything. You need to let your walls down. Yeah, you need to be. I can imagine him in promo class, and they're like, just be more loose. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Be calm, better. Calm down, come. I think. I think that. Um, is there anything he could do where we wouldn't mock him? I feel unfair now. Like we, we laugh at him even when he's acceptable. Oh, he's like, I think he was fine here. Long gone. Okay. He's a good wrestler, but he's it's the promo is off. Great look. Well, just don't have him talk. It's fine. He doesn't have to talk. That's Robert Stone's phone. But he still talks. But yeah. he, he shouldn't have I to. I got my dancing shoes, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> that was a ruse. <laughs> Thankfully, that was a ruse, and then he just beat them up, didn't he? So it's fine. <laughs> but no. He's. When he's main event in WrestleMania, hopefully Cultaholic's still around. When he wakes up. <laughs> no, no, come on. <laughs> hey, there's high hopes for coming. I, I reckon a lot of this unfair pressure that's been placed on him is probably because NXT or WWE people think, God, he's massive and good. If only now we just need to get him to talk and he's the complete easy yeah. star. But he didn't need you don't need to have him right. talk. He's fine. It would have been fine in the eighties. Yeah. But he comes from good stock as well. The... That's where the pressure comes from as yeah, well. Yeah, true. He comes from a Beverly Brothers sack. Mm. Get him in Get him in the Dungeon of Doom. And sort That's of how it works, isn't it? My dad's good. All right, you must Shouldn't, be good. Yeah. Instead of putting excellent talker Zach Gibson in the schism, couldn't they have put like Von Wagner in the schism? Oh, I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> Von Wagner talks for Zach Gibson. Oh, that would be brilliant, that. <laughs> Von Wagner in the schism. <laughs> Come, Liverpool. <laughs> Far <laughs> root. No, <laughs> what a tree! That would be unreal. That would be so good. Joe, I've got my dancing shoes. Let's dance that Wednesday. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's been everywhere. Though. I've seen that a lot. Oh, I'd love to see Come Tuesday in a rendition of that song that's on bloody TikTok every day. Ah, dance, dance, dance. Did you know? Hands, hands, hands. In the original show, that's not the song that plays when she dances like that. Yeah, we well, watched why it. The did, other day. Why did they make I don't it? Because oh. TikTok. Did you? I saw because that's been everywhere. I got recommended a clip of the original Wednesday Adams, like the first ever in like black and white, like, and she's teaching Lurch how to dance. So I was expecting her to do this kind of thing. And she goes, "Hey, and she, first of all, the original Wednesday Adams was like a cheery, happy young girl, and she's like, "Hey, Lurch, learn how to dance." And she does some mad like shuffle step. It was. Anyway, carry on. Jenna Ortega, <laughs> I think her name is. I think her name is. That just shows how hip and cool I am. Mm. She did steal it from a previous Wednesday, the whole dance thing. <gasps> yeah. Well, it wasn't the one I watched. Mm. But then Lurch does it. He was a legit, like, seven foot tall. I was like, wow. The original Adams family. Do you know way more about them than I do? You feel like you're going to drop some knowledge now? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> you're more, I was just listening to you. You're more fan of Raul Julia as Gomez. Absolutely, yes. but of course, like of course. Well, but, but yeah, I have nothing to add to this, so I'll move on. Gomez took the fall for Mortishi, Mortishi, Morticia. Why? Because that, that's how it happens in the show. Oh, got you, got you, got you. Yeah, he took the fall for him. Oh. Awesome. <laughs> Stop talking about these silly things. We've got serious wrestling to take oh, out. Oh, pretty no. Pretty deadly go to the, <laughs> yes! the man's pub. <laughs> Come on. Play Gallus. And billiards. Or no, they, it's not. It's, call it. called it's, pearl. Called pearl. it's called Pearl. It's called Pearl. It was, yeah. As Aiden pointed out upstairs, why would Pretty Deadly call it billiards? They are English. They know it's called Pool. <laughs> no, but they're girly men. But so they don't go to the like pubs. An American term for it. They don't go to the pubs. They go to the pubes, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> girly men no play pool. If they win, they get a tag title shot. Gallus win loads of matches, drink loads of pints, and they don't even get drunk because they're a pair of absolutely bloody lads. <laughs> Pretty deadly, lose loads of money, and Gallus revealed that if you want to tag title shot, all they have to do is ask. And they went, here's the bill. And of course, it's the list of Jericho. <laughs> they drank how much? Can do I... you have iron stomachs? <laughs> <laughs> On livers, sorry, I've messed it up. Pretty completely. deadly were class here, to be fair. Yeah, yeah. But can I pitch what I think has honestly happened when this was written? I think the original concept was that Pretty Deadly slyly get Gallus drunk to mm. get a title shot out of them. And I reckon Gallus, like when Hulk Hogan doesn't want to lose, <laughs> they don't care about losing, but they're like, no, we're not having ourselves get drunk. Yeah. We're men. Yeah. So instead, we'll just give them the title shot. It doesn't work for me. I've brother. never been out drunk. Yeah, yeah. you'd be like that. Yeah, that's what I thought. Like, ha ha, we'll keep on getting them drunk. Yeah. Oh, that didn't work and then at it all. it didn't work. They're and Scottish. We can't beat them. I reckon Damn it. they put their foot down and were like, it doesn't work for me, brother. I thought it was a They're big... putting pills and stuff in to have a no effect. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> lead paint oh. stuff, no effect. <laughs> I thought that's where it was going to go. Like, yeah. the longer they were going and not yeah. getting drunk, they're pretty dead. We'd wipe out some potion. Yeah. <laughs> And then they'd be knocked out. And I had doors doing stuff that's like in a skull. Like, like, <laughs> oh, I, thought, I don't know. Or at least they were going to get them so drunk they couldn't beat them a pool anymore. Yeah. But no, they they kept winning the pool and beating them and drinking all the beers and being the lads. Yay. Just, it, it was all set up for the line of the decade, maybe in professional wrestling, where I can't remember, I think it's Wolfie who says it. Or maybe it's Mark, I can't remember. It's the line like, of the century, don't know who like, says it. They're like, don't worry, lads. I remember my first time in the pub. It was Mark Coffey who said it. <laughs> And it was an amazing old timer. His dick is tiny. <laughs> what do you mean? Tiny, tiny the, dick. The fact that he had to say that. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I know we're mixing up real life with just I a character on TV, but I think there's a, a base <laughs> of realism in this from them too. I think this isn't the first time Mark Hoffey's said that to someone. Yeah. <laughs> I remember mean, the first time in the pub. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Elton Prince's pirouette of the door is, my, is second place in my move of the week. <laughs> Unbelievable scenes, that. Pretty Deadly were great. Yeah. Loved that. Gallus' high five's a bit weird. It looks like they've got it wrong. They go like, one, two, hand over the fist. And it's like one of them's got it wrong. Did you not notice this? No. And their signature high five, they did it Now twice. I was looking up job vacancies. <laughs> <laughs> they did it, do you want to work at the man's pub? They, they did, they My went, first they, time. Go, they go like, one, oh God. They go like, one, two, and then one of them, it's like when someone, one of you goes for a fist bump, one goes for a high five, and you, it's weird. All right, good stuff there. Trick Williams calls out Ilya and insults him in the mic. Now, I actually like this because Ilya's backstage and the last is like, hey, Ilya, where have you been? He's like, here, yeah, just recovering. What do you want from me? But then the monitor, they're looking at stuff like this, uh, switches this Trick Williams the ring going, come on, Ilya. <laughs> and I thought, oh, okay. This yeah. leaves and goes Yeah, there. that is a, a unique way of doing it, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, that was nice. Um, and then <laughs> it was a Trick Williams says he'll drop him like a mixtape. Mm. That was nice. Yes. Uh, he hits him with a sucker punch, but Ilya takes him down before being interrupted by JD. Muck, don't ask Jeeves me. Hmm. JD says that Ilya should be in jail because, because he, he should be in jail yeah, dressed like that. Because he tore his retina, and Ilya says that I should say the same about you. Uh, he threatens to beat Ilya so badly he won't be able to hold his own son. Ilya's furious, but Trick hits him from behind shades and of, beats him down. Shades of Moxley Hangman for me. Mm. Hmm. JD thinks about attacking Dragunov too, but decides against it when Ilya gets back to his feet. Hmm. Backstage corner is one's trick about making Ilya angry. Carmelo knows. He's like, what are you doing, Trey? Hi. You're in deep water, Trey. I've got a fist with snooze written on it right here for you, Ilya. Yeah, what? <laughs> yeah. Good line. Yeah. Um, my, my main takeaway was JD's waistcoat. His get-up, he was shirtless with a waistcoat on, like some sort of stripper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Very, very peculiar. Has his name graphic, when it pops up, always had the weird drawing of himself next to it. Like the half and half thing. Yeah, yeah okay, yeah, all right. Because yeah. that's the first time I've really probably noticed it, and I was like, what a customised nameplate that is. Oh, fair enough. Not much, not much there, to say there. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I, just, those are things fine. that happened, yeah. But this was just the... Compared to some the, of the segments on this show. This all right, right. Yeah. This was the starter too. BJ tries to kiss Kana yes. at the end of a date, but Fallon arrives to tell BJ that she's cheating on her with a man named Zach. Kana says that she does love Zach. <gasps> Because Zach is her brother. Oh! Home within your no, he, he pokes his head Hello. Hello there. <laughs> Hello, it's me. Zach. The exact moment <laughs> yeah. I'm required. I've got, I've got the tea on for you. Come yeah. inside. And then went, I'm just going to leave through the garage if that's all right. <laughs> yeah. Like, just walk out. Take three steps out <laughs> yeah. the door. Is no like you, no like Is he scared of the big wrestlers? I think, I think so, yeah. Oh. He heard them yelling. <laughs> Khan is angry at Fallon and storms inside her house, leaving a sad BJ to leave with his pals. And again... <laughs> <laughs> leave it. Stop it. Stop it. Sad BJ. Stop it. <laughs> what a date. Um, <laughs> a sad Brooks Jensen. <laughs> <clears throat> sad BJ at the end of the day. If anything, Fallon owes BJ a kiss. If anything. Or an apology. Or apology, uh, yeah. Or a kiss. He doesn't want to kiss Fallon. He was in love with Kiana James. I think he'd take anything for his first one at this Nobody point. Nobody loves Kiana. She's, she's his... Do you know see how nice their date was? It was nice. I wish all of NXT was stories like this. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Fallon's a heel, though. Yeah. <laughs> I've been listening to the Deadlock podcast again. Oh, lovely. And they've been talking about 2010 Impact Wrestling. Oh, When okay. Hogan's in and yeah, it's yeah, all... Yeah, yeah. And they've said something which sounds the opposite of what everyone says these days, but they're like, you know what? I'm sick of stories. Stop telling me stories. Just have the wrestling now. Because the impact at the time was just fish off mm. stories and stories and stories. And I think for NXT, I want all the stories, none of the wrestling. <laughs> yeah. Yes. This is definitely the other end of the scale. Oh, right? yes. 
Because the main event, Roxanne Perez and Mego Satomura beat the Cowie Girls. Not enough stories in this main event. <laughs> there was a story <laughs> because a good match. afterwards, Mego says, yeah, I came over here not to help you with this, but I want a title match. Like Roxanne Kevin accepts. Owens and Steve Austin. I've tricked you, Steve. Yeah. I want a match. Roxy's roadblock to LA. Do you get it? Mm -hmm. Do you get it? Mm -hmm. Do you get it? Vic made sure we got it. <laughs> he really hammered it. Home. There's going to be a premium the live event. Roadblock. Yeah. All right, right, but what's it? Vic just on commentary was like, Michael's a real roadblock for Roxanne Perez here. Uh oh. It's a premium live event before Barely WrestleMania. Barely, but right. I'm like, it wasn't even. What am I missing? No. That's, the event's called Roadblock. <laughs> That's it, <isn't> it? <laughs> There's no double <laughs> meaning. It, no. I like, no, I'm, when Michael. <laughs> Mego uh, beat a roadblock in a match in Japan. No, no, it's just, no. It's just, <laughs> right, okay. We were trying to work out yesterday what the opposite to a roadblock was. And of course, it's a fast lane, isn't it? Oh, Which has already been a thing. We didn't That's going to say just the road. Oh, yeah. we were going like fast lane. I was saying like, oh, the local council yeah, have uh, removed road. the sleeping policeman and put the tarmac yeah. flat again. <laughs> yeah, but no, it, the fast, yeah, it's fast lane. lane yeah, so thank you to the people, people that watch the pictures. Um, Mego Satomura's got a noise in the pictures and I thought it came from above. <laughs> he went, he did like the death metal growl, like the, oh. But it sounded so... Uh, in the video, I've watched it back, I go... <laughs> I <look> up, <laughs> afraid. <laughs> what were you saying, Rose? I've, Mako's got a lovely cartwheel knee thing. Uh, she's all right at the rest That's of her. Yeah, I know, I know. Wow. I've run out of steam. Can't believe um, it. I, the, the Cowie girls need to be on the main roster now. They nail every yeah. time to move they do together. Yeah. And they try difficult things. That If they're not going to be champions, they might as well be on the main Who's roster. Who's currently the... Is it Damage Control? The women's tag team champion. That's really been put yes. on the back burner for now. Mm, yeah, get damage, get the Cowie girls in. AEW Dynamite. Everyone loves Ruby. Didn't know what to say. I was trying to think of a pun, like two English lasses fighting over Soho, but it made none of it made That's, sense. Mm, I tried my best. Eh, you tried. The acclaimed Billy Gunn and Orange Cassidy team up to beat Jarrett, Lethal, Dutt, and Singh. In a nothing. Open in a house match. show match. In a house show <laughs> match at a house show event. Oh, it's good that the crowd showed up for this one, eh? Yeah. Fair bollocks to Jarrett, though. Because he's, Absolutely. he's yeah, rocked that's up true. there. That's true. And he was he couldn't tell that anything was going on in the background. He was still the same as he always is. Yeah. I thought it was a nice the, the final spot was all right with the, the Sesame Timbers being teased for ages mm. with all the moving parts involved. That was the only part I've written down about because the rest of it was. Yeah. I bet the wrestlers loved having this sort of match though. Just yeah. silly. Just having a mm -hmm. fun time. Fair enough. Yeah. Get your money. Also, Castor being like nice about Jerry Jarrett. Mm. Hey, your, le your dad's a legend. Yeah, but you stink. Yeah. <laughs> uh, John Moxie and Claudio Castagnoli win a wild and bloody tornado tag match against Roosh and Preston Vance. Handman Page watches on backstage in the exact same way that they used to mock the Rui Four. Just yeah. want to point it out. The Is mission's it been lost. <laughs> 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 Mission failed. It was attacked by the Butcher, the Blade, and the <laughs> stop it, Impish Kip Sabian uh, I, until the Dark Order. Because I thought safe. Ross has coined the whimsical Wendy Chu. I didn't want to just use. Whimsical all the time for Kip. Yeah. I thought he needs he needs his own. Is that the top synonym of whimsical? I, I did type in. I one. typed <laughs> in. I think I typed in mischievous synonyms. Mm. He could be yeah. the mischievous Kip Sabian as well, I suppose. Mm, yeah. But impish, I think works. Impish is good. Mm. Um, I like that the fact that the other lads just came out and attacked them during their entrance through the crowd because it's Texas Tornado, baby. Yeah. The tonal shift from the first match to this one was massive. Uh, but I thought so, Texas Tornado just meant it could all be in at the same time. It arrives. It meant no DQ. I think te maybe Texas Tornadoes no DQ, but Tornado means there's no tags. Seems like I a was wild place, place this Texas. Was this more of a bunkhouse yeah. brawl? Would you yeah. say? Yeah. Because then we get there was Marks of bleeding, um, which is just beyond redundant now. He needs to which stop is bleeding sad. every match. Um, they, they worked hard, but I'm I was just Preston like Vance, yeah. Preston Vance's blood was effective. I thought mm. I was worried for him. Yeah, because he got a he got a gusher, didn't yeah. he, baby? Gusher. Uh, I gush as in usher. That's right. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> wow. I was trying to think of a better pun, but I really can't. Yeah. Oh, let it burn. Let it burn. <laughs> yeah, it really burns. Yeah. This felt like Do you any other Russian song. You remind me of a... oh. nah. We've, we've, There's we've a party won this one. in the club. I don't know. Probably well, make love in this. Make love There's in this a blade club, in my head. <laughs> this match, this match, I like violence for the sake of violence. Uh, paint by numbers and the paint was red. Yes. Oh, uh, yes. I wasn't just, it was just like, okay. I, bada, I, bada, I bada. thought it was a good match in in a kind of out of place, it felt mm. really. It didn't feel like the the feud had built up to this enough for yeah. this to be, mm. be the match, I thought. It yeah. also didn't help the fact that, again, the, I'm going to say this one more time, probably not bring it up again, the crowd just wasn't seeming to it. No. And 
I, I, had, I thought of a theory about Moxley and why he bleeds in every match, but I think I'm really stretching to help him. <laughs> um, could he be doing a thing where, you know, when like a boxer is easily, they're known for being easily cut open. Like they've got, oh, they've got scar oh, yeah, tissue yeah. around their eyes and stuff. Do you think he's going for that? Like he's been in so many battles, he's got, he's easily cut open now or something like that. Yeah. The but commentators think, could do with mentioning that. Well, yeah, yeah. Never, maybe it could be. <laughs> oh, Moxie's right. beating again. Yeah. It's a day just, ending in a Y. I think he's just trying to decrease his chances of a heart attack because when you give blood, your uh, chances of a heart attack go down a really? lot. Really? I didn't know do that. Do they? Yeah. We I should all know. give blood. I, yeah. it, oh, wait, I can't. Oh, can you not? Why not? They don't uh, like the gaze. Uh, <laughs> it's not my fault. <laughs> Is that actually why? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, my God. What? Surely they can do tests before and then... Oh, mate, wait, wait. I tried not to look at the thing and it was just like, oh, oh, okay, now you're all right. Really? That really? seems... Good. That seems outdated. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's what I thought, mate. Yeah. <laughs> I'm well, sorry to hear that. Listen. Oh, no, it's all right, mate. I'll keep me blood. Oh. I'm all right. <laughs> I'm a better from this. <laughs> No, I really want that Chucky Biggie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Wardlow has a sit-down interview, and I thought I actually like this uh, I did as with well. Jr. and talks about the difficult relationship he had with his dad, which they managed to repair before he passed away, and he passed away due to a big stage four cancer. Uh, and obviously, doing that, you lose your hair. So Wardlow grew out his hair in honor of yeah. his dad, and he told Smojo this when they were teaming up and friends, kind of that little brief association. So Joe knew about how important the hair was to him. So Joe cut off the hair. Which, the most disrespectful thing he could have done. Yep. It felt a little bit... I was like, oh, I've not even thought about Wardlow for months. And then I was like, mm. oh, no, I'm I'm glad this at least happened. Um, and hopefully, because it's based in like something real, hopefully people get on board with him for it, I suppose. I think it's really good. It's a shame that when they come to do it, the crowd's just going to cheer for Joe because he's so Smojo. charismatic. Yeah. He's had so much respect and he's well, well, way more well-traveled and Wardlow's just been in the background for, yeah. well, ever since winning that feud of MJF. It's not Wardlow's fault. No. No. I it's don't know not if it Wardlow's was a, world. Was it a bit of a misstep not making that known before the hair cutting happened? I think they've nah. probably thought, I think they probably only thought of it after. Because it was a bit random and it was sort of in that Christmas period, wasn't it, where, you know, some people don't watch, do they? Mm. Don't watch the rest over Christmas. I'm sure it was when we were off work that week. I had to go back um, and th I had to check, did he cut his hair? Like, yeah. I was oh, no, he did, yeah. Was oh, like, yeah, he, yeah, he did, yeah. I think it would have been a, a lot bigger moment if they maybe said it before mm -hmm. the pay-per-view and then did the cutting at a, well, uh, on a, on a, or a big weekly dynamite, yeah, something yeah, like yeah. that. I think, know. no, the, I mean, that would have made sense, I guess, but obviously it was, Wardlow was out injured for a bit, so that's why he did, Joe did the Darby Allen feud while he recovered, so... Mm -hmm. And I was like, Fair okay, enough. okay, Darby, decent, go away. That's a decent filler feud, like. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. The filler feud might be better than the actual one. The the last match, especially Darby and Joe, was great. Yeah. Yeah. But it should be interesting, like if they're gonna the people, the people, wherever the revolution's gonna be. Where is, is it? it? Probably Chicago, is it? I'll have a look. Like that. Oh, is it? If they're gonna get behind Wardler because of this, because they should do. It's a really good. I think it's a really good story there. I agree. Revolution yeah. twenty twenty three. It's in the Chase Center. Chase you. Chase you. <laughs> it's in San Francisco, California. Ooh. Ooh. West Coast. California. Knows how to party. Mm -hmm. Let's regulate everybody. That's what they say, Warren G. That's what they, they say, <laughs> yes. In his second Dynamite match, Mark Briscoe beats Woodsy. Woodsy? <laughs> That's what they call him on a hey, round thing. Oh, right. That's but good stuff here. Very nice pop. Uh, Mark coming out. Josh, was that good? Yeah. yeah. His, uh, words, wait, his corkscrew suplex off the apron was flipping lovely. Mm. And um, he also did an actual Sabu. <laughs> Not just the Liv Morgan thing. <laughs> did the chair assist to dive the outside. Um, and I also thought that uh, Mark just had a bit of everything in the match. A bit of comedy with his little like noises he was making. <laughs> he knows karate, yeah. Yeah, the stuff yeah. over the top, his suplexes where he just sort of... No, it was a power bomb, wasn't it? Where he just sort of dropped woods yeah. and just looked gnarly as bowels. Bit of everything from him. He's, mm. he's good, like. He's decent. That, that Mark Briscoe. That's analysis. Yeah, yeah. Breaking, <laughs> breaking news. Mark Briscoe is good. <laughs> but I thought Josh was look good as well, to be fair. Yeah. Adam Cole is interviewed by Renee and talks about his road recovery. He knows who he wants to face next, but keep, keeps it vague. I, so I thought they were going to show like part two to this later on because he said nothing. What does it mean? Right now, Adam Cole talks. Yeah, yeah, all right. Uh, Thank you, Adam he's Cole. He's just happy to be at this point, and that's a win for him. He's a nice man. Just deal with it. <laughs> yeah, that was it. <laughs> Adam Cole Cheers. is a nice man now, despite all the despicable things he's done because he was injured. Yeah. No, I, I don't, I don't disagree with them bringing him back as a babyface. But you're right. There should have been more of a 
What was have we missed? Something? What are you was, doing? Was he? Did he? Be, was the reference he made when he went? I know one or two people I want to face. Was there an obvious? Nah, no. Oh, that's right. why I wanted him to say something like. What, Who was his last? What, match the next against? game I'll be playing on Twitch yeah. will be Super <laughs> Mario sixty four. Hey, where Mario is that? Yeah, I want to see his last matches were. Mm. Yeah, was that, it was a four way at. Oh, the the Forbidden Door. Forbidden Door. Forbidden Door was that his last match? So he was feeling yes. with Jay White last. Weirdly. Yeah, then it was the Own Heart Foundation tournament before yeah, that. Well. Oh, yeah. No. And then before had... that, it was the Undisputed Elite taking on Brock Anderson, Dante Martin, Lee Johnson, okay. and the Varsity Blondes. So that's, we've Damn worked it. it out then. Okay. It's going to be one of those lads. <laughs> Arn's <laughs> lads. <laughs> I'm going to call out Griff Garrison. That's right. I yeah. guess his last big singles match was Texas Death Match. Uh, oh, last, Hangman Page. Last April that's against right. Hangman, yeah. Okay. Oh, the one over Easter weekend where you put the Crucifix barbed wire on it. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> MGF cuts a promo on Brian Danielson and asks why he thinks he's the best. Is it because he's entertaining and puts on five-star matches? Yes. MGF <laughs> believes that holding the AW title makes him the best wrestler Mark. in the world <laughs> <laughs> and says he'll beat Brian at Revolution. But don't take my word for it. MGF brings out Christopher Daniels and asks him to reveal the truth about Brian. Daniels indeed, indeed reveals the truth and says that MGF offered him money to bury Danielson in the mic, but refuses to do so. Instead, talks about how great Brian is. MGF hits Daniels with a low blow and puts him in the armbar until Brian makes a save and chases him away. Yes. I thought the promo bit itself, which is a long winded way to say, oh, I, I think I'm better than uh, Danielson, but no, actually, Danielson might be better than you. But the, the entrance of MJF was the highlight of the show. Oh, yeah, yeah. The way he mugged, because we get to see, obviously, the full thing watching on fight. That's right. The way he mugged off several fans in different <laughs> ways was fantastic. And then he got on the mic, and I don't really want to say the quote out loud, because oh, yeah, someone yeah. could clip it and make it look like I'm saying oh. it. But he talked about abortions in Texas, and the line was, <laughs> goodness me. Yeah. <laughs> It was a bit. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, that MGF. What yeah, he basically like? he basically said, "I don't give an f. You don't like my language. Is that because we've got some kids in the crowd? <laughs> Maybe if we weren't in Texas." <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Mm. Um, also, just a quick thing. Um, apparently, it was a news, and I'm not sure if it was real news or not, so I didn't really bring up in the proper news bit. But that, apparently, some fans rang up the police huh. about MJF's <laughs> promo <laughs> right on the car crash last week. Yeah. Just want to compliment and cross-promote the Von Eric WCCW video that you put out because you have magnificent voiceover and stuff like that. Just to say that when Gino Hernandez passed away from presumably drugs, um, it wasn't 100%, fans rang the police to tell them that on that last week's episode of WCCTV, uh, gentleman Chris Adams had threatened to kill him on uh, oh, uh, really <laughs> So went, it was him. Obviously, it was him, obviously, oh. which is... Uh, well, the words of that script came from Justin. He was a, a bloody oracle when it comes to this yeah. historical wrestling he stuff. He is really good when it comes to anything like NWA history oh, yeah. or ECW and his loads about, yeah. And with the Von Erichs, it was just really interesting to see how they turned real things into storylines that many times that eventually the fans turned against them. Oh, Fritz, the dirty old man. Uh, Commiserations yeah. to Justin, whose Philadelphia Eagles lost the Super Bowl. Oh. Gutting. Uh, big ups to the Riri uh, for being yeah, EP. Yeah. Pregnant. Yep. Yeah. I didn't watch any of it. Sorry. It was Sorry. amazing. Like, it's a sporting thing. I wanted the Eagles to win for Justin, I think. Because I don't know anyone <laughs> who supports either team. Oh, that's nice yeah. yeah. And for Rob and Rob. McElhenney and. Oh, yeah, the Reynolds. lads. Yeah, the, oh, the lads. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. so happy the Philadelphians and, have something uh, else to complain about. And for Rocky, the boxer, local to Philadelphia. <laughs> Favorite son of the, the city. <laughs> but wasn't it interesting that, like, this massive sporting event happens, but every headline I saw on Twitter waking up was all about Rihanna, it's the halftime show? It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, it's just, it's the way that it is. Yeah. I think it's been. It's like even we have Dewey Leapier, whatever she's called, doing before the Champions League final. <laughs> Dudley Leapier. <laughs> Dudley Leapier. <laughs> One kiss is all it takes. Except every fourth year. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, it's still about the football, the headlines. It's just amazing how that yeah. turn in America. Yeah. Different showbiz, place. showbiz City over there. She was yeah. astonishing, though. Rihanna. Rihanna. Oh, yeah. That would be uh, wrestling still real to me, damn it, Hall of Fame worthy. Yeah. That's the new name of the, of the Hall of Fame. That's right. I had to think for a second. <laughs> Thank you. Bipper, my It's one of their songs. That's right. Mm -hmm. oh, Jungle Boy beats Brian Cage, but is pepper sprayed by a returning Christian afterwards. <laughs> Christian reveals he's no longer injured. Hey! And it's a kill switch on the stage, and yes. he gets the mic and says, Your dad's dead, lol. <laughs> kill switch engaged. This fire burns. I'm um, glad to see Christian back. Yep. Yeah. 
Yeah, Jungle Boy and Brian Cage, they've already had this match before. It was very, very similar to the other one they've had already. But I, yeah, I thought uh, Big Bry was very impressive. His catch off the torpe into the mm, powerbomb yes. at ringside was lovely. I misremembered how damn handsome Christian is as well. <laughs> Well, there's nothing. Else to say. <laughs> He's got a smashing collection of turtlenecks. Mm. So he does. Uh, Brian suplex me. He just has Jungle Boy by the neck and just goes wee yeah. off the off the mat. Unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> he should go wee. Yeah, he <laughs> I just hope that because that feud went on for a while and then Christian got injured at a bad time. I hope that it's just Jungle Boy beating Christian. I hope they don't have Christian win the first one and they do a full thing because it's already gone on. Yeah, this is so. At least it have ended a while ago. I hope it's just Jungle Boy beating Daddy Christian. Yeah. Yes. Big Daddy Christian. That's what I call him. Of course. <laughs> Renee reveals that the Gun Club will defend their newly won tag titles at Revolution in a three-way match for some reason, and that the two contending teams will be decided in a pair of battle royals. I think it was two battle royals. Yeah, that's what I right. thought. And then the acclaimed arrive and tell Renee it's actually a four-way because they're invoking their rematch club. What? What's this? Idiots. WWE. Why not just have a bloody... A tag match. Oh, God, yeah, why do it in a... Yeah, match why do it in a four-way? Oh. Yeah, why, why am I going, you know what, three-way sounds good. We should enter ourselves in that. Why? Because yeah. they want to take everybody on because they're baby faces. Are there four teams that they could have in this bloody match? The House of Black? Yeah. All right, oh, yeah. no, because they're going to do trio stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, it's Jared's man. crew, the I mean, guns, the acclaimed, and the then... The top flight, no, they're doing trio stuff. The goons, Swerve's goons. Swerve's goons, oh, French yeah. and Trench. <laughs> It's a lot to have two battle royals. Woodsy chaos, and Woodsy chaos and theory. Theory. Chaos theory. Who's chaos theory? Who's chaos theory? Oh, the Martin. Right, the Martin. Yeah. Luther. Oh, Luther and his pal. They're called chaos theory, aren't it's they? It's a pentagon. Are they called oh, chaos theory? I thought, sure they are. I was thinking, Wait, what? Like, I was thinking like Doug Williams and Magnus <laughs> were coming yeah. back. Let me type in Luther, chaos. Are oh, we getting Rob Terry as well? Theory. British Invasion. <laughs> Remember them? You're going to show the people on his back. Oh, that's not worth Luther, chaos theory just brought up Marxist stuff. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Big Carl and Lenin will come down and... Yeah, Chaos Project, bastard. Oh. oh nearly. It's a uh -huh. Fight Club reference. I guess. Or oh, is that Project Mayhem? Damn it. You can okay, Robin crap. Let's move on. <laughs> you can spend $30 of your own money on a Chaos Project t-shirt. Of course you can. Wow. No, I might genuinely do that. Oh, no, it's all right. <laughs> and then you, when you buy it, it gets the, an email comes through and goes, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> totally rather that you spent your dosh on me, bro. Yeah, his real voice is crazy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, whoa, it's me, Dr. Luther, bro. <laughs> Sol Ruger's dad. Yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, yes, yeah, so that's a weird decision. But I did like the gun clubs uh, going, sorry you're upset. Sorry we didn't do the indies for $10 and a handshake. Whoa. He's doing the Baron Corbin gimmick again. Go back Yay. to Ring of Honor. Yeah. I'm glad people don't like him. Mm. Uh, AR, what we got? Yeah, AR Fox and Top Flight. God, AR Fox sounds like a Yorkshire person saying hello. <laughs> AR Fox uh -huh. and Top Flight Goad. That's a good word, that. Mm. Goad the elite into a rematch of Rampage by insinuating that they have no balls. Ah, oh, I've missed good the elite, like, me. Like. Good job you like playing basketball because you've got no balls of your own. Oh. I, I've written down Rampage slam duck here. Oh. <laughs> oh, if only. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Um, but no, the little, there was little, I think there might have been one or two, I can't remember, but there was little glitches. And when you paused the glitch, it was like a House of Black thing. I bet. Yeah. Because they always get Nick Jackson. Arthur's me, isn't it? <laughs> They always get Nick Is that a real thing? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh. I hope so. I hope so, as I'm seeing things. Uh, they always get Nick Jackson to do the to sink the shot, don't they? I reckon Kenny Omega's bad at basketball. Just looking at him, I think he's can't dribble it. He's, he's more of a guy who's good at NBA hang time or oh, something. Hockey, ice hockey. Oh, yeah, 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 the games. Yeah. It'd be good at air hockey. Uh, air yeah. hockey, the national sport of Canada. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, watch your fingers, eh? Oh, <laughs> oh a Minnesota person. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's this, near the border. Hey, this is Canadian pub. This is, is that, Canadian. That's supposed to be like it's a man's pub. Yeah, didn't yeah. work, didn't work. Hyman Page beats Kip Sabian, the whimsical, fabulous uh, synonym Kip Dickensian. Sabian. Dickensian. Dickensian Kip Sabian. Yeah. After the match, he's confronted by the Blackpool Combat Club. Moxie tells Hangman that he doesn't have a chance of ever beating him again, ever. And he also went, oh, this is so awkward, this. He went, also, you've got no friends. And then the Dark Order came out to back Hangman up. To silence. And it was so, that was it. <laughs> <laughs> that was like, oh, is this either a mix of this being a really just quiet crowd that don't really care on a very empty looking arena? <sighs> or is it like this is this you, not working? How popular yeah. they used to be. Yeah. 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 I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, that got to come back. Blah, blah, blah. 
Moxie totally ignores Evil Uno, friend of Mafu, and challenges yeah. Hangman to a Texas Death match at Revolution instead. You'd better be supporting Uno when he has the first match against Moxley before the show, probably, yeah. in the in the weeks to come. I'll tell you what, Uno had come Tuesday's dancing shoes on this week. Do you see them? They're like a couple of glitter balls on his feet. Sensational scenes. Killed uh, that conversation there. No, no, it's not that. It's just I was going. You're right, Ross. I was just lamenting that it was a uh, not the strongest week for AEW this week. Oh no, absolutely no. not. But will this be the time then that Moxie loses the page and actually has that holiday? Yes, I hope yeah. so. Yeah, hope so. I thought it was weird to have a Texas Death Match on a big show like this, even though it's quite fitting for what's happened because we've had them on the weekly dynamites, haven't we? In weekly rampages, mm. the same week Lance, as a Texas Tornado match. Yeah. Lance Archer um, having death matches and stuff on. But this is at least a few dender. Yeah, hopefully. hopefully. So, uh, at least it makes sense. Yeah. The, I mean, the, I'm sure Revolution will still be... The card's shaping up quite nicely, I suppose. Mm. And you've got probably Christian and Jungle Boy on it as well. Yeah. Yeah. I thought this week... I've written down here. It oh, wait, it's like, not even the end of the show. What am I doing? I know, there. No. Uh, Jericho says that Ricky Starks isn't on his level, and he's not giving him any more matches, but he can have one against Sonny Garcia on Rampage. What were you going to uh, say there, Russell? Please. I was just going to say, like, it felt like a mini pay-per-view this week because every match went a bit long. Mm. Not every match, but most yeah. of the matches mm. went a bit long. Like a pay-per-view would. Mm. Yes, Good I point. Agree. Completely pointless point. No. no, no. <laughs> That's not Because it was another match where Kip... Wrestling was really good. Another match, but everything else, as we said earlier, is just a bit... Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. As a, oh, as a, and also, as a booker, well, Tony needs to slow it down and grab a, grab a rest hold, brother. Hey, That's what I think. You tell him, big un. Yeah, I'm... <laughs> I am. I'm, I'm, I've got the history of proper promoters coursing through my veins. That's right. You've read Justin Henry's notes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Elsewhere, Stokely is with Ethan Page and Matt Hardy and says Hook should be fired. What was this party they were talking about as well? I didn't include that because I didn't quite understand. But like, they were like, Stokely, why weren't you at the... Matt Hardy and Ethan were throwing a party. They were like, why weren't you at the party? Well, they're called the Hardy party, aren't they? Oh. Mm. The private party. Oh. Right. I don't, yeah, want Paige. Don't, don't think about it too was much. Was Page either. at the party? I don't know. Was Page party? Is that where Mark Quinn is all the time now? Yeah, he's kind of yes. the show is he? <laughs> Tony Schiavone informs Stokely that Hook has been suspended. The bastard. I enjoyed Stokely Hathaway looking like a French lady in this segment. <laughs> what? Well, Please the, explain. The beret, the leather coat, the sunglasses. Like Triple H. Yeah. That's just Jack watching a film. <laughs> <laughs> a very thin cigarette. Ooh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I love the mise en scène. <laughs> very much like the spider from uh, James and the Giant Peach. Uh, yeah. Oh right. Okay. Yeah. Jack's first crush, I think. Yep. Is that right? Uh, yeah, and the red Powerpuff girl, yeah. Oh, I didn't know about that. Uh, that's a new one, eh? And, yeah. the, and the girl off the raisins box. Yeah, that's a... Nah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's <laughs> a, that's, that was more like teenage... That was more teenagers crush, the girl on the... What's wrong with the that? red raisin one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> kind of play up to that one because it makes people laugh, I suppose, but... The girl on the raisins box, nice. nice we don't know. Joel, no. we need to get to know you a bit better there, son. <laughs> Which uh, not human did you fancy when you were a kid? <laughs> the girl on the race was <laughs> human. Lola yeah. Bunny from Space Jam. Oh, the oh, classic the Lola classic Bunny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know. I've do you heard... do an impression of what Joel just did? <laughs> she is hot. <laughs> She's a very... S- <laughs> <laughs> you still think about raisins? <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> what, the, the girl from the raisins? <laughs> you got me on Facebook? Look at my cover photo. Look, look at my cover photo on it. It's the raisins box. Is it really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a long term bit that I've been keeping up. Uh in the main event. <laughs> who cares? Some Ru- made raisins for everyone. Yeah. Ru- <laughs> Ru- <laughs> Ruby Soho subs the rag and Tony Storm from being up a fan. Whoa. Oh, Not she, a plan. She wins the triple threat match between herself, Tony, and Britt Baker. After the match, Soraya and Jamie <laughs> both try to keep <laughs> a tribute side with them. Can we Did talk, I miss that? Can we talk about Tony Storm's new finisher? <laughs> Her new special move? You know when Top Gear was on, they would say, we're ambitious, but rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is what this was. So it's a shame because Tony gets flack for never putting the women in the main event. And then he has, and everyone's gone, eh. <laughs> So did uh, running hip attack in the corner yeah. was the winning maneuver because Ruby then stole one. Yeah. She then threw her out of the ring and stole the pinfall. But it still doesn't make Ruby look good, does it? Because she won the match, but did she, did she win the match? Yeah. Okay. She got the pinfall. She stole one. She got the winner's purse. Yeah. Also, gotta work then smart. you've got the ending, which was very stage play, which was like Soraya and Jamie Hayter on, what, on either side of her going, join me, don't join me. And then Ruby was like, I know, and that was the end of the... Shut up! 
<laughs> what am I going to do? <laughs> it felt like not a very... It was very, we're out of time, you know, like it was a weird ending. But which way will she go? It's like Shane McMahon back in the day. Uh, which way will she'll she go? She'll go to the heel side, probably. She's been a face since she started there. Be I interesting, think. that. But like the, the, the finish out, the, 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 the Tony stuff. Oh, no, we haven't frozen. I was just looking at Jack then. He's very still. I was like, oh my God, we're frozen. <laughs> Concentrate. Um, no, the finisher with the, the spray paint as if it was meant to leave like a green L on the face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's her new, sorry, that was what I was going to say. That's Tony's new special. That's, that's the ambitious but, ambitious but rubbish You're new finisher. you spray your backside and that'll add humiliation to the move. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It didn't work at all. You can barely see the L on her ass anyway. Yeah. That was it. I was laughing. No. Uh, the three, I thought the match before. Even through pausing and zooming in, <laughs> I couldn't see. I didn't do that for the record, Your no. Honor. Um, but no, the match up until the end, I thought was very good. I thought all three lasses were bringing it. It's the, it's the, what have I just said there? All three lasses were bringing it. Who do I think I am? Oh, okay. They were bringing it. Oh, they were bringing it, yeah. Uh, I thought Britt Baker hasn't looked better in some time. The way she was mm -hmm. bringing it with the other lasses. Um, it was the, just the story that let it down for me. The action was good, but the story. It's all, it leaves it on a knife edge. Which way will she go? Yeah. She's sick of everybody. She could create a, a new faction. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't know what we should call it. Trafalgar Square. Ruby Tuesdays. <laughs> mm. I'm sure that was a night out in Sunderland when I was at uni. Ruby, Ruby Tuesdays. Tuesdays, yeah. Uh, Maybe. Mm. Ruby Soho wasn't there. Um, what what do we say about this now? We've, I think we've broken That down. was it. Oh, okay. Yeah, she's uh, all kinds of A1 because she's caught in the middle. Mm. Oh, what a tune. Oh. a big, big song. Hey, oh. now. I'm a someone new. All I can think mm, about, about is you. Because now I'm caught. Mm. Oh, I was waiting for you. Caught in the middle. Caught in the middle. I'm caught in the middle. Caught in the middle. I'm caught in the plague pit. <laughs> <laughs> nom, nom, nom. <laughs> right. Let's crack on. That was <laughs> the week in wrestling, or no, I've exploded. <laughs> Let's have a rummage in our mail bags. <laughs> ah, let's have a little old look through the mailbag. Hold the press. Zelina oh. Vega is heading to the 2023 Anime Awards in Tokyo. Yeah. Thanks, Ross. <laughs> I, hope, I, hope, I hope the one anime I've watched wins. That's Haikyuu, the volleyball anime. Wow. Fans of Haikyuu, I see you out Thank there. You. I Let's can not that. I just watch One Piece, which is any, never ending. Not going to make a quick death note of that? Oh. I've heard of a death note, the famous anime. Yes. I've got nothing there. Tope <laughs> come Tuesday. Oh my Hello, diddlers. Tope come Tuesday. I hope you're having a great podcast as usual. Hi. Someone is. On last night's NXT... <gasps> Robert Stone told Von Wagner that the biggest thing he has going yeah. for is that he's a meme that says Come Tuesday. Yes. I assume Wesley shared the joke from the NXT locker room since he went and said it on live TV. And I might be wrong, but I don't think Cum would be a fan of it. My question is this. Does any wrestler or wrestling person hate you? If yes, who and why? Almost certainly. Continue the great work, lads. Uh, Rami, the Algerian man in France. I mean, how on earth oh, do we answer this question? Thank you, Shun. Thank you very much. Thank so, you. I mean, do people do... hate me? Yes. Uh, any specific people? I've with seen you? a lot of wrestlers be very cordial and polite. Oh, like, like you said, half of them hate me, half of them don't. Oh like me. right. I'm, okay. I'm all right with that. That's the I way. Know, I world. remember BT Gun being quite a fan of yours because he pulled out a table with "I Am the Table" written on yeah, it at I... one of our shows, and we were like, "What's that say there?" <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a Matthew reference. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you all right? Yeah. You think about raisins? I was trying to click my, <laughs> I was trying to click my knee and I kicked the table when I was trying to swing my click leg. Click your out. knee. Like I needed like, like swing it like. like just, oh, okay. Yes, wrestlers, uh, one or two, I'd say openly. No, apart uh, from Karen Cross, obviously. It's hard to most the vast vast majority of wrestlers that I've encountered have been either have either not heard of us, which is fine, or have been like it's been a positive interaction. So. I feel a bit unfair answering it. There are all one or two instances where I've thought they don't like me at all, but it feels unfair <laughs> mentioning... I, I was about to just say his name. <laughs> um, no, I can't. I can't do it. <laughs> I can't oh, do it. can't do it now. Uh, it's just, I don't know if he does or not. And if he does, it's with good reason. I once accidentally reported the news wrong and said that Chris Brooks was signing with WWE, right? And he went on Twitter oh. and went, I'm not joining NXT UK. This is an incorrect story. And I thought... Oh, I'm totally in the wrong there. Like, fair enough. Then I once thought I saw Angelico, who I've met previously, and I went, hello, mate, how's it going? And got totally blanked. 
and then realized because it was at the corner of my eye that I saw him, it was Chris Brooks. <laughs> and I was like, and I've never talked to him before. So oh. I was like, oh no. Because um, all I saw was tall man, swoopy fringe. I thought it was an Alico. And I went, uh, hello, mate, you all right? Because got, I got on quite well with an Alico. <laughs> and then was met with silence. Yeah. And I don't know. And in fairness, and I want to make this clear, he may just not have heard me. <laughs> um, he is a lot really tall. So he's much taller it, it than me. It takes longer for sound to travel. He's but, that tall. Uh, I don't know. I, I just get the feeling that he hates me. <laughs> well, I hate him. <laughs> no, no. I, I hate Chris Bruce. I'd like to clarify. I don't actually know if he does. And I I, I, I don't know. He once said in 2016, my physical appearance made him feel sick. Oh, my God. So I hate Chris oh, well, Bruce. Why did he say that? He re oh, replied to you. I oh was shouting God. you out on a WTF video back in the old days. In a nice oh. way. Before we really knew each other, oh, yeah, to be yeah. fair. And uh, in... You shared a video of it on your Twitter, and then you replied to that saying, "This makes me, oh, this guy makes me feel sick or something." It might not have been your appearance. Why were you talking about Chris Brooks in the video? Was no, it? No, it's all you. And then oh, you so, shared. That was it. A, a WCPW video. Oh, thing. oh, oh right, right. About the, the table. Then. I forget oh. what the. the I've, I've, I've messed up his response there, right, but the, right, the, the vibe right, right, I got right. from it was my appearance and oh. mannerisms and what I made him feel sick. So I don't like Chris Brooks. Well, fair enough. Oh. So up yours, Chris, Chris Brooks. Brooks likes crap fringe. Chris Brooks likes Matthew. <laughs> I'm jealous of his fringe. I don't know. Um, Chris I... Brooks likes Matthew because he... We used to talk, but now I haven't talked about <laughs> I mean, he's been off in Japan for a long time. Yeah. It? Good. I don't dislike him or anything like that. We had... So, Chris oh, Brooks... Oh, no. <laughs> like, we had, I guess, approaching uh, something. He was... Him and... Uh, Good God Almighty! I almost called the name of his tag team Lewis CCK. That's not. <laughs> that's not what the, It is so hot and sweaty in this studio. I'm like really mention, sorry. I have met Lycos one, and he was he was lovely. I got him with him. I've had no interactions with him. Not, not got nothing against him. So CCK, not to be confused with whatever. <laughs> How that in my head? That's bizarre. Louis they were announced two months in advance for North to take on the original Sick Boys, which is Rory and Baz -Baz. the other land. Oh, well done. Oh, yes, Baz -Baz. yes. And so a month into it, Gilles got injured. Fair enough. So they changed it to a singles match. Yeah. Rory versus Chris Brooks. On the day of the show, Chris Brooks decides that he can't attend the show because he's a bit injured. Uh, That's fine, by the way. On I'm... the day of the show, he might have been he injured. He, he may have been. Uh, it was a bit awkward that he didn't send in a video or a photo or anything. I know it what was happened. just a tweet. So, and, uh, so I had to get in the ring. So I, I was doing the ring announcement. Wasn't doing ring. Oh, sorry, the pre-show for North, right Riverside still. So I went in and just said, basically said, yeah, well, apparently he's injured, you can't make it. We're really sorry, people booing. Pe lots of people wearing CCK oh, merch. Very over. Oh, very. Yeah, people don't know. At like, one yeah, point, very. Most, this isn't just some some lads, whatever. They were probably point, one of the, the like, most over over tag team in the UK. Indeed, I'll yeah, tell you so. Yeah. Uh, so it was a big like. Oh, okay, so I said, yeah, uh, apparently he's injured. Well, best of luck in that progress tag match he's got tomorrow. Matthew. Which I had to put the heat on him <laughs> on the day of the show. And then I said, no, no video, no you nothing. You cheeky other. man. And I was doing the pre-show, uh, the Matthew interviews, the wrestlers died a death every time. Uh, but <laughs> it was me. This is the only the, the good one because I was fired up because I'm going, look, like whatever. Was it? It was two UK wrestlers who I probably can't say names of. So I just said, yeah, it's a shame. What do you think of him? And like, oh, he's nice or whatever. So I'm going to try ringing him. And they were like, <laughs> like, oh, no, what's happening here? He didn't answer. <laughs> uh, but then I felt bad because Bruce Brooks has actually been very nice to me. Yeah, right, so yeah. I was like, I had to tell him. Uh, and he was very mad. He wasn't very happy. He's like, look, I was like, whatever, I'm injured, this, this, this. But I told him what he what I said and did. And he went, oh, that's all right. Okay. I would talk since then, and yeah. Chris Brooks has reappeared. But it ended up being the best thing that happened in the North in a weird way, because wrestling's weird. Because Rory. And Bassband came out. And Rory did this promo. They'd been like, you know, getting some mild booze or whatever. But that was the point. Rory did this promo where he put himself up saying, we're the original sick boys here. We've been here since day one. Yeah. We've known this and the crowd went, yeah, you are Caddy Mint, actually. And they couldn't be booed afterwards. Rory's still really over to this yeah. day. Yeah, to this day, he's yeah. still over. And he was so over, he won the WCW title. Mm, As I say, WCW no, or WCPW. The Defiant, the Defiant. Sorry, the Defiant yeah. title and the North Wrestling title at the yeah. same time. And it was thanks to Chris Brooks not being there. So it ended up being the best thing possible. Uh, it happened. I don't think Chris Brooks ate me. I have nothing against I'm him. I'm worried that this segment has just become, let's all talk about our personal interactions with Chris Yeah, isn't it, isn't it great? <laughs> Terrible human. <laughs> <laughs> One of the worst. Uh, JBL hates me because obviously back in the day. Because you're not a muscle woman. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, obviously, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he would block everybody who mentioned me and him in the same tweet. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's, I, I understand. Oh, that seems quite. I'm blocked by Shawn Michaels. I don't know why. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Which makes me sad. I'm trying oh. to think of like any other ones. Uh, I got called an arsehole by Jeff Cobb. Okay. Because I was, I tweeted out, being a, a, a 
a, a very casual <laughs> video game. Very casual video gamer. Yeah, yeah. It was the game that was coming out after... Was it 2K19 that was the bad one? Or 2K20 was the bad one? 2K20, I think, was the bad so it was one. So it would have been 2K21, the news of that getting cancelled. Just being a oh, fan of video games, I, I tweeted know. out, good news, everybody, 2K21's being canned. <laughs> Jimmy Corderas was calling me an arsehole because think about the paydays that people oh, were getting. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, like, I'm just I'm a, I like video games. Arsehole. Kind of. <laughs> Jeff Cobb was like, you're an arsehole or an arse wipe or something <laughs> like that. Because <laughs> Jeff Cobb does the game, like the motion capture. At the tag team of Jimmy Corderas and Jeff Cobb yeah. called me an arsehole on Twitter. Yeah. But wow. I, I get where they're coming from. But the other thing was, it was the biggest joke in gaming, not just wrestling yeah, games, yeah, in yeah. gaming in general, yeah. how bad that game was. Oh, if it hadn't, so been, people were saying, if it hadn't like, been one they'd been involved in, then they wouldn't have I know, yeah. yeah. But they're saying like, look, yeah, I know you guys got a pay date, but we're going to play it and not get... Not, we're going to hate wrestling Anything and games. Yeah, yeah. And wrestling games. So it's like, no, no, you should just buy it anyway. It's like, no, <laughs> no one's to buy it after this. So it was for the best they took the year off. I had a Twitter argument with Jeremy Borash. So. <laughs> I'm be saying that. Because I didn't like the final deletion, which became ironic because then WCW, PW booked Matt Hardy and then I did yes, the thing with did. him. Got on fine, like with Matt Hardy, he was great. He was re- Considering how much I'd been a cheeky little so-and-so about mm-hmm. his angle, he was really nice to me. Um, and... Uh, Borash on Twitter. What well, was Kenny threw me under the bus? <laughs> Kenny's, I remember. Yeah, Kenny yeah. said like, Dave Meltzer loved the final deletion. Jack the Jobber didn't like it. Which one am I gonna listen to? Which first of all, f you, Kenny. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. He just said me every Friday on Google <laughs> Hunter, I said YouTube. This was back. This was years ago. Oh. Um, but Kenny like, it was a joke. But he, I don't think he was expecting Jeremy Borash to then go. Yeah. I've never heard of the other guys with Meltzer. And I was like, right, this is it. And I got really cross and I called him like a Jersey Shore orange Oompa Loompa or something like that. <laughs> I was young and silly on the Twitter. Because of his hair. Jersey Shore. Oh, no, I get it. Right. Yeah. But apparently everyone loves Borash. So, yep. right, well, that question's... That's right, it. There's, okay. there's some people who insult you. It's like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not winning this one. I didn't win. <laughs> like, I'm going to like that and confuse you with oh, everyone. I lost, I lost that one. Yeah. Oh, but one time Corey Graves did such a weird reference to a really old time manager and I was thinking, because it got no reaction. I was like, what, what are you on about? And he said, shut up. You just don't understand the reference I was going for, whatever. And then people were like, oh, Matthew and Corey are beefing. I was, went, I was went, yeah, no worries. You, do, you did a good job. You're, you're a good oh. commentator, whatever, like that. Because I'm like, I'm not beefing over this. <laughs> <laughs> beefing over absolutely nothing at all. So, uh, yeah. yeah, this question, this, what was the name of the person who asked the question? Rami, the Algerian man Rami, in you've, France. You've absolutely opened a can of worms. You've <laughs> gaslit us, <laughs> Rami. No, he hasn't. <laughs> I don't know how you dealt with Tennyson's email last week. That's a, a note for you. You'd have to read that bit out. Oh. <laughs> I think I think Ross the has actually put it in massive I think he's bold, put it in bold italics. italics and square brackets. <laughs> I thought I meant I had to yell it. <laughs> I don't know how you dealt with the email last what week. What we did was last week we read out an email that was um, that just. They oh no, is it from Chris Brooks? They'd, ob- <laughs> no, they'd obviously send it without finishing it. So it was just like sometimes I think about CM Punk in the shower or something. I remember like that. that one. Yes. Yeah, we, we just laughed. Oh, about here it. we go. We've Good got day. The full one now. Good day and salutations, boys. Let me tell you a little story. I was in the shower thinking about CM Punk as I. I sometimes do. I remember this one. I was and then thinking. It ended there. Oh, that was right. Yeah. That, was, <laughs> that was the email. I was thinking about how when he came back, because he is coming back, oh. how awesome it will be. As so it's written. As I put shampoo on my head, I envisioned him <laughs> in his tattoo glory, looking up. What? Looking at me in the crowd, saying. Thank you for always believing in me, Tennyson. <laughs> Everyone else gave up for my return, but you didn't. Is this my own he, personal fantasy? He then asked me to move in with him and sleep on his couch what? because he thought I was cool. Anyway, <laughs> my what? question is, if you could be part of any famous wrestling family, which one would it be? Wait. <laughs> Thank you for everything, signed Tennyson from America. So it wasn't creepy I'm, in like a romantic way. It was just he wants to be best pals with Sam <laughs> Punk and moving. I've seen the podcast and I've seen the stuff that people say. Yeah. Here's Summit. What's uh, the It's good. It's good effort from Tennyson. Love his poetry, by the way. Um... <laughs> Oh, sorry. That was good. <laughs> Rubbish. Believe in yourself. That's the place to start. And I said, hey. Hey. What a wonderful, wonderful time. Kind of day. <laughs> um, uh, if I could be a member of any wrestling family. <laughs> could, I be, could I be with Cody? I'd like to be. Because like, <laughs> wrestling has more than one. Yeah, and his dog. Botching has more than one. Oh, I forgot a giant tattoo. 
Yes, that's the pot. That's oh, you've got to do that to be no. in the family. That's right. The dog's got one. <laughs> They've all got one. Dustin's got one. <laughs> yeah, the dog. The dog has to be kept away from loud noises. So it, it was actually okay at AW Dynamite this week. I'd like to be one of the Villanos. Thank you, Joel. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to be Villano six or whatever they're up to. Keep it going. Seven. Keep it going. Villano eleven. Yeah, he'll do. I'll be, I'll be Villano eleven. Great. That's my answer. Because then they don't even have to know it's me. Oh. I'm in a mask. <laughs> what? <laughs> I gave an answer yourself. that you weren't expecting. Yeah. Who's funny? I would like to be the son of Vince McMahon, and oh, I yeah. would push him down the stairs and take control of his company. Okay, that's the most push him down answer. the stairs, so he didn't get back up. Was this? It, what's the aim here? Is it to save wrestling or to make loads of to money? To take the company off his hands. Okay, for the sanctity of the business and all of mankind. Mm. Cool. So Ross would kill Vince. Yeah, I would. Yeah, fantastic. A really tall marble staircase. You'd go in the <laughs> Rhodes family. I feel like I've gone to a small time here. Just want to be in another Villano now. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the bizarre question, <laughs> Tennyson. The Hart family. After reading about all their wacky antics <laughs> oh, in the God, no. <laughs> I want a pet bear when I was a kid. Terrible Ted. Licking Terrible peanut Ted. butter off our toes. Yeah. <laughs> Hidley Ho, amigos. Hidley Ho. That's Stuart oh, Heidi Ho. A bit of Stuart Little, that, isn't it? <laughs> That's what I thought they were going for. Is it Heidi Hugh, Ho, is amigo. Is it Hugh Grant who plays the dad? It's Hugh Laurie. Yes. Hugh... Oh, yeah, no. Hugh damn it. Yeah, it is. Yeah. That's sorry. Twaddle, film Jewish. expert. Well done. <laughs> Spat everywhere. <That's> <laughs> you oh. see that? It's like a no. it's a tidal wave come up your mouth. Right in the month, Long time watcher, first time writer. Been watching you guys since name redacted days, Thank and you. I must say, you guys really gave me back the love for wrestling. Oh, I'm super condolences. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, sorry. Because of you guys, I started watching other companies and going to indie shows. Ooh, and I thank you guys so much for that. Which brings me to my question. We all had the dream to become a wrestler when we were younger. If money responsibilities were not an issue, where would you want to start your wrestling career at? Would you start in the hard-hitting country of Japan? Oh. Would you want to learn how to fly and do lucha things in Mexico? Would you stay local and, or head straight to WWE and create a gimmick first? doesn't necessarily have to do these examples. You can pick any place in the world. Thank you for everything you guys do and bring smiles and laughs to everyone. And to Ross, thank you for holding give and bringing back the love of football or soccer. No, you're right the first time. <laughs> I had lost a long time ago. Much love. Brian Gonzalez from Baltimore, Maryland. Oh, the the Gonzalez. We need the map. Oh, do we? Good morning. Oh, I've been to Maryland before. That's, that's you have been to Baltimore before because isn't that where Magfest is? No, it's in <laughs> Washington, D.C. <laughs> that has been so clever. It's where? Uh, Washington, D.C. Close enough. At the uh, Gaylord National Harbour. Okay. You're what are you smoking for? Yeah, why are you there? Awesome, <laughs> the harbor. It's a wonderful harbour's name. <laughs> Brian Gonzalez. Thank you very much. Um, so where would you start if you're a wrestler? I honestly, as you were reading out, I was like, you know what? I think the best answer honestly might be the UK because mm. not Japan, F that, don't want to I want my back to still work. Please. Even Kota Bushi. No, well, he's very handsome. Have you ever seen Tub Man and doing his bike videos? Yeah. So if I was a wrestler, not Japan, I don't want to get hurt. Mexico, no, I'm not. Even in my fantasies, I can't imagine myself being able to do any high flying moves. I think the UK, because it's small enough to get around and make your name in the whole country, not just a region. And the crowds are passionate and get on board with you. Well, there's more chance of that happening, I suppose. I'll go for the UK. Good answer. Lance Storm's basement. Mm. Yeah. I would want to tra train under Lance and learn all the tricks of the trade and then take my natural charisma straight to the Nightmare Factory. Mm. From the Nightmare Factory, I get myself on AEW television, have a stellar two year run <laughs> as the North American show. <laughs> TNT champion. You really mapped it, huh? And then from there, I would take the BBB, whatever the hell MJF calls it, from MJF, and then take it over to the World Wrestling Federation Whoa. in a Ric Flair-esque angle. Oh, Ooh. That's exactly what I would do. That's the first five years of my career, though. Just easing yourself in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'd probably go somewhere nice and sunny like Australia. Ooh. Or even MLW, New Zealand. No, MLW. No, Yay. MCW. Yay. MCW, yeah. Just because... Uh, it doesn't like there's a lot of money to be made in the wrestling if you're starting off, so you might as well go somewhere that you can have a nice, lovely time. And I want to go to Oceania at some yeah. point. That's you a good show. You don't really need a house, do you? Just sleep on the beach. That's what it looks like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> weather's fine. Might need need no tent. fixed address. Yeah, keep the creepy crawlies out. Oh yeah, that's a big thing. Isn't it? Yeah. Oh well, 
Yeah, I might die. I've got an interesting tidbit from Bret Hart's autobiography. <laughs> oh dear. It's not. It's not. It's, it's that once he nearly signed an exclusive, however many year deal, to just be a part of this New Zealand promotion, oh, and nearly moved that. to New Zealand with Julie, and that would have just been it. But he wanted to get with Julie, so he didn't want to do it. But then so. he stayed. Oh, that was it. Sorry, yeah. he was going to move out to New Zealand for years, and if he had done that, he might never have ended up like. Mm. The greatest of all time. That's oh, right. this is before. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. This was wow. when he was still coming up. And he this sounds like, like a retirement gig. It's yeah, between exactly. Vince, Bischoff, and New Zealand. But he just really liked it there and liked the promoter. Yeah. And then had to be like, I'm sorry, mate, but destiny means that I'm destined for greatness. Or something. And he was right. <laughs> oh. Well, thank you very much, Brian, Tennyson, and Rabbi, for the magnificent questions. If you have any of your own, please, 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 please send them to mailbag at callholic.com. P.S. Sorry, Chris Brooks. Yeah. <laughs> nah. Apart from Cross, <laughs> who hates you. Ah, wrist piss. Oh, yeah. What's up, Cultaholic? After emailing in last year, brackets, I was the guy who asked you to compare wrestlers to types of bread. Oh, yes. I thought, um, why not try it again? Fantastic. Uh, my obsession with bread has now made a natural transition to a joy of late 90s, early noughties dance music. Okay. Ross picked this one. <laughs> yeah. I should say this is one I had stocked up in the vaults. Uh, oh. so this, I think this was actually sent in sometime in 2022. Wow. And it's just making the light of day now. That's fine. Got to yeah. bring yeah. on some point. Shockingly, this means that Jimmy Hayter's AEW theme is one of my favorite entrance themes. Good Big choice. tune. My question is this. Which wrestlers or teams, past or present, would you assign these decades-old dance tracks to as entrance themes. And you thought the bread was hard. <laughs> no, I don't like hard bread. <laughs> Enjoy and sorry. DJ from Leicester. DJ. I've put some links DJ. below because there are some you might know if you hear, but not by title. I've stuff. got the links here. Um, if we do play one, Joel obviously have to mute our audio. Hopefully we know them all. Yeah. But I've got the links here just in case we do okay, need them. Okay. And Joel will need to do more Thank work. You. <laughs> uh, sorry, pal. Uh, so first one, uh, Teo Cruz Dynamite. Yeah. I throw yeah. my hands up in the air sometimes. Oh, hey, 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 oh. Want to play? We'll go eat some play doh. Yeah. Light it up. It's dynamite. Well, this should be that the was a massive. dynamite theme, shouldn't it? Not yeah. a tag team theme. Can it be Tony's personal? Tony's like, entrance yeah, theme? Yeah. Like, like No Chance in Hell, but for Tony. Yes. It comes up with a little skull. Hey, oh. <laughs> Tony Khan. <laughs> yeah, that's my name. <laughs> yes. That's a good one. Tony Khan. Have we all just reached a consensus? Yes. Okay, right, okay. Two unlimited, no limit. No, 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 there's no limits, no, no. Like no, no, the Martins, because there's no limits to what they can accomplish. No limit soldiers in WCW. Bob Holly is the the race car driver. Oh. No speed limits. Foggy plug. It's not about speed limits. It's about no limits as he comes <laughs> like 10. Yes. Keith Lee. Oh, yeah, oh, he's limitless. Oh, yeah. Joel. I am limitless. Hey, well, no, 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 no. <laughs> and this is his sign off of promos could be, is my opponent going to beat me? No, there's music. Oh, never mind. Never mind. <laughs> I am Keith Lee and there's no limits. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bass Hunter, now you're uh, gone. gone. Oh, I've had to delete this. <laughs> I realize I love you. I saw Bass Hunter in 2011 in a small place in Magaluf. Yeah. <sighs> it was a tragic time. Was it a university campus? In Magaluf. There's just rumors that Bass Hunter used Magaluf to always, you. <laughs> in, in Durham, there was always rumors that every year Bass Hunter would always be booked and was always. Yeah, he was a bit. Swanning uh, around the campuses with the young lasses. There was know. only about. <laughs> Allegedly. I was with a group of like. 18 lads or something and we took up at least 75% of the uh, clientele in there I was just saying that's a massive lads holiday yeah it yeah. was uh, what how that sounds mint how what how is that many because it was it the end of school then? <laughs> was it like the big end of being no, popular likeable the year after the end of the year of school uh, oh, yeah. so uh, now that you're gone, um, uh, now that, you're sounds, gone. that sounds like abs- where was it Magalur yeah that sounds like carnage Ross. Yeah, DJ Sammy Got to see him live in the flesh. Wow. I went, here, me, I went to BCM nightclub to watch Tiesto. Whoa. Like a fish up a tree, Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> Were you just wanting, like, Radio Lolly and all that? Viva <laughs> La Radio. I tried to fit in, but it didn't quite work. I used to think DJ Sammy was the last in the video. Nah, he's a little little tiny man. Oh. Okay. It was a bit like Dennis Wise. <laughs> Older. 
on Very a come down. Um, older, right. older and wiser. Now so you're now gone. You're got, I wouldn't. Is that a good entrance no. theme? It's not. Imagine it's a right, good song. You but... know when Shawn Michaels went away and it had like "Tell Me uh, a Lie." Uh, yeah, yeah. Imagine yeah. if that was "Now You're Gone," but from Vince's perspective. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> JC, JC Jane kicking in. Uh... Mm. But the next lyric is "Now my love for you is still strong." Mm. Okay. He's longing for the lass who's gone. Shawn Michaels when he retired. Oh, Rick that could Bear. be like. Mandy, no, no, Mandy, no, no. <laughs> can, can I just? Yeah. I think I've tweeted about this before, maybe multiple times, but the the base on the music video universe is mad. It's all one story. It all starts as a love story between two people. Then they break up, and then the last gets with Base Hunter. <laughs> it's just weird. And Base Hunter has a street race in one of them, like Need for Speed. I do like how crap some of these music videos are. It's, <laughs> it's the whole DJ ba- Otzi in a taxi. <laughs> no, it's, it's more that there's the whole base on the cinematic universe going on. It's weird. Anyway. Soldier Boy, crank that. Woo! Oh. Oh. Yo! Well, I'll chase you! Well, oh, yes. Oh. Where do you go Yo. to? Where do you study? Yo! Yo. Okay. <laughs> I suppose to the, the library! <laughs> Wami do, Wami do. Danzel, L- Lacey Oprah. Evans, Misfits in Action, Soldier Boy. Yeah. Oh, oh no. Yeah. I don't want the Misfits in Action to lose their theme. Actually, so, no, yeah, I like that. Yeah. Uh, Danzel, pump it up. Don't you know? Oh, pump, pump it up. Pump. You want oh, to pump, pump it up? up. Scott Steiner. The the DDT promotions, the Japanese blow up doll. Yes. It's like Yoshihiko or something? Yeah. That one. yeah that it one. should yeah, be yeah. MVP's entrance themes. Entrance theme. Oh, for Where they're blowing up the castle. Oh, yeah. oh, oh like when that. the cell comes down. Like, slowly oh. blowing up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> no, buddy. <laughs> uh, David Guetta, sexy chick. Oh, no, what do we do? I don't like this song. Oh, he's just trying to find the worlds to be, to not be disrespectful. Without being and he's called her a sexy yeah. bitch or sexy chick. Yeah, he chick. does, he does. He's oh, disrespectful. Damn, she's a sexy bitch. <laughs> 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 do you know it? And Damn, Charlie. girl. That's just Vince uh, singing John Michael's first think, thing. I think he even says something worse. In the, the, sexy bitch it is, normally. Said, but in the, earlier on, in the, he's like, she's nothing like a girl you've ever I've seen, seen before. before. Uh, to compare to a neighborhood whore. I know. Wow, he's full of compliments, him. Right. Trying to find the words to describe. You look like a slag. <laughs> oh, this is part of MMM. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah. I'll go for pretty deadly. <laughs> but they do look like... Oh, yeah. Uh, wow, these are great picks. Yeah, yeah. Press is on there, Matthew. I know. Rick Martel? Oh, okay. <laughs> he thought about it, and then he, and he thought... Yeah, 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 I'll yeah, take, I'll I'll take your pity, because I can't think of anything else. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, Chips... Cowboy. Now, Joel. I don't know that one. Are you ready to cancel the audio <laughs> in three, two, one? <laughs> so it's Kiana James. Because <laughs> it she wants to be the cowboy's girl. But she's not yet. But she's not yet, but she wants yes. to be. Yes. Okay. Cowboy, cowboy. That was, was that a rejected CBBC <laughs> theme? That was or really something? bad. That was that. Rotten. But in the background, it had the banjo kazooie. <laughs> Jeff Jarrett in 2000. <laughs> <laughs> no, because that, that theme is one of my favorites ever. <laughs> the chosen one. <laughs> Beetlejuice, the guitar. I'll, I can't get better than the Kiana James shout, yeah. Uh, Cascada, evacuate the dance floor. Evacuate the dance floor. Ayo, ayo. I've just shouted. <laughs> <laughs> Stop, this is killing me. Ayo, DJ, turn it to the dance floor. So, what is the, 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 the cavo- why did the, is that, why she want the, the dance floor? I think to be she cleared. wants it all to herself so she can bust some moves. Right. Oh, Chelsea Green. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the manager in. Yeah. I want this dance floor to be self please. Yeah. The floor is <laughs> sticky. I'm getting my shoes on. Do you not know how many action figures my husband knows? Come on. Evacuate the dance floor lyric. I'm just going to confirm that it's because she wants all the space to herself. That's the crucial detail. It's, it's actually because it's got a second biggest song behind um, Every Time every We Touch Shirley. Oh, yeah. uh, okay. Still the night, kill the lights, feel it under your skin. Evacuate. Uh huh. Okay, uh-huh. wrap it up. You can't stop because it feels like an overdose. Whoa. <laughs> Evacuate the dance floor. I'm infected by the sound. <laughs> she wants people to get away because she's infected. I'm having a moment. Can you stop, clear the floor? Stop. This beat is killing me. Hey, Dr. Oh, DJ, let the music take me underground. She can die. The ultimate warrior when he's possessed by Papa Shango. <laughs> 
Oh, wow. <laughs> He's infected, wasn't he? Yeah. Was Cascada yeah, the yeah, woman or better. was Cascada like the DJ? Is it like a DJ Sammy situation? It might be a DJ Sammy situation. Because her name surely wasn't just Cascada. Oh, it's an act. The act is Cascada. It's like Bon Iver. She's She's called <laughs> Natalie. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you very much for that magnificent selection of songs. Oh, is that the last one? Yeah, if we have an early 90s one. I wanted nice. like, I wanted like, um, what's the flipping film? A shooting star across yeah. the midnight sky and that sort of Billy stuff. Billy Kidman. Oh. Oh, oh yeah! There we go. Thank yeah. you, DJ from Leicester. You, you, yes, you are one. Thank you, DJ. Ah, uh, <laughs> it sounds like a <laughs> nice one, sir. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Don't stop moving to the funky, funky beat. But oh, if you, you got, do want to Club, stop, for Club 7, really? they've reunited. Mm. You know, they're coming to the Utilita. Fraser told me this the other day. Mm. I was excited. I was like, oh, Utilita. Oh wait, it's the original S Club Seven. Yeah, but just seeing how much it is to get the bloody any gig nowadays. Uh, Shocking. Would you have gone? No. There ain't no party I've heard. <laughs> I bet there is. You know what? I'll yeah, see, him and see, what they, see what they look like now and go, yeah, party's <laughs> over. Yeah, Brad, in 2011, Bradley couldn't do his flip anymore, so goodness knows oh. what the crack is now. I saw him at uh, Freshers. Yeah. Yeah. They sound like a Freshers. It was, it, see, that's the thing. I see him at Freshers. It was only S Club 3, though. It was only S Club 3. Yeah, yeah. That's better than mine was Tinchy Strider. It was Bradley, Paul, and Joe, which is, if you want anyone there, you want Joe there. She was the main songstress. No, but... Wait, at, mine it was, <laughs> at mine, it was N-dubs. N-dubs? Nana Nai. That's good. That's a good one. Yeah, who else we had that week? We had Pat Sharp. Oh, oh of course. Where he played this horrible game, which I don't want to talk about. That's right. You've told me. We don't. We also had Tim Westwood, who apparently... Oh, okay. Who, oh, wait. No, no. Yeah, well, he rocked up... <laughs> oh, I'm interested. He rocked up... <laughs> apparently, he rocked up drunk, and he tripped over a crucial power cable at the <laughs> SU, and apparently knocked off the power in a small pocket of Sunderland. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> so we didn't even get to see him. He had to go home. But yeah, I guess, who cares? That is good. Yeah. He sounds like a cowboy, cowboy yeah. to me, mate. One year we had Oasis. <laughs> oh, that's good. Which was the local Oasis trip. It's an even one that's round here. The Reet Hot Chili Peppers. No. <laughs> yeah, I've seen Scam Fender. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, that's that. I've seen that. Is that Richard Tubman? Because <laughs> he's from Whitley. Uh, yeah, of course, of course. Anyway, we're trying to wrap this up. Thank you very much for sending those in. If you have any other sections of dance music or anything like that oh. for the Reese's Pieces, uh, please send them in and we can listen to them and go, ooh, I like that one. Here's a story about each song. <laughs> and don't answer your question at all. Uh, <laughs> to mailbag at cultaholic.com. It's Cultaholics. The question. What a long, sweaty podcast it's been. Oh, yes. Ah, so just a little bit more uh, until we get to the big question. No, once again, thank you to the producers, Chris Routh. Routh. The Routh of the South. Yes. Reno2200. Reno. Zero is a hero. Reno, Nevada? Where's Reno? Uh, Hi. Mm. Noah, Noah Anderson. 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 He's from Green Bay. The Nothing Green Bay Plus. Wisconsin. Well, that's... I don't know where actual Noah Anderson's... Oh, nothing rhymes with that. the exact Anderson. address out Anderson. on the podcast. Thank you very much no. for that. And we'd like to get now to the big question, which in fact is, what is going to be the best match at this Saturday's... So good saying that. It's coming Elimination so fast, Chamber. Though. So quick. I agree. Let's have a look at the card. Will um, there only be five matches on the card, you reckon, by the time I hope the, so. the show starts? Me too. Because it's going to be an hour apiece for the two chambers, yeah. isn't it? In Elimination Chamber match for the United States title, Austin Theory. Do you want to make the noises if you think? Oh, no, no. Uh, yeah, it could uh, be a good match. Oh, oh yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Uh, Seth freaking Rollins. Are oh. we making the noises if we think they're going to yeah, win the match? Yeah, just general excitement. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Versus Johnny Gargano. Oh, I think I'm funny, but I'm not. Oh, <laughs> bless him. No. Bronson Reed. Oh. Tsunami. <laughs> David Priest. Oh, I'm a goth. <laughs> <laughs> this is really never mind the buzz card. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Montez Ford. The greatest Pearl Harbor professional. Oh. Ah. Ah. That's a callback, everybody That's who didn't callback. see last week. I think yeah. it's a boring answer, but yes, this is probably going to be the... Let's carry on, let's carry on. Yeah. And then the WWE Raw Women's Championship match shot at WrestleMania 39. You yeah. Me to say, Asuka. Oh, yes. I'm bloody crazy. Liv Morgan. That's Sabu's uh, little oh. theme. Oh, is that what that was? <laughs> <laughs> Nikki Cross. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> Raquel Rodriguez. There's no noise. It's just a pose with a back in yeah. <laughs> for the front and center. Can a smile be a noise? No. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> that should be the sting of the star of Earth. Jo- <laughs> jowly, sp- <laughs> jowly smile. <laughs> Wrestling. Natalia. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Why, why bother? <coughs> Carmella. Money. <laughs> um, Money. Uh, yeah, they'll be good, good matches. Match. Yeah. I realised when Ross was doing the noises, a lot of these people's gimmick is, I'm crazy. I was going to say, yeah, the first three people, oh, yeah. I'm ranged. Yeah. I hope they start with two of the three crazy ladies. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah that'll be a good match as well. Yeah. Yeah. Roman Reigns versus Sami Zayn oh, for the Undisputed I'm so scared, man. I'm so scared, Matthew. It's a great way to be. On tenter hooks. Yeah. The storylines on the knife edge. Which way could it go? Yeah. What will Jimmy and Jay do? Yep. Tune in on Saturday night to find out. Yep. I'm not getting paid by the World Wrestling Federation, <laughs> but I feel like I should be. Yep. <laughs> edge and Beth versus the Judgment Day. Yeah. It's the mammies and the pappies, isn't it? Oh, California dreaming. Well done. Aye. Huh? Um, it'll be... It, uh, yeah. I don't know. It's going to be strange, isn't it? If the Canadians do lose to the Irish and the... <laughs> Australian. <laughs> oh, yeah, wow. <laughs> if there is a single USA channel, I'm going to kick off. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm intrigued by it more than excited. Is Beth Canadian? Yeah. yeah. No, she's from Buffalo, New York. Oh. Because I remember there was, a, oh, she... there was a pay-per-view once in Buffalo, and she lost to, like, Kelly Kelly or someone, just because it was in Buffalo. And I was is that like, just because she's got muscles, the hometown crowd were... Yeah, in Buffalo. Buffalo is oh. Buffalo is right up near the Canadian border. <laughs> like <a> pole. You know, <laughs> oh, Buffalo. Got you, got you, got you. And speaking of buff, BL versus BL. Single Bobby. match. That could also, in a different way, be the best match of the... Oh, this is a hard one, this. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm tuning in for Reigns versus Sam, Sami Zayn. Yeah. Why don't try and be original, interesting, I was like that. It's interesting seeing, in fact, the Elimination Chamber matches being secondary. Mm. Yes. That is strange. It was strange at the Rumble as well. What? That they were secondary to the main event. The angle at the end. Yeah, because the Rumble. Oh, neither no. Rumble was the main event. Um, yes, it was. I forgot. I'll I'll go for. Just because I also don't know who's going to win, I'll I'll go for the men's elimination chamber match. I guess. Because I think Asuka should win the women's one, and if she doesn't, then it might ruin my enjoyment of it slightly. Yeah, I'm looking forward to see what Bronson and Montez do on top of the pods in particular, yes. potentially, especially Bronson. He could break the entire thing. Mm-hmm. So normally. <laughs> I hope Wade comes back. Well, I hope Wade's there. It's ultimately Corey and Mike in it for the, the yeah. premium live events. Yeah, but it's all about Roman and Sammy, and oh, which way will they go with the story? Even if Wade comes out unexpectedly, like at the Rumble, and they're just like, oh, hi, Wade. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going to not pick that one. I'll, I'll stick with the Men's Elimination Chamber because with Roman and Sammy, there's just this nagging worry that uh, that they might do a screw job reference because it's in Montreal. Oh, no. I don't think they would <laughs> go f- They might tease a screw you know, job. What they do with the refs, they'll have all the other stuff that he's got going on. I know, so. that is true. They don't need one. Yeah, they yeah. don't need it. Uh, you know, this, the best angle they've done in years. Yeah. But imagine Heyman. Ring the bell. Oh, my God. I hope Good Triple H just whaps his dick on the desk metaphorically and just makes it like No Way Out 2004. No way out 2000. It could happen. Just have Sammy be the Eddie of the piece. Oh, it the Lesnar. Yeah, yeah. Just do it. Just get, just get it out, man, Paul. That would be a bold. <laughs> that would be a bold booking it decision. It really would. It really would. I would respect the game. <laughs> 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 it's stupid talking about wrestling, isn't it? It's not even real. <laughs> Story? Yeah. Uh, it's real to us, damn it. Yes, it is. Mm. Wow. <laughs> well, I'm hyped. Hyped for it, I say. Well, um, those five exciting matches. Oh, I... <laughs> Hyped for it, I say. <laughs> <laughs> That's on a Saturday, which is good. It means I actually watch it with bloody people in real life, yeah. which would be nice. And then afterwards, we'll have stuff for you to enjoy. No, no, if you no, haven't you watched the pay-per-view and hear what you have to think, or you can't be bothered watching the pay-per-view, you want to hear the highlights and stuff, such as, what do you have, Jack? Uh, I have twitch.tv forward slash coldaholic every Wednesday from 6 p.m. with Owen Mawson. Uh, it's the summer transfer window currently, but whenever the next season begins, don't worry, because we're in the we're in the promised land. We've made it to the Premier League. Uh, our only goal is to fight bravely against relegation. That's what the board told us. They don't even expect us to stay up, uh, but we do have a budget of thirty five million pounds. Oh, oh, who are we going to get in? You I say wanted, like that. It sounds like a lot. Uh, who are we going to get in? Well, so far we have Everton winger Damari Gray. Ooh. He's joined the Fabes. I'm surprised Owen went for that transfer, being a Liverpool fan. Oh, up the Tune faves. in more. Up the, thank you, Matthew. Up the faves. Up the faves. 
Ross, what anything have you got? to do with elimination oh. chamber? Oh, I God, I um, <laughs> <laughs> what happened? That it'll be out soon after elimination chamber Ooh. ends. Uh, who's on the edit this time for it, Joel? It's Owen, and Luke. Owen and Luke. Sometimes Joel rotates in. Joel Just, said, "Not me." Not in Joel. Case, in case you couldn't hear him. Um, so yeah, that that'll be out soon after. Fantastic, Ross. Uh, yeah, there'll be a live stream going on during the show with little Andy <laughs> and somebody else who you wouldn't say who it was it on was the uh, on the pictures video. So it could be a celebrity. Could be Mr. Blobby. I don't know. I doubt it. It's, it's not his pillow again, is it? <laughs> oh, uh, Bim- I think it's a real person. I wanted to call the the pillow Bimini Bamboulash there, but that's that's a, that's a drag queen. <laughs> uh, um, uh, oh, it's a real name. Bimini Bamboo. Bimini Bamboulash. Easy for me to say, but that'll be going on during the show. YouTube live cultolic thing yeah. uh, that's where that normally is uh, yeah after what happened at WTF will be live on Sunday making Dirty Dan Heppel work on Sunday there's always oh. a pleasure <laughs> poor Dan he's a good lad oh. he's a nice boy probably hates my guts but there you go that's besides the point point. Um, and then other videos will be available um, elsewhere I don't think Dan's capable of hating anyone <laughs> He really is a lovely lad. I'm sure we can try. <laughs> I don't know why I called him Dirty Dan Heppel. Dirty Dan Heppel. It sounds good. He yeah. would enjoy that. He'd go like, yeah. That's the joke, isn't it? You know, he's not dirty. He might be. Oh, okay. He's very feral in his ways. Sometimes. I tried. <laughs> uh, the other day I was like, Dan, your beard's looking good. You've got an impressive beard. He was like, oh, my girlfriend wanted me to shave it the yesterday. I was like, oh. And so you demanded that he didn't. I want to see which one of us he values yeah, more. Yeah, it's a tough position to put a man in. What have you got, Matthew? I have got Bret Hart's book to read on oh, Sunday. No. Where are you up to? Oh, mate, we got... Owen's just come into the company. It's 89. Bret's miserable. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was it's happy It's like the then. highlight. Like, is this the glory days for this? But, like, you know, Dynamite Kids just... Dynamite Kids like, hurt his back, and then he refused to give the belts back to Vince, apparently. Oh. Um, so... Hey, Dynamite, Vince says you need the belts back. And Dynamite's like, tell, tell Vince to F off. You know? I found it weird reading those parts of the book because he still likes Vince and Hogan at this point. He still likes them. And it's yeah. weird reading Brett go like, I told Hogan thank you for providing for all of us by drawing such a big house every night and all this sort of stuff. Yeah, sure you did. He says he told him that. <laughs> <laughs> it's great because everyone reading it is appreciating it going, oh, okay, yeah, that happened, did it? Okay, great. Matthew. Some of it's probably true. Hello. Does this mean AEW Fight Forever invades hashtag IGN FanFest on February the 17th at 11.51 a.m. PT? 2.51 p.m. Um, ET. game thing. Yeah. Does that mean, is that when it's going to be announced or something? It just says it invades. That's all it says. I bet, hope they bar the doors. <laughs> Call the National Guard. We had some wrestlers invade uh, Cultaholic Live, and if you want to watch Cultaholic oh, Live, he's it's on patreon.com forward slash Cultaholic for $10 tier patrons, and it will also be going up on YouTube in the near future at some point. Yeah. And that's it. Shout out to North Wrestling. Oh, oh, I had a fun time. I had a fun time at North as well. <laughs> it's not it. It's like Mark Henry doing Sam at the main event, and it's a promo. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Ah, but this has been Jack, this has been Ross, this has been myself, the fantastic editor. Thank you, Joel. Joel. And Papa Jack, who did nothing but so- sucked up all the cheers at Cultaholic Live. So well done, ye. Yeah, you did even more over than me. Yeah. And that is that. Patreon.com forward slash Cultaholic, as Jack's already said, for the Hall of Fame. And mailbag at Cultaholic.com. I'm tired. I'm sorry. Now we're going to look at the big old screen there. Think of something to say that's going to be left in the podcast. Um, <laughs> you have to think really hard about it. Uh, no limits. <laughs> How's that sound? On the count of three. One, two, three. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Very depressing. No. No. Nice one, sir. There's no, no limits. There's no limits. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs>